The third day of the Elite League NA Close Qualifiers, and that doesn't sound too good because it is the last day of the Elite Ooh. League NA Close Qualifiers here, and today we find out who goes home with $5,714 if they're second place, and who will go to the main tournament of the Elite League. I'm Harry, joining me is the one and only Otomo. Otomo, how do you feel on this, uh, for me, fine evening, for you, fine morning? Yeah, it's fine morning. It's 5 a.m. It's definitely a fine morning. It's, it's always a fine morning when we work together. And uh, I do feel a little sad. You know, we are going to be saying goodbye. To, I mean, we're going to be ending this part of the tournament, but there's always a better part coming next time. So, you know, good, so, good luck to all the teams. I do feel like our opening match is kind of the most important one for the ones involved. It is Green Esports versus Legacy. And since we know now this is kind of the strongest team by a decent margin, there's a good chance for both teams to get some money at least before they go up against nouns as uh, yeah this is the bracket this is what we've been working this is the journey we've taken together yeah yesterday you told me that tilted boys versus legacy is gonna be close not the cuts versus legacy is gonna be close but legacy steamrolled through both of those and i feel like they're gonna be streaming steamrolling through green esports as well but this is gonna be our best of three our lower bracket finals green esports versus legacy and then of course as you mentioned nouns waiting in the best of five grand finals that uh might not be as exciting as i'm trying to make it sound as they are really the heavy 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 favorites to uh, win versus whoever comes up uh, against them, Otomo. But Legacy versus Green Esports, you know what? The draft has already started. We're not going to be waiting for anything. We're going to get right into it to see what these teams have in store. Before that, we're going to be looking at their logos. Look at Legacy. They don't even have a logo. It is just the Dota map there, the Dola logo right with it. But uh, to be good, you do not need uh, somebody to create a good logo for it. It's good when you get sponsors and stuff. These guys, they're all about Dota at the moment. Yep, uh, I, I like Grin's, Grin's logo quite a bit. It looks like the Grim Reaper a little bit, you know, but it's also a grinning guy. It, it's nice. It fits with their name. This is the going with. It's a cool logo. Did you watch uh, Grim's Adventures of Billy and Mandy? Yes. I've seen, I remember. Yeah, for once, I'm not that ignorant, you know. I okay. didn't have a childhood. I know you did have a childhood, obviously, right? You, you, how would you become a 30-year-old man without a childhood? Everybody needs to go through it. That was uh, kind of obvious. As, uh, let's see. Grin? Uh, are they let's uh, Grin, the Pango, and the Tiny. I think we've seen a lot of BNC's Tiny do really well in the previous matches. So they want to make sure that Legacy doesn't get their hands on it. Pango? Mm, I, guess, I mean, they like, Red plays some Pango. But I didn't really think that's like, it's just they just don't want to play. Maybe they don't feel like it's a bad matchup for them. He makes too much space. It's fine. I mean, he's, it's Bango. It's always worth banning that hero. Okay, a little bit of trivia now that kind of came to my mind regarding Billy and Mandy. So which game did Billy and Mandy win versus Grimm to make him their slave? No idea. I mean, I, I, watched, that, I watched that like, I don't know, 25 years ago. And it's not a big part of me. I, just, I literally just know the name in like one episode of it. <clears throat> okay, okay. Limbo. Limbo was the uh, the answer. As uh, there will be a Lifestealer ban as well, and they pick up a Centaur. So a pretty early Centaur with the Mars being banned out. It's actually a pretty solid first pick. Good laning phase, good escape, good initiation. Legacy goes for a Kunkka. Looking at the openings, any preferences? Uh, I think I like the Kunkka more. However, Legacy has played it as a carry Kunkka. Putting in the safe lane, giving it, I believe it was... I'm not sure if it was Little Link or Fade, because... I think Fate sometimes plays the off lanes and Little League plays. They're both off lane players, so sometimes they, they switch it around. But it was a Kunkka with the Radiance first. It worked out pretty well, but they still lost that match. You know, so it's fine. So I'm not seeing this Kunkka as like an off lane or a mid just yet. It could be any role, any core role. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, very unlikely that we're going to be seeing a support Kunkka. I haven't seen one in, uh, I don't even want to say a while, because mm. it has been a long, long while, as uh, there will be a ban on the Crystal Maiden. This hero has been uh, making waves quite a lot. In some regions successful, in some regions not so much. How do you in general feel about Crystal Maiden? You, you know, Bowie, me and him talked about it. He really hates the hero. I mean, I don't want to say hates, but isn't a fan and I'm a big fan. So are you somewhere in the middle or, or leaning towards one or the other side? Oh, let's see. I think I'm more a fan than not a fan, I would say. Okay. She's she's fragile, but she gives you a really strong lady phase. You do have to pair up with someone who can take advantage of it, but even then you just, you know, Crystal Nova on two heroes feels very useful. So there's a lot to like with the Crystal Maiden. 
I don't like her shot as much as I used to like the old one, but I'm I'm slowly sliding into it. You know? Huh? Huh? I mean, okay, okay. That was I. I agree. That was funny. As uh, legacy, they go for the lash, and if they're gonna be playing a carry kunkka, this is what I like because lash can carry games. He can push towers. He can take objectives, and he can be that one hero that kind of kills them all. Yep. One lash to rule them all. And he also may, discourages you from taking heavy illusion heroes. You know, we've seen a lot of Terrorblade being picked up. So if you have Lesh, you're like, well, I don't really want to. Because he just melts them all in a few seconds. Inaga Siren as well has been... I think she's been winning every game she's been she's picked up in. Legacy might consider the Naga as another way of... One, you know that Centaur, that Green is not going to pick it. Secondly, it's like, oh, Stampede? Cool, I'll sleep and we, we, oh, we cancel its effects, basically. Uh, but versus Shadow Demon Center, they do have a lot of catch potential to burst you down. True. Plus, you are going to be dealing with illusions that are stronger than your own. Yeah. I mean, it goes either way, but... Yeah, well, I mean, you'll still have your, the Leshark on your side to melt these illusions. I, we'll see. I agree with sports. I like the combination. I hope this is a Shadow Demon 4. Shadow Demon Centaur feels pretty strong. We'll see if it's going to go to Sneaky or Geozizi. Remember the uh, the old second spell of the Shadow Demon? Rem remind me, what was it called? Soul Catcher, it was called. Yeah. Remember Soul Catcher and Centaur? Like, you literally use Disruption, Soul Catcher, then Hoof Stomp, Double Edge, and somebody dies. Yeah. For people who aren't sure, what, what is exactly Soul Catcher? Soul Catcher used to be an AoE ability, but only catches one random person. So people would have to, like, get it so that the person they want is on the edge. And it would increase the damage that person takes by 30 to 60%. So, you know, you put that with a double edge and a, and a hoof stomp and you're like, oh yeah, they're just melting. As... Yep. And I think at some point it was also used in AoE on everybody, like uh, like it was separated. You know, it's like 50% more damage and it's 10 between 5 targets or whatever. I think there was a uh, iteration of the, of the spell that worked that way. But either way, it doesn't really matter. There will be eventual spirit picked up, which is nice. You have now two saves to save you versus the X. You pick this Kunkka to make sure that nobody escapes with the, with the Stampede. These two are kind of going to allow it. I'd say the Avengers isn't as amazing, right? Because you swap someone, it's like you have to wait until they get X marks. It's always super reliable. You might walk in and get hit by something on the way out. But yeah, the Shadow Demon definitely feels like a way better save here. So, and I do think it's Shadow Demon 4, right? You know, he synergized better with the Centaur. So it should be okay. Cent Centaur, Shadow Demon, looking pretty nice. Legacy, I still like the Naga Siren. What else would they want to take, though? I want a vision. I just want a vision in, in general, right? Something that is going to be able to scout the back line. And that's actually really good, right? I wasn't thinking of a Broodmother, but it is a hero that gives vision. It is a hero that controls a very vast area. One of the one of the only heroes that can control vast areas and Shadow Demon and Avenger are going to be in trouble. They are. I mean, these are here. You know, Shadow Demon can sort of self-disrupt, but you come back and you're going to be killed. Venge has an even worse time against the Broodmother. Uh, I'm seeing the comeback of the Broodmother going Orchid and Bloodthorn and melting you with, yep. her, with her you know, children. It is miserable for supports to play in that situation. Undying gets picked up. Was it? Okay, so it comes out. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all against the Broodmother. What was the team that played the mid... Um, Vengeance Spirit. I don't believe it's Green Esports. I think it was someone else that was eliminated yesterday. Uh, Ferrero played yeah. it, so... So not here, not here. Here, yeah. Uh, because I was wondering, I was like, maybe that's something they can do, but... Not I... the cut. Nah, this is not going to work for Legacy. Alright, mid for Green Esports. Legacy probably want a... Four? I guess they want a four, and I'm I'm looking at this. I'd rather put a Kunkka versus the Sven than a Brood versus the Sven. Mm. Though actually, you know, oh, with the Silken Bola, you're actually not that bad versus the uh, versus the Sven himself. But I kind of feel like having the capability to life steal is better versus a Centaur than the Sven in general. By the way, it seems like Grin, that Grin doesn't completely agree with us. They think that they need a carry for Legacy. That maybe Leshrac or Kunkka is going to be support along with the Undying. I would be excited to see a Leshrac 4 being played, because then I can ruin some pubs with it. I'll be like, oh yeah. I saw, they'll be like, who did it? I'll be telling them, oh yeah, I saw BNC do it. They'll be like, who? Like, BNC, you, you would know him. You know, Too big for you guys. I think they would know him. 
Though, who knows? Who knows? A uh, good thing for a Broodmother is that her insatiable hunger cannot be dispelled once it's used, so the Demonic yeah. Purge isn't an issue for you, which is a big deal, right? Because uh, if if it was, then Shadow Demon would be considered like one of the bigger Broodmother counters. Yeah. And the slow is also really nice against the Broodmother, you know, she tries to move around the trees and stuff, but you're able to catch her. There's like a disable from everyone on Grin, but overall this Broodmother looks like she's going to have an amazing time. If you're thinking, well, if I'm my support, who should I pick against Broodmother? I find Keeper of the Light to be pretty good because you can just go and blast the waves to keep them alive. And I've also seen a lot of people pick the Slark against the Broodmother. He just goes, dark packs the, the spiders, kills them all, goes back to farming. Like, heroes who can stop her from pushing are really nice to have. Yeah, but they need a mid laner, so I'm guessing... Slark is out of the question. Also, Slark is nice because you remove the Silken Bow lane lane. That's also uh, a big deal because the missed chance is a problem. There's an Invoker, Meepo, Storm Spirit, Primal Beast. I feel like those are... You want something with some decent AoE. What do they take? They take? Okay, she's got AoE, but none of the, the ones I listed. That's a good one, right? Because I see the Lash and I think you might want to burst him down. But then I see a Death Prophet and this is a hero that you want to burst down more. Plus you have two saves on the other side of Legacy. You only have the Undying save. Sure, he's going to have both the Soul Rip and the uh, Shard at some point. But Ventral Spirit and the Shadow Demon still win in the yeah. uh, in the saving department. And it's not like the Shard even comes out. Or a lot of them don't get it for you know, 15 minutes. It's not that valuable a lot of times for the Undying shit. So it's usually the soul rip, which is level one, so that is spell to be maxed out for this hero. So it's valuable in this game, though, right? Oh, I mean, Nobody kills the tombstone. Uh, that's actually a very good point. Th then again, we'll, we'll see what legacy goes for. Like if they really want, I, again, I don't just, I just don't see it them rushing, a charge on undying very, very often. It could happen. Legacy, their last pick is very open. We're not really sure what they're gonna go with because you think, oh, you have mother Lesha, Kunka, those are your cores, but. Legacy is very awkward in their, not awkward, but unique in their drafting, sorry. I would want some bursts, so Lion, Skyrath Mage, Hoodwink, Hoodwink. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the type I would want. But Lion I would actually like here quite a lot if they if they feel like playing it. Right, well, if we're, if we're going with four, BNC is tiny, is gone, so Hoodwink is still there and Lion's still there. Techies is also another option. And if you want to do Legacy, they could bring up their position for Monkey King again. It did look amazing, but they did win the game they picked you, but he was like 0 8, 19 for BNC. So I don't th I can't give him too much credit on that one. What was that say? BNC? I don't think that was BNC. Uh, no, it, I, it was BNC. It was BNC. I'm, I'm, we're going to have to go check, but I'm very sure it is BNC. Almost no. 100%. As they go for the voice, but okay. So who's it going to be? Mid lesh? Or, oh, sorry, four lesh, or is it going to be four kunka? Uh, uh, it is going four to lesh. be. Yep, four lesh. So the ones that played the uh, uh, monkey king, it was not the cut, and oh. they lost versus legacy. Okay. So it was uh, sad man who played it, or uh, sad man in, in sad that man. particular game. Sad man, yes, sad man. Oh man. Okay, so so I was I was completely wrong, but at least I knew Legacy was there. All right, so they had, but they picked the last pick, the Void, sorry, Void Spirit against the Death Prophet. I think that's something Death Prophet is kind of fine with. You spam out Crit Swarm. Yeah, if he comes close, you have Spirit Siphon. So I do think Grin comes off very nicely in the mid lane. Aside, and it's going to be Fade is their carry player, but they have moved into the off lane sometimes and given Lil Nick the position one role. So I'm not quite sure. If Faze is going safe or safe lane or uh, on the off on the off lane, I want to see the Broodmother in the safe lane. Not gonna lie, I, we already mentioned mm. it in the uh, in the game. So again, we have a pretty weird draft from Legacy, but these weird drafts have been taking these uh, these teams off guard overall. Yeah. They've been winning the games quite easily with them, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens again. Yeah. But of course, you're the analyst. You're gonna be able to uh, to give us info on uh, who's winning game one. Oh, I, I think it's very hard for me to go up against Legacy on this one. I think the Broodmother is just going to run run all over them. I like what you were saying that they want to put in safe lane because the co combination of Kunkka and Leshra could do a lot of work. So I do think that's pretty good. At the same time, the, the Broodmother, she's not going to have the most amazing time. She is up against Shadow Demon and Centaur, so good setup How there. But with Undying keeping her alive, it shouldn't be too much problem. So overall, 
Yeah, legacy. 100% legacy. Even though the, their mid lane is the one thing I'm thinking that Grin should crush them in. This pleases me to okay, I'm, I'm thinking legacy as well. I don't know if the Death Prophet crushes the uh, Void Spirit all that much. Uh, okay, at least you should come out quite ahead. This is my, my thought on it. Whether or not she will, you know, we've seen this skill matchup. We also know that the MMR, there's an MMR difference between the mids. Kits is rank 7, he's on Grin Esports. As for the other side, Red is rank 400 on legacy he could just not be you know, pubbing so much <laughs> italian gangs was like he called it let's go let's go to game two come on i mean he he is a gang star so uh, i guess threatening uh, the admins the opponents as well might be in his uh in his approach maybe a little bit of uh a little bit of a bribe there you know like they called gg haha <laughs> wink wink you better uh you better take this or you're screwed I uh, of course that can you imagine some admin who's new to the job and never done it? He's like, well, yeah, they did, actually. The game's over. You're like, no, no, <laughs> yeah. That's not how it works. That's why we paid them. Not feed. Uh, yeah, but Green East was, it's, it's the problem is going to be this rude mother. You know, you have actually some vision from your allies, which is the, the Shadow Poison, as well as the Wave of Terror, so you can see them. But I've seen a solo brood mother ruin games, and even professional games, if you just don't have the counter for it. So you saw that uh, voice line, the only person who can defeat yep. me is me. Who, yeah. who says that? Who says it's, that? Come on. It's how many from uh, uh, Kuroko? Come on, man. Easy. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I have to ask, I have to ask. But in Russian, it actually sounds cool. You see, you see, Otomo? A perfect multilingual person here. If there are any uh, Russians in chat, though, I doubt it. Uh, just uh, ra rate that from 9 to 10, because uh, it was amazing. But but 9 to 10, I mean, that seems like they're starting off pretty high. How how about we become a little humble and we put it at like 8.7 to 10, you know, like, just, just to give them a little bit of wiggle room. 9 to 10. Sure. Uh -huh. 9 to 10. All right, it doesn't seem like we are going to have any much of an engagement here for first blood unless pingus walks in the wrong place and he does oh dear we'll be able to block him looks like he okay got the, the k base. off a pretty big so one tanky. so uh, i'm not sure you're killing actually with the blood grenade this is the uh, best item in the world pingus is still going to be running away there's going to be another decay in a second so he can't turn around if he wants to decides not to because uh, it is very dangerous at the moment we'll need to go to the base considering it's an undying it's no problem for him overall and uh Kunka will be fine level one Three man decay, 12 extra strength. Uh, what did BNC just do? Like, why did he dead get that range clearly blows and it gets denied? Did you see that? I did. Well, actually, I only caught the tail end of it, so I wasn't sure until you told me, but huh, that is very odd. Maybe he, maybe he's like, oh, we sent away. I don't know, that's that's not audible. I'm not quite sure what, the, what he was doing with that. Then again, we would like Legacy to do more of that so we have a more even game. Because we are thinking that they come in as a bit of a favorite. A bit of a favorite. I think if you were telling me, you're like, ah, Legacy is going to sweep them. I don't think it's going to be that one-sided, honestly. I don't know. You came into the series thinking that Grin is coming in as the favorite. And then I hyped up Legacy so much that you you are now unsure. That's just, uh, that's just what happened. Uh-huh. Top lane. Yeah, Geo's easy and Yamsun. Oh, they put the BM. Okay, so this is going to be fade in the off in the off lane along with BNC. I can't say I like this as much as the other one. I would have I would have preferred to see the Leshrac with the uh, with the Kunkka, but then again, Undying Kunkka is pretty strong as well. That's actually a very scary lane. Yep, you also have a lot of HP on the Kunkka, so you're not really gonna die from just the hoof stomps and the double edges. Oh, Blood yeah. Grenade gonna connect, BNC. He is so freaking annoying in this lane. They, they actually can't fight him, and once there's a Silken Bola, you just die. And by the way, he keeps threatening them with a the stun, so you actually have to walk. It's like, oh, I'm gonna do it, and then he just changes his mind. It's very annoying for Yamsun, because half the time he's thinking I have to go back. He's going for second point in Edict, so Maybe he wants to get up close and personal with his enemies. I'm a little surprised by that. I thought I might uh, max out Lightning Strike. I, I kind of feel like you, you have to have this tower push. You also mentioned yesterday, I want a couple of things for my position four. And one of the things that you mentioned would be good is uh, is having a tower push. He misses the stun and because of it, he's probably going to be punished. He gets into the trees, will be fine. Same is true for Fade, but uh, everybody survives and just gentlemanly agree to, uh, to leave each other alone for now. He does cost BNC a lot of his life as... Yeah, so, so far top lane, 
fairly even. But how's Bomber looking? And little, sorry, little Nick is having a good time. Just th thanks to Pingus, not zoning out, but being very annoying for these two. And it's Undying versus Centaur, as long along with Shadow Demon. Not there's good burst damage, but it's Undying. He usually has a good amount of health. They can't deal with the Tombstone. And if you like disrupt anyone, he's like, I'm fine. If you disrupt me, I'm okay. If you don't disrupt, if you disrupt someone else, you know, save. That's also pretty good for me. I think Tombstone was dropped, but was it dropped? Yeah, it was dropped. But yeah, didn't get them anything. Dropped and dropped. I oh. think you know, destroyed right after it. So that's fine. He secures the Killing Lotus, so it's not that big of a deal. True. But I, I guess 125 gold, you're never gonna say no to that. No, but it's the same. I mean, you know, the healer might be alive later on. And whoa, Yamsun gets the kill. Gets the kill on BNC. Fantastic start for Grin. Yep, that attempt onto Yamsun's life earlier really kind of screwed over this lane for yes. for Legacy because they started off really well and the pressure was there, and then they were just like, "Oh, we have to get the kill," and yeah. it cost them. It cost them so much. I've seen this a lot. I've seen this a lot. You know, whether it's a pub or it's you you you're in the lead, so you think you have to get more of the lead. Whereas, like, dude, you you already stopped me here for farming. Although, to be fair, Yamsa was 8 and 2 into the 6 and 2, so it wasn't like he was even being stopped. He was just kind of being annoyed a little bit. But they pushed their luck. BNC ended up dropping low health, never really recovered, and lost his life in the end. I rarely see a Centaur not being ahead in terms of CS, but I guess that's the Undying factor just coming yeah. into play. In general, it's just it feels like if you're up against Undying, you're always going to have just a slightly worse time than you should, no matter what. So, it's fine. It's all Pingus is doing his job. It's not Albino Zebra today, so I'm glad that we're seeing Legacy with their full roster. Not very true, though. Albino Zebra did do a solid job yesterday. I mean, they're here. They're uh, top three, so obviously he did do a good job. You Who did Legacy lose to in the... Uh, they yeah, lost to... Uh, to well, Nouns. Okay. Both teams were sent here by Nouns, actually. Legacy, they got here from the first round, and Green Sports was yesterday, their la the last match of the day. So now yeah, for bracket game. finals. Now we're sitting in the back as BNC kills Josizi, and they might get lose Yamsen as well. Oh, dear. Nice rotation. Yeah, Pengis gets it for them. Yep. That's just the uh, the power of the tombstone. It's way too powerful. Also, BNC has two points in Edict, so this tower is going to be in a lot of trouble. I guess you have to glyph it now. Yep. Fade, Fade actually gets the creeps away from the tower. And this is very scary from the support duo of uh, Legacy. Tombstone plus a Leshrac on towers. Like, you, just these two can really threaten buildings, and you won't be able to comfortably start these team fights. We haven't really talked much about the mid lane. Red is actually doing a pretty good job here, but first exorcism coming up. Red is only level 5, but he backs off in time, otherwise, he would have been dead for sure. No point size BNC. Yeah, BNC is probably losing his life, though. I came over to assist a little bit, but now he's gonna be ran down. He does have the split earth, which he will miss, and then he's gonna be taken down. A very weird decision from him to come over, but they do defend the mid lane tower from the first exorcism and the siege creep wave. So overall, it's not too bad. Does he get the first power rune? It is gonna be uh, denied by GeoZZ. Doesn't have the dissimilar, doesn't have level 6 either. Will be stopping the death prophet, but the blood grenade is there. He's dead, has 5 stick charges, which won't help him live. Will pick up the bounty rune, at least something for red, but overall. Overall, Exorcism doesn't get them the tower, but it can still be uh, said that it's very, very successful. Nah, they just kind of gave uh, Kits uh, the mid lane on Silver Platter. To be fair, BNC rotated when they were going to die for the Void Spur, so he thought he could save him. It's not really his fault, but Red continuing to go for that Ruin, knowing that Exorcism's up. A little bit risky. Top? This has been their best lane so far, so I'm glad to see them going back to it. Ah, Yamsen is dead again. He doesn't have... Uh... His war cry any longer, it is gonna expire, making him super slow. The blood grenade is there, stun connects, and it is just enough damage to uh, to get the kill. Level 1 Split Earth, it's not an easy spell to connect, but when there's so many slows, it's uh, it's always gonna be fine. Actually, when you think about it, there's really not much in terms of control on the Radiant side. Split Earth, and Torrent, and Aether Remnant. It's like, all of them can miss. Uh... That could be a problem for Grid later on once we see Stampede being used and people are just so much more mobile. If they don't get X marked, I think you should be dodging every stun, honestly. Can yep, it is gonna be tough for sure, especially because there's a disruption in the swap on the other side. And it's going to be Soul Ring on the on the Brood Mother. I wouldn't be surprised if again if he just rushes for the Orchid to get those solo kills. If you're Grin, 
Yule Scepter on like Death Prophet might be very necessary. I need to find some ways to get those spells going for your team. I mean, it's 100% going to be an item here. Like Lotus Orb is going to be prioritized by the center at some point, and Yule's is first or second item on the Death Prophet, 100%. But I'm seeing the Blitz Knuckles currently yes. being put in the uh, Quick Buy, so probably Witchblade. But right after yeah. it, I'm, I'm expecting there to be a, um, a Yule's. I gotta say, this Witchblade on, on Death Prophet, very different than what I'm used to. I don't think that was going to happen. Pingus walks into a stun from GeoZZ. But... Oh, yeah, Kiss wants this. Good stun, mm. though. Is he going to give up? He doesn't look like the giving up type. Actually, they're turning this around, going forward to him. Lil Nick will be rotating. They put down the tombstone in a perfect spot. He's going to try with the Spirit Cyphers, but he's surrounded by five heroes. Here comes around the Stampede, trying to get him out. He's pretty speedy, but the zombies are still going to be following him. Lil Nick running forward. Run buff is still there. Gets way too speedy, and they're going to be dealing with the zombie apocalypse first. That just means that the extra is not doing all that much. Voice Spirit, five poison stacks on him. That's going to hurt. By the way, that they... He so on the other side, Italian again, so his levels, like, just as that fight was going on. If he didn't, that stampede would have come in time. Because I was looking, I was like, is he going to stampede? He didn't have it, just his level 6. Who goes to him for saving his team as... Red, he's trying to get some moves going for right now. He's the lowest net worth among all the cores, so he's definitely feeling like ah, he's not doing a whole lot. Uh, that can be problematic as uh, Problem. Yamsen. Huh? He's fine? It's fine. Yeah, he's fine. The uh, Lesh is focusing on the tower and Yamsen reads that perfectly. But I guess tower more important than the Sven. I don't know how you feel about it. Tower for sure. For now, tower. Sven more important later on. By the way, uh, it's going to be phylactery on the Brood Mother. Fate is not, is not going for the Orchid. I'm kind of surprised by it, but let's see how it works out. All right, is coming. Are there sentries in the vicinity? Not really. They found the Amson. The Aether Remnant will connect. And with the uh, with the Edict, they'll get the kill. It's actually going to be the Resident Pulse that secures it. Because Red, as you mentioned it, he is kind of on the low side of the net worth. So he needs to be, uh, he needs to be getting the kills for himself. The good news for Grin is that there are stacks, ancient, there are ancient stacks for Yams to recover because he feels like he needs to recover, just hasn't really been the best. 1 and 3 already, only 50 CS at, at this point in the game, it's not very high. Hmm? Nice dodge from kids with the illusion rune. Doesn't get caught by the ether remnant. As from the other side, the broodmother is coming. They deal with the tombstone a little bit too aggressive, and there will be a stampede. Kids is taking a lot of damage. Has the spirit siphons to keep him alive. However, Pingus with the blood grenade slow down, but here comes little Nick Campson. Has to be careful and fade as well. Ether remnant connecting on the kids. Here comes the boat. He's gonna be able to dodge it. No, he gets caught. On by the time bringer finishes his mouth. Yamsen just not that strong considering that he's only level 6. He has 10 thick charges, but is looking like he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Has the piggy pole. Here comes Italiano Gangstar. That is gonna be a scary guy. Nice hoof stop on the to do of them. And Lil Nick is gonna be uh, losing his rumba fairly soon. Has the one charges to play with Fade. Gonna be sending the spiderlings oh, in. God. And they have the war cry there. Jumping in from red, doing a lot of damage with the resident pulse. Here comes BNC oh, no. back to it. And what a swap. The dodge has done another answer step to the side. They're just running like. Left and right, Sven turning into a piggy, and there's gonna be the kill from Fade, creating so many little spiders as Kits is back to the world of the living. The Death Prophet lives again and lets her sisters out. They want Fade. Where's the disruption? Does Sneaky have one? Not gonna be using it just yet. He's in a little bit of trouble from the Silken Bola. Fade decides to run away. What a long and exciting fight, but who wins in the end? Oh, it's definitely Green Esports. Definitely Green Esports. They got way more out of this. I think they killed, I was gonna say three or four people, but it says three, four, three, but I'm sure four people died. Sure, they lost their Death Prophet and their Sven, but Centaur had such an amazing performance. And he's kind of the most important player for them right now. Equal with Kits, but really well played by Italian Gangster. MVP in that situation. So many good double edges. This is a problem if the Sven dies, but he's a little bit too tanky for them to finish him red. Just doesn't have the levels necessary. The Simulate will be used defensively to get himself to the low ground. It feels like Yaps is playing the offlane. You know, he's the one who's always being engaged, he's the one who's always fighting, and oh, Yapson! There's the Spiderlings going for him, but uh, he is gonna be able to survive. Spawn Spiderlings, just not that strong just yet, but there will be a phylactery done for the Broodmother now. Yeah, I'm not sure I love this phylactery build, I gotta say. I think it's a very. Like, you, you want more damage, you still get that from the Orchid Soulborn. Maybe you're worried that they'll get to use the BKBs, but. That's like a problem later. If you can crush them now, you can really delay their timings by a lot. I, I'm not loving the phylactery on, on, on Brood, and I hope he doesn't go like Kanda after. 
What I am loving is that Legacy defended all of their uh, towers at the moment. So, versus a Death Prophet, that's actually kind of impressive, which could hurt the Grim in the, uh, in the later portions of the game, as they do go for a smoke, but uh, for now, not finding anybody. Fade. There's a swap. Nice. Is that is that you just leave him if you're undying. Undying wanted to tank that smoke, but they actually just uh, went around him. So very nice movement from Grin. Uh, let's check whether he's going for the item build I thought he would go for, which is just Rush Greaves. I think that this item is super strong right now as a kind of gangster. He doesn't seem like he's going to be super strong after this. Nope. Oh, Highest net worth hero on Grin dies very easily at that, and that is a tower of that as well. This is not surviving. They will use the glyph, but it won't change the fact that once the edict is backed up, it's just it just gets taken down in an instant. The tower is more the most important thing. Losing the centaur by getting the blue mother, I think if you're in Grin, you're kind of happy with that. Sure, in terms of net worth, it doesn't make sense, but in terms of map impact, you want this blue mother to be as shut down as possible. That seems to be happening right now. Fade, nice to deny the tower though. Yep, he actually missed the first hit or didn't get the deny from the first hit, but it, it, this hero just attacks super fast in general. <laughs> uh, they smoke up, they would like to kill Kits here. He has, he has Geo's easier next to him, and oh, they find the stack. But... Oh, actually, they're, they're, they're just gonna be fine. Oh, no, they're not. Here they come. Exorcism is gonna be expiring, however, and if you don't kill him super fast, he's gonna be getting back up to full, so they're gonna try to do it. BNC is already dead, and Kits... His exorcism, it is going to be coming back right now, making him full. Once more, steals the stacks, gets the kill, moves away. Perfect. That is pretty terrible. And Yamsen, he's recovering. Dude, this is the guy who's been died, who's died four times in the game. But with the stacks that they have going for him and the fact that he's just making space, like, he's, he's just fine. This Blue Mother pick has not worked out. This is not what we, we expect to see from the dude. It's a swap. Red, he's in trouble. He's actually going to die to dissimilate onto the high ground. Will allow him to live. And with the, uh, with the Astro Step, he gets himself away. Had the wand charges without those, he maybe kicks the bucket. Well, Lil Nick continued the farm. He has the blade mail. Next item on the menu, it will be an Aghanim Scepter. So Torrent Storm on the way. Radius not amazing this game because you only only Sven actually right clicks. Everyone else just uses their spells, so you don't really want. At the same time though, you could prevent a lot of damage from Sven, and he doesn't want to build MKB, so uh, it's alright. He's skipping it though, just going Agonim. You can never go wrong with Blade Mail Agonim and Shard on Kunka. What does the Centaur have? I think that's. Is he going for Shivas? Maybe he has the Blink already. Yeah, he going for Shiva and then he'll get up. the blink. Oh, we'll see. No, he didn't buy the Shiva and he has the money, so it seems that blink is, no, no, no. Uh, is going to be first. No, he didn't have the money because uh, Shiva is now one, one, 2050. It's not 1750 like before. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they increased the price by 300 this patch. That's why their item kind of fell off because you need 1, 400, sorry, 3,400 gold to upgrade from Veil to Shiva, which is such a long time. Uh, very true, very true. 2k gold lead for Grin either way, so they are pretty happy with how the game is going. Finally, they dealt with the tier 1 towers. Uh, couldn't take a single one down for 12 minutes, and then just in 2 minutes they managed to uh, deal with all of them as they were getting low. Disruption, Ping is in trouble, going for a TP out, a little bit too much damage, loses his life, Sneaky might be in trouble, and Fade decides not to send his children into death. As uh, Lil Nick? Uses the boat, it is gonna allow him to live a little bit longer. He has the axe of the Intel Italiana Gangstar. Demonic Purge is there, which will slow him down so much that there will be no escape kits with this. Uh, that Prophet is doing so much, but Yamsen dead against Sneaky. Gonna be TPing the Simulate to run away. BNC might be in trouble. There will be a disruption, but this is only the two supports. Nobody else there. If they recognize this, could have turned around and killed them both. Mm. Dude, the, again, does Yamsen, he's not being slowed down too much. These kills aren't affecting him. They've been making stacks, these supports. They're going to make him another set of stacks right now, I imagine. Sneaky, yeah, he's going to be doing it. So, even though they get killed on Yamsen, it's more like the rating gets stronger rather than Grin in any way slowed down. And I really don't like what the Broodmother is going for. Phylactery into Echo Saber. I don't know, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the people watching have a better idea of why this is good. I'm just not seeing it. I mean, you are gonna be this right click broodmother. I'm kind of behind it with the idea that the Sven is just gonna be able to kill your spiderlings and spiderites so fast that the, the blood torn doesn't make sense. But there's another point also, which is that you might orchid someone, the stampede is used, and suddenly you don't get the kill anyway, even though you were perfectly set up. So they might be looking at that. 
I still don't kind of believe in that factor it, to, be, to make it like dissuade you enough. But hey, he's the pro player, not me. As uh. Death A 2k gold lead. She's so strong, man. Once she gets the ba the BKB, I don't know how you kill her. Yeah, you probably don't. Which, it's just unique to see the Witchblade out there. It looks like Mech is used and BNC is good. So Mech is bought on BNC, but he, yeah, he stays alive. Not bad. Not bad. Go rip Mech. Uh, they do have a tombstone on the high ground. It's very dangerous to go into because you don't have the stampede any longer. Yamsen will get a double stun on the high ground. Here comes the boat onto Italiano Gangster. There's way too many zombies. You're gonna have to deal with it. The Sven goes in. That's a little bit too deep onto the high ground. He's gonna get zombies, smacked. Baby. He's not moving. They do have a swap, however. Actually gonna be using it on Pingus. And look at Kits zoning out everybody else. They cannot assist their undying. Good move by Kits. Uh, honestly, if, he didn't, if Zelta wasn't available, they would have continued going for it, but he's like, all right, I can't jump into that. They do only get the supports on Green Esports. They keep their tower alive. So it's a nice, it's a small win, but significant. Like, you know, like, the supports just keep dying. BNC, though, he's got some decent farm. What's he? It's, it's Greaves, right? He finished the mech, just going Greaves after. I don't think you can dispel that much this game, besides from the death prop being the most significant. Silence, disseminate, and minus armor from the bench. That's pretty much it. Eh, it's like mediocre spells, honestly, apart from the silence. Right? That's the only one you really care about. But at the same time, armor is good. You think so? Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Spend that profit? It's good. It's, it's solid, for sure. Plus, you get a decent amount of extra armor anyway. As, oh no, poor fate. Uh, that is a dead brood mother, especially with the demonic purge. Even once you get out of the stun, your movement speed is so low. He does finish off his echo saber, so in terms of gold lost, it's not too bad, but it is bad. To it is this bad. hero right now, sneaky. Gonna be caught. A lot of damage being done to him. Middle has the disruption. Help is okay. coming. Jump in from Italiano Gangstar, and there will be a tombstone. These tombstone placements have been amazing. There will be a stampy being used. GSZ wants to run away. He's gonna be protecting himself with the Pavis as kids again running for. Do they have anything to break the Good TP? Swap. Yes, they do. Swap into a magic missile and a couple of more hits. Plus, the Crypt Swarm will get them the kill. Three heroes dead just like that. Nice dodge with the Dissimulate onto the Italiano Gangster Hoof Stomp. But then again, you are just losing every single engagement on Legacy. The Stampede is, is a nightmare. They have no answers to it. It's a counter to the Tombstone. It's a counter to the Brood Mother. And, you know, if, if Lester gets on top of someone, you just Stampede. Like... They, every fight has been, we can't take a fight because they stampede away. If you are Legacy, what do you, how do you count it? Is that you go for objectives, Roshan or Towers, where if you run away, there's still something left for you to, to actually get. But these chasing fights in the middle of nowhere, where Green Esports doesn't have to stick around, they're like, all right, we're going to leave. We'll see you later. So when does the time come for Legacy to actually be uh, doing better in this game? I think they caught Red there getting pulled into a smoke. Not sure. No pings came out though. Yeah, I think the timing... A little bit of it has passed, to be frank with you. You know, usually, like later on, you're looking at the heroes and you think, your damage doesn't actually yeah, scale. Dead. Oh, he has a BKB. He's good. He's... 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 Uh, he's dead. This damage on the side of Legacy when they can actually commit onto a target is insane. That's through a BKB and straight into the pit. This is what you wanted to see. Yes, I mean this is the, this this is beautiful. I mean Yamsa kind of gave it to them. I, I thought that he'd be. I, I, mean, I disagree with you on the terms of the damage scaling, but right now it is still very significant. But later on, you know, Brood Mother's. I want to say she falls off, but with his build he may not. However, Kunka, Leshrag, Void Spirit, their damage tends to be a little bit static. Undying is bigger than Roche, so you know on uh, dating profiles he can definitely uh, add over six feet, which lands him, uh, you know, anybody in this world actually. As uh, the Roche falls and Red gets himself the Aegis. I still don't get the whole six feet thing, but my wife tells me it's like, oh well, we we want to wear heels, and we don't want to do it with a short guy. And I'm like, all right, that seems to be a thing. I, I don't know how tall. I don't get it either, but I'm quite tall, so then yeah. I, I don't know, right? Are you six feet tall? I am six five, so yes. You're six five, really? Holy yeah, 197 to be you're, exact. I don't know. Is that... You're that. You're. I don't. I don't know why I didn't have that impression that you were that tall, but that means that. 
Oh man, I don't want to take Because I hide it, I hide it so that I do not intimidate you. I am very intimidated though, just by you telling me. I don't have to see it, I hear it. Oh, six, five? Your, your wife can wear heels on her heels, can't she? Yeah, sure. True, true. As uh, the smoke is coming through, Green Esports, they want to break some legs, which will be making the enemies shorter. And the first one on the menu is the guy with the Aegis, who does have the Illusion Room, which is actually the only reason why he's still alive, but he doesn't have any more steps hey, sir. to play with Ether Remnant. Protects him on the other side. Kunkka has been caught. He needs to get the boat off. There's the boat. Tony Storm being used as well. We keep it from Jansen, and they have the stuns to kill him, even through the run buff. It is will not ease the pain. BSC next on the menu. Here comes Spade going on to the land against her, protected by the swap. We find nobody is dying on grid, and now gets the big guys coming. Red is back to the fight. He wants to kill the center, the seven. Simulate stuff. Could be enough boost on one or two of them. Italian reaction dropping low. There is nobody to finish him. No more Astro steps. How are you gonna run, Red? The quick answer is you won't, because this time there is no illusion route to save you from the silence. And you will be silent in death as you were while you were alive. Kits is crushing this game on the death problem. It's what we were I thought he would be crushing it a little bit more in the laning phase, but he's definitely doing it now. He's going to go for the Sanj and Kaya. So a little bit more stats as well. Overall. It started off kind of decently, right? You get the kill on Yamson. It looks like it's okay, but they just, you know, the Tomb of this was not placed well compared to the previous ones, so just take it. And as usual, we're seeing Stampede. When the fights begin, if they're like, they'll just Stampede away. You gotta be able to fight on objectives that you want, on, on offensive objectives for Legacy, and that's just not happening. I very rarely see a tombstone surviving for like 20 seconds every single fight and yeah. you losing. Like, that is... That is so weird to witness. The positionings of the tombstone have been amazing throughout the game, and it's not changing the the fights whatsoever. Yeah, usually it's like 10 second tombstone, or you, you know, break this tombstone in 10 seconds, or you lose the fight, but not this one. Fade, he is going for the BKB. I like this choice, so he can stick on top of his targets. Mm, but we'll see. And Torment goes to Pingus. Okay, yeah, that's fine. As we were saying, there's not, there's not one that you buy. BNC would love to get his his shard as well. Uh, what's out? Oh, that's the one that continues pulsating and uh, yep. repeats, right? Yep. yep. It's a, it's a good that, that's pretty cool. That, that's he, cool when you're defending high ground, but I don't think in these open fights it's gonna be doing that much, especially because there's so much mobility on Grim. Fair, but I think you you need to do, find ways to sort of close off areas of these fights because they're just running around circles around them on Grim. He. He also took the Split Earth Radius talent, which which makes it so much bigger. As oh, poor Fade, poor Fade. Is he gonna die? He's pretty speedy. Demonic Purge, however, makes him not that speedy as uh, he will get squashed. So no uh, no spiders are gonna be uh, remaining here as they're tipping towards top. B and C. What are you doing? That is not a tower that you're gonna be able to take. The Siege Creep is still gonna be attacking you, so the tier 2 will be taking a massive amount of damage. Probably not dying, however, turns around with the Split Earth. Nice connection on GOZZ, but his death is inevitable. It might have been easier to juke them if he turned off his ultimate, you know, because you're like, wait, I'm still burning, so he's around. As they are sort of posturing here on Legacy. Maybe the feeling like they can catch a straggler would have been very nice for them, but it doesn't seem like it's happening. Undying, going for the Lotus Orb, I like this. But uh, we'll see if it's going to be enough as uh, Sven has the Aghanim Scepter. Little Nick taking some damage, but who's catching who? The remnant does connect. The Lane Gangstar pops his BKB. They're going for Pingus. Poor guy, thinking about using the tombstone on the high ground, decides against it, will die to the double edge. One thing that you have to do in this game, if you want to have any chance of victory for the Radiant side, those BKBs have to get low so that the Kunkka Storm Storm is actually a useful spell in yeah. a fight. And you know, Sven's is kinda low, but Death Prophet 9 and uh center down to 8 at this moment. So I, I don't know if you can do it. And this is why the nerf for duration was a big deal for Kunkka, right? Because Storm Storm was, I think, 5 seconds, now it's down to 4. I'm not sure if it yep. was 5 or 6, but it's definitely down to 4 now, which is a lot less impactful. As Kretz, he just stands in front, he's like, what are you going to do about it? Do they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have the shard on Kunkka, and I don't think you even want to bring him back to the tidal wave. You know, he comes, she comes in there rolling in with all her sisters, and you're like, this is not what I asked for. Yep. One, uh... 
one of which is enough, like a bazillion of them, if that's even a number, that's uh, something you don't want to be dealing with. A bazillion is definitely a number, it's 100% number. Well, how many zeros? Uh, I'm going to go with 12. Right, so million, six, billion, trillion. Yeah. Trillion is 12. Yeah, it's another word for bazillion. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it, <laughs> you're just pulling my leg now. <laughs> no way. I actually trusted you for a second there. I can't believe I'm I'm, uh, I'm even more mad than you. Well, you know what? We don't need to really trust in themselves. Legacy, because they are in a really tough spot. They've got to find... Okay, nice move by BNC. Really good for him. He was able to make it out. Like, he's doing what he should be Run. doing, which is just making space for his team and forcing people to chase him around. If you're like, you've got to find a way to fight near Roche or an enemy tower where you can get something no matter what happens. Because if you fight next to your objectives, you know, if the fight goes badly for Grin, they stampede away. And that is, that's kind of unacceptable. And it's not, it's not going to go bad because you're just going to posture that Prophet forward and there's so many exactly. saves, the exorcism is going to kill you. Uh, BNC, he survived the other side of the map, but uh, his own, he will not as uh, Yamsen takes him down with the Remnant. With an Astral step forward, they're just poking Yamsen, pulling him back. X marks the spot where absolutely nothing will happen. They're baiting the BKB, they're like, Yamsen, do you want to BKB? And Yamsen's like, oh, come on, dude, I wasn't born yesterday. Was, uh, okay, yeah. his BKB is down to six, right? Yeah. No, it's seven. Oh boy. Even then, it's like even if he is six, and you still want to use it so you can have an open, like a few seconds where you can't, you know, take in the next fight, little Nick. Yeah, he's like, I'm just gonna get the drunk and uh, try to survive this, and I'm not sure that's gonna help, especially with Magic Missile being there, double edge, double attack from the Echo Saber, and you are dead. This net worth is terrifying. Look at the core difference. Jeez. You know, 5,000, 5,000. Basically, 5,000 5, every core right now. Uh -oh, 5,000, 5,000, and uh, 5,000. Is he going to be going forward as Jamson turns around and goes forward himself? Obviously, Totem's trying to run away. Red has to dissimulate to get himself away from his mid lane counterpart as he will not the feel drop. safe in his own base. Pingus next on the menu does get taken down. They're even going for the Tombstone Glyph. Who cares? Gets standing his ground, doesn't fear anything at the moment. He feels untouchable, and uh, he kind of is. Yes, then right now you have buybacks on two of your heroes, but I don't know if you want to use it. They're just taking Raxes here. Usually, you know, you see a team waiting for Aegis, but they're like, we're so strong. We don't need Aegis. We just go up when we feel like it. Parasma Death Buff with BKB and Sanjin Kaya. I don't know. He's, he's also got like 3,000 gold in the bank for whatever he wants to buy. I don't know. The, I just don't see Grit Legacy making it out at this point. There's no way. Well, I mean, there's a way, but very unlikely. Uh, what way? Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, what needs to happen? Is it just Grin need to get ahead of themselves way too many times? Or is there a play potential type of movement that you can, that you can do now? Maybe if you can kill a support, then we get them to waste the stampede, then you can take a fight five versus four. Like you have to make sure the stampede is wasted by going for they'll be like, oh we can save the venge, venge still dies, then they stampede in five four versus five and you can take a fight that way. Kids would be good, but again, there's stampede available. The remnant follow up with the earth the swap is there, disruption as well, Geo's easy now with the stampede, they're coming going forward again, it's a tombstone in a perfect position but they're just gonna run away from the torrent storm from the uh, tombstone and now it's time to bury you and create new tombstones in places that are fine for us red gets out with the simulate has the astro step to run away he won't be making it out as he gets stunned up by yamson flying towards him here comes the boat does connect on the Sven, buyback from the Void Rift, keeping on to the Outpost, they want to fight until the end, and the Tombstone is expiring, a full duration Tombstone, does absolutely nothing, but Yamsun does absolutely everything, because he packs such a huge punch, Kits is beyond godlike, and you have no freaking chance, I don't know how the fight gets set up better than that, and you don't even come close, you all get wiped, you buy back two heroes, you do nothing. To be fair, Red went away from, he, he chased himself, not chased himself, he ran away, away from the tombstone. When it would have been good if he went towards it, so they'd be like, oh, do we want to take it or not? Uh, Spingus. Okay, he's gonna be fine, he's gonna be fine. 
I agree with esports, man. They just they are in team fights. Sometimes I feel like this is not the most crisp team, but when it comes to long term strategy about how to approach the game in general, they're amazing at it. DNC showing himself something that he shouldn't have done. It is daytime. Jansen flying around. Did, did you see how fast he changed his trajectory? That's impressive. Yes. Uh, it's looking like there's really not much to do here. It's, okay, bye back from my track. They want to take this. Okay, there's the last hurrah. Can they catch anyone? Nope, Stampede. We're all going to be running away just fine. Um, this is they don't have a timber saw, but they're gonna run, 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 and nobody's gonna get caught. This was a first pick centaur, by the way. So it's not like it came last second and they were like, oh my god, we forgot. It's like they knew they were gonna be dealing with Stampede, and somehow they have not been able to like, play around it well at all. They picked the Kunkka and they were like, this is enough. And I actually That's thought it we... was going to be enough, but the Shadow Demon and the Venge really changed the game. They really changed the game. Italiano Gangstar, that is a hard hero to kill, has a BKB, 3.6k HP, plus he has a shard, so he can get up to like 7k if he uh, gets a couple of those up red. Going forward, the silence is there from the Agnum Scepter, kids taking some damage, but it is a death profit, it will take a lot more to kill get him. Focusing on Pingus, and he is dead. They're going for the Avenger. Look at the Sven going in with a perfect side. They're gonna be popping the BKB on Fade, and he's just running away. He doesn't want to get squashed. Jensen, like a husband being called by his wife to smash the bug, but now he's surrounded by a Taurus storm, he's in a lot of trouble. It seems that he cannot swim all that well, but he can fly, and he can run, and he can smash, and kill, and slash, as they take down everybody on the enemy side, buyback from the brood, just to defend the base. I mean, they, it's 80 seconds without your mid laner, and you have almost a mid without, without the rest of the team. I don't think there's... We'll see if they can defend it. You know, there's still a tier 3 standing. The scythe on the death. She is so farmed. They almost do bring camps on. It was a good idea by Legacy. They finally feel like, okay, we can try it. We can see the sports. We should jump on them. They bring down GeoZZ, but it's too little, too late. You're, you're already 28,000 gold behind when that fight began. It, it's a good adjustment. It just happened so late in the match. Going, it's going to be it's the over. Zero it is. It's definitely called. You know, they're, they're, like, they're looking at it like, this is fine. This is over. There's nothing we can do here. Very impressive bike in esports. I can't help but feel like though that there were some interesting moves coming out from Legacy. We didn't see the Orchid on the Brood Mother. We always feel like they were taking these fights in the middle of nowhere where there's no objectives to go for. Kind of aiming for cores rather than supports. Like Legacy could have played this better, but Grin deserves the victory as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It took Legacy some time to really understand how they need to approach the team fights. They were using their spells perfectly, but the targeting wasn't the best. And the uh, the full-on commit onto one target at the start wasn't really a good move. I guess that's what they wanted to do with the Kunkka, but these support picks really kind of screwed them over and a lot of time was needed for them to adjust. Yeah, maybe, maybe some other time, but now green are going to be the victors. Yeah, kudos to Green, uh, Green on this one. Yeah, they looked really, they looked really good. Like they have always been a team that, again, I don't say that they're best at team fights because I don't think they are, but they're really, really good at figuring out what we need to do to win, like how we approach this game. Yamsen was dying. I think he was like two and four at the ten minute mark, but they had so much stack so he can recover. So they, even though they're like, oh, you're dying, Yamsen, it's okay. We have a way for you to recover. As four and, and four, two. yeah, four and two. There, there you go, two and four. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I just. Uh... It's always inverted in these cameras, so I uh, I made a mistake. So sorry, Automo. It will never ever happen again. But what will happen again is at least one more game versus Grin and Legacy. Legacy are not out of the tournament just yet. These two teams are fighting for the five thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars that the second team in this qualifier gets, but also for a chance to fight versus Nouns, who are the favorites of it to go to the main tournament. Who's gonna be the victor? Is it gonna be Green Esports with the two O, or can Legacy force out the decider? We find out after the break.
was an exciting game one here between Legacy and Green Esports in the lower bracket finals of the NA Closed Qualifiers for what you can see on the middle top of your screens of the Elite League. Whoever wins the day, the full qualifier will be going to the main tournament. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, wait, can I do it? Uh, yeah, oh, easy, easy, yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. But uh, very nice performance from Green. It was an exciting game, anyways. But mm. I feel like after 20 minutes, we knew who was gonna win. But uh, it, it was still kind of fun to watch those long drawn out fights. To be honest, I felt like we knew who was gonna win. The moment we saw Broodmothers kind of skip on the Orchid, because that allowed you to jump on support. You'd be forced to use Stampy to save them or let them die, and that sort of closed up the map a little bit. For lack, we just did not have the same impact. For him and then he goes for the echo saber which again is good but you put a blood thorn with your army of spiders you melt people but that's the game you're just being humble it was you who knew they were gonna win i actually didn't mind the phylactery i thought it was cool so. i just I, I was like i hate it like you see though they do get rid of the shadow demon will they get rid of the centaur this time around last game Ten there was seconds. a ban on the mars so there was an immediate pick of the centaur we'll see that and it green doesn't have first pick oh Okay, they're like, yeah, sure. You want uh, the center? You go for it, baby. Right there. They they banned the shadow demon though, so them picking the Kunka now is going to be much more impactful. Hundred percent. Because as we were mentioning, like if your Kunka facing off against the Ven Venge saves is like, all right, so you swap the guy either you know too early, and in which case you catch two people, or you do two after they get uh, X mark, which case you just kill the Venge. But shadow demon has no such issues. I can just nope. So they die. Oh, Green, they get rid of the Terror Blade. They give a Centaur again. No, they take the Dragon Knight as an opening. All right. Okay. Me. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Very flexible hero. Can go in sort of multiple lanes as well. And there's... We do read the chat. And someone in the chat was pointing out that there's two offlaners on Legacy. That has really limited their ability Ten to sort seconds. of draft. Because you can't just pick the standard carries. You're forced to pick, you know... Kunkka Mars or Centaur and Dragon Knight, things like that, where it's like two kind of off lane ish heroes. Yeah, but Dragon Knight is basically Death Prophet and Centaur in one. So Green Esports, they're definitely going to crush it. And Legacy, they're going to go for the Lesh again. I actually have to say, I was kind of impressed with BNC, especially at the start. Same, same. The mistakes he made were small mistakes. Lesh is that type of hero that small mistakes as a support are going to cost you dearly. But he definitely knows what he needs to do. If he just plays it a tad bit better and safer, it's... Uh, it's gonna look really good. No, I, I thought BSC did fine as well on the Lush Rack. It's not guaranteed that he is going to be playing Lush Rack again, though. Uh, there is a. Oh, so I was gonna say there's time in the pool, but I just noticed there's not. As uh, they continue getting rid of scary. For Grim's part, they're like getting rid of carry heroes, although Legacy, as we mentioned, tends not to pick these. Scary or carry? Uh, scary carries. Okay. Uh, scaries. Legacy, scaries. That was, that's a good one. Scary. Uh, Legacy, we'll see. You know, I'm expecting something more like an Enigma plus... Five seconds left. Um, plus Centaur or something like that coming out from their side. Because mm, we have, I, we have I seen don't Fade. See an Enigma. We have Radiant seen Fade on the safe lane Enigma. It has happened. And I see the Rubik ban. You know. Oh boy. Kind of, uh -huh, here it goes. It's going to be Crystal Maiden. Okay, the Enigma is coming right after. Don't worry. Okay, sure, sure, sure. We'll, we'll see. I actually wouldn't mind it as there will be a Grimstroke who pretty much doesn't care about these two heroes. You get the shard, and that's going to be a problem for them. Batrider, pretty much the same, uh, especially if there's an Inkswell on him. This is a support of Green Esports, and their response to this first pick in the second phase with two supports has been top notch in this series. I'm just loving what they picked up. I like it too. Now, you, you know, Dragon Knight can be a good ink slay. So does the Bat Rider, honestly. Double Lasso, Double Dragon Tail, two of the, some of the, you know, a BKB piercing ultimate and uh, one of the longest normal stuns in the game. You're happy with that. If, if I'm Legacy, again, I'm thinking Centaur and I'm thinking Enigma would be a decent combination. You know, you want the Less Strike to be mobile. Centaur gives you that. You want people to hold them down. Enigma gives you that. What about a Magnus? What about a Magnus, right? Because you have two offlaners, and uh, Magnus is a hero that can be played as a carry. I'm guessing one of these offlaners can can play it. Maybe a quick centaur. That's one. What they add? Yeah, I mean, I I don't mind. They have ten legs in three heroes. That's that's a lot. More legs is better. More legs is better. Although I, it makes me think of something. Not think the hoodwink. I'm I'm not gonna say it here. I, I'll t remind me to ask you about it after this about centaur and his four legs. As Hoodwing comes out, good combination with a Centaur. 
So it's very, you know, it's gonna be Leshrac mid, not BNC. Hoodwink, Hoodwink and Centaur together. Ten seconds. So it is gonna be a Lesh mid or a Lesh carry. Five we'll uh, we'll find we'll out once we see the last pick. Uh, whoever can predict these legacy drafts, he should be. Uh, he should be given the um, the title of the Oracle because I I actually had no idea what they were gonna go for. No, for legacy again, I'm still feeling like like Enigma is gonna be coming out at some point. You just try to end the game very fast. Centaur, let's strike, go for towers. Who you win the lane with who doing crystal maid? It's not. It's like let's wait in 30 minutes. Not very high risk, but very high reward as well. As Grin, they do take a good count to the Centaur, which is the puck. You get the Oof. coil off. Very nice. Very nice pick. Dude, this buck is perfect. I mean, Grin Esports, I think they outdid themselves with the draft this time around. I think Legacy have more of a normal draft that can catch you off guard and snowball out of control than they had last time. But Grin Esports' responses have been just beautiful, right? If you see yeah. Legacy, you see a lot of stuns, but none of them are point-and-click easy stuns to land. And Buck is a perfect hero versus those. Yeah, Crystal May has the bite, which is good, but it's also... You know, it's Crystal Main. Good luck getting next to the pipe to the puck and using it. Like, all right. So Grin definitely needs definitely needs a carry, right? Dragon Knight is going to go with the off lane. You have Puck mid. We'll see what they want to go with. Lots of carries have already been banned. The Terror Blade, the Life Stealer, the Sven. But what else would, would Yamson want actually? Faceless Void oh. is in. Troll Warlord is in. Lina, Morphling, Medusa. Like this, all of his most played heroes are still in the pool. Um, so something that lanes relatively well versus the Centaur. Faces Void probably doesn't no. uh, make Troll the Warlord. cut. Troll he Warlord's does. Kind of, yeah. Troll Warlord is probably the best, but he's also not amazing later on. Medusa is kind of fine just because you look at Legacy. It's like you guys don't really have a whole ton of burst damage. You have some burst damage, Hoodwing, Centaur. But if you can survive that as Medusa, which you will because you're going to be super tanky with all that mana, you're kind of fine. You don't care about that. It's so he played the gyro as well. That's out of the question, I'd say, in this game. You can also go for something super aggressive, right, to, to run into the, the center. We saw some juggernauts yesterday. I, yeah. I know that we haven't seen him play it, but actually juggernaut Grimstroke would be solid versus the centaur. I wouldn't mind it at all. Juggernaut would also be pretty good. Ten Who's going to be the next one? Yeah, it's going to be Grim Scary, then we'll see like what Legacy goes for. My Ten belief seconds. is that it's going to be the Enigma. However... I've seen Fade play Enigma three times, and in each one of them it looks pretty bad. Okay, maybe I, I, need to, I need to find a way to sort of get out of what I was going to say, but I couldn't in the last second. It just it hasn't been looked like he's super comfortable with the hero. He, I mean, he is. That's the thing. He is very comfortable with it in the pubs. It hasn't translated to a good pro Ten game performance seconds. so far. Um, what do you think is the case? Are pro games just different, or is his team 100%. not understanding exactly what they need to do? Like, what's the idea there? Pro games are different. Me and you have both dabbled into it with playing with a team, and it's so it's so it's just not the same when people are actually communicating with each other instead of instead of insulting mothers. They're like, oh, listen, hey guys, I need a stampede. Stampede comes. Who out insults mothers? Like, why oh. would anyone ever do that? I don't know why they do it. You know. That's just how it. But who it does up. that? Nobody does that. Uh, it's Dyer's band. I feel like you haven't played pubs as much as I have. Recently. You, you, you sure? <laughs> yeah, recently, definitely. But uh, the thing is, you should come to Europe. People are super nice here. When you make a mistake, they all just uh, come around and they're like a support group. You come like, my name is Harry, and I made a mistake. They say hello, Harry, and that's uh, and it's always fine. There will be a doom. So is that a doom carry or a dragonite carry? I think it would like it to be a Dragonite carry, honestly. But they can switch it on based on their last pick. Not bad. And Doom, if you go for Agonims and you're up against a, a, an Enigma, you can just counter him no matter what. Like, there's no counterplay here. Seconds. Legacy, if they were thinking of Enigma, it's less likely now, I would say. Five of course, there's the double left. Doom, which is really strong. Double Bzzzt as well, if you, want, if you have it. Which is pretty good. Is there something cool that they can pick here? You know, classic Legacy pick that's actually going to switch things in their favor? Um, maybe they could take the Medusa, honestly. Anti Mage. Does anti -mage? anybody play Anti Mage? Let's There's go. There's a problem. You have Fade as your carry player, as your position. Well, that's how he's listed. And it's like he is an off lane player. He is not a carry player. And Anti Mage I mean, like, was played off lane, you know, so it's not out of the question. Please pick it up. It We've, I've seen that Vanguard Diffusal Blade Anti Mage, and it, it's. 
It's very niche. What they go with? They go with the Brute Mother again for, for Legacy. This is an Orchid game, though. It was an Orchid game last time. We'll see if, if he believes in it. <laughs> so, nothing, so it's going to be the position 5 Bat Rider, position 4 Grimstroke. Uh, Italian Gangster is going to be the Doom, so it's going to be the Carry Dragon Knight. Okay. I think this draft... I mean, in the previous game, I thought that I thought I was all on Legacy because I thought they were the better team. This draft, I'll let you go first. Actually, maybe you have you have a strong opinion. Okay, okay, Otomo, no problem. I'll take the I'll take the bullet for you. Mm -hmm. So overall, I was loving how Grin were drafting until I saw the Doom. I mm -hmm. just don't think it's that great of a last pick. I would say that because of it, this equalizes it, but this game, Fate has to go for an Orchid. If this is not an Orchid game for the Broodmother, I think they're going to lose. But if he does get the Orchid, I can mm -hmm. actually see this Legacy lineup snowballing out of control because that's going to be a pretty early Orchid, a problem for the Puck. That's the Puck is the only hero that you actually have a problem with in this game. I agreed. I, I was thinking the same thing about the Puck, that if, you know, if you if kids get on someone, you brood mother, you can't walk away in the trees. Hoodwink can't do the same thing. Stampede becomes used like three of your mobility spells are just like instantly negated, and that's very that's a big problem for them. So, I like what Grin has with the puck. Uh, yeah, you know I think we're gonna go with Grin. I think it's gonna be a two zero on this one. I, I we've been surprised many times in the past, but. It all comes down to whether Fade gets an Orchid or not. It seems like we're reiterating a lot of the same points, but that's just how crucial they are. Uh, I'm going to go with Legacy. I think they got this one. This is the type of draft that can give you so much snowball potential. And I think the games that Legacy have won, it have been, they have been really fast games. Okay. So right. I'm going to go with them. And to be fair, on the Dire side, Dragonite as a carry kind of takes a little bit of time. Doom in between the Doom, she doesn't do too much. So yeah, there's there's certainly this end. You have Stampede on the other side, so you can just get away from uh, bad engagements if the Coil doesn't land. So there's definitely okay. counterplay here to do, but yeah, I, I, I want to see Grin, Grin their way all to the finals. Okay, sure. I, I just wanted a different carry or a different last pick in general general for uh, for Grin. I'm not too convinced about this Dragonite. I can see some merit to their lineup. There definitely is a strong point in double Doom, double double stun from the Dragonite, double lasso with the puck keeping them all in place. But uh, it's not the easiest thing to land in general. For sure. Uh, there's the Soulbind. Oftentimes we see Soulbind, we're like, what's the value here? But there's a lot of value to this Soulbind. It's like, it's just any spell. You know, any lasso, any any dragon stun, any do, any all of them are very good. There's BNC, there's a nice A card shot. Bit of harass coming out very early here from Legacy. You know, they're feeling miffed. They're like, you guys kind of crushed us. Here, have a Hoodwink bolt to to the face. I'm actually surprised he started off with the uh, with the acorn shot. Usually we do see a bushwhack. I guess acorn shot is solid to secure the uh, the range creep center. Can't do it though. Yeah, plus level one, you're not actually going to be getting a whole lot of kills with a center hoodwink. It's usually level two, right? Double edge and hoof stomp plus bushwhack and acorn. So I think it's kind of almost irrelevant. But And it's bushwhack is good if you're actually going for these big engagements in the forest. Here in the river, what are you really going to get any value from? Yeah, not a lot of trees in the river, actually. Um, only a couple. There are, the right? There are a few. There's like one or two only. That's it. The rest of it's all just water. I'm, I'm, when you think about it, like, there are heroes that do well in the water, like Slada, then we have three heroes, like Hoodwink and Broodmother and Treant. I don't know. I wonder if we'll ever have, like, Cliff How heroes. is Broodmother a tree hero? She makes the webs in it and she gets free pathing. She's a tree hero. Okay, sure, if you, uh, if you say so, I would disagree. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's fine. We uh, we don't have to agree on 100% of things. We actually right. do disagree quite a lot overall. But it uh, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. We're still friends. We, we can always ask the, the best people, the chat. They'll tell us if, if Blue Mother counts as a tree hero or not. Because, like I said, she's usually in the trees. So she's a tree hero. Yeah, okay. So Blue Mother would be a good happy tree friends character. So I guess that maybe that's what you're thinking about. That's the one where they slice bunnies in half, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> like, I remember. Oh, oh my do god! 
We have to learn a gangster, sliced in half, literally, and uh, will be taken down. And Sneaky could be in some trouble as well if he stays here as Yamsen will be dying on the other side of the map. That's gonna be two cores dead on different lanes and two pretty tanky, hard to bring down cores. No, they just get harassed. I've been seeing BNC getting great acorn shots. You know, he throws on GSDs, he goes to a creep, goes back to him. Like, he's been harassing him like crazy. And level two, oh, BNC gets the stun off. I think he's probably dead. Um, Oof, unless... He plants a tree, yeah, at least. He plants a tree. Definitely a tree friend. Hmm, I, wasn't that one point mentioned in Do Happy? Uh, it's like a happy little tree or something. That was when you. Oh, what was that? Pretty sure there was an ability or something like that with, with the iron branch. Oh, no, it's not the iron branch. It's when you get. Uh, uh, when the tiny tosses the tree towards you, it's tree tree. I think you uh, read the uh, the Twitter of D Panda and Kips. They kind of shared it for one of their games. No, no, no. I'm sure that there was at one point it was mentioned that you can plant a happy tree, something like that. I may need to find the info for it to confirm. It's uh, probably good bushwhack on too. Jesus. And yep. we saw what we, we saw what we expected, right? Level two hits, little Nick and BNC go aggressive, they get a kill. And right now it's a one thousand gold. Look at the CS, by the way. We haven't mentioned, but uh, can we look at the mid lane, like what just, just to see if the buck is still smiling? Because it, it is a smiley type hero, and Lesh is usually like the uh, the one that is uh, kind of mad and all high and mighty. But uh, this buck, he is getting schooled. He is getting crushed. 80, 11 to the 9 and 2. I expected Lesh to win just because you're going to have to dodge a lot of these lightnings and stuff. But not by this margin. You know, I was like, oh, he's going to be a few CS behind, but he'll be re recovered. But this is insane. 12 denies on the Lesh rack. Yeah, more the denies than the Puck has CS. And the Doom has 6 CS. So, you know, Puck is getting crushed, but Doom is not having a game whatsoever. Yep, Doom as well. And remember, he also died. He was first blood. That's the problem. The only lane that's equal is the top lane, where it's like thir sorry, 13 and 6 to 12 and 2. It's like, I say that even it's still somewhat, not somewhat, decently centaur favored, or going centaur, centaur's way, sorry. We have a different view of what's equal, right? Because uh, yeah. for me, it looks like the centaur is crushing that lane as well. It's just that his teammates are crushing the other lanes even yeah. more, so that, <laughs> that he just doesn't look that impressive. Yeah, it's like he's, he's winning, but other guys are winning so much harder, it doesn't even seem it. Well, eh, the Dragon Knight will be fine, though. You, know, you get a couple of braces, Dragon Blood, you're gonna be okay. I'm, I am worried about Italian Gangster. I think that's the guy who kind of needs to recover the most as... Okay. Uh, he ate the, the mud golem, so... Yeah. Pingus does not care. They actually separated them, so the Inkswell does not get used. Italiano Gangstar is uh, getting smacked, just gets pushed back, not even close to getting to the Crystal Maiden. And that was kind of a lot of wasted time for them. Because, oh, he doesn't get the flag bearer either. Oh, dear. That's a problem. Yeah, and oh yeah, th that's his biggest problem. That's really his biggest problem here. It's worth two creeps to be to be fair. You know, when you're this far behind, it is worth a lot to get it. As another, it's not even deny, it's just that he doesn't let him take it. Uh, but, three, I guess, if if your uh, teammate is in the vicinity, as yes, that's this true, is gonna be chased down by sneaky. No blood grenade. He has a healing salve. Plants down a tree to save lives. Uses the a healing happy tree. salve and his. Uh, his career is not gonna die because Sneaky is just hungry for this kill and because of it, he's not gonna get anything. This is just the idea, guys. Do not be greedy. Do not be greedy in your life. Just take what you can and it's gonna be fine. Ping is because of this, he just lives and that's the slowest dog I've ever seen. This is actually not so bad that he didn't kill him because now he's gonna have to walk all the way back, heal up and go all the way back. He's actually going to go for the for the ruin instead. G-O-Z-Z. -Z. Should be able to make it out just fine. Yeah, it's not so bad, honestly, that he didn't kill him. You waste so much time. You can see now that Doom is able to actually... I was going to say he's going to be able to farm, but he only gets two CS the whole time I was talking. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you were talking and talking, and he talking. wasn't was getting like, anything. He wasn't getting anything. Poor guy. He has 13, 13 CS. Oh, uh, God, man. Just get one. <laughs> That's so sad. Dude, just max out your Devourer at this point, and he does have two points. Uh, Quill okay. gonna be used, instantly broken. Going in with the Ink Swell. Red is a little bit too tanky, and they're running away. Well, you were running forward just a second ago. Why are you running now towards the other direction? But think you will never get it towards his uh, towards his side of the of the mid lane. 
and Doom gets another two CS while we were talking. So there you Whoa. go. Whoa! Uh, he's guessing up, baby. Broodmother, probably going to be for that, sorry, that uh, power treads. He already has the soul ring, but it's going to be power treads after. Then we'll see if he's going to go for Orchid or if he's going to go and show us. Bye. So, what a bushwhack from a mile away, though. Yeah, BNC's spell usage is just on point. I feel like these heroes are easier to play in his hands. That That's just the, the vibe that I'm getting in general. Faye doesn't have a single point in Insatiable Hunger, so in general, he's going to be a little bit in trouble here in the lane once the Doom comes back. I just realized that I've seen Grimstroke's one-shot Broodmothers. You know, you just go with the max stroke of Faye, you hit all the spiders. In YouTube he videos? I've seen it in YouTube videos. I've seen it once in a pro game. One time. Okay. Which means it can happen. One time. And he is maxing out Stroke of Fate, you know, he's... So he that is a bit of unique. Uh, for sure, for sure. He understands what he needs to do in this game and just how much of a value it is going to be bringing. 4 to 1 in terms of kills, 1k gold lead, though probably closer to 2, considering that uh, almost on every position they are being... Uh, they are being heavily outmatched from the uh, from their counterparts. Not too bad in two of them, it's just the, the offlane that's a really big difference, right? Because like. Oh, actually, I was gonna say, like, the, the Broodmother is not the carry this time around. Sorry. Yo! Yep, he's gone. So, Broodmother is the carry. Yeah, so Broodmother is like 3.6 or 3.3 for the DK. That's not so bad. Unless you 3.7 to 3.1, it's not so bad. Actually, there's not, so it's not so bad. Coil breaks, BNC Good dies, goal. gets. Doesn't have that much in terms of resources, but he's more than capable of standing his ground. Faye now level 7, so the spawn spiderlings are there. He does have his, or broodmother, she does have her babies. And let's see, Sneaky coming over. There is going to be a stroke of Fate doing a lot of damage there. Not one-shotting Fate, but uh, definitely close to, uh, to being in some danger territory. But a lot of CS onto Sneaky. Very nice. If he was level 5, that would have done a lot more damage, but still, pretty good. And that is one of the things. Grimstock, really good against Grimstock. One of them is because of what you just saw. Another is, firstly, you get the dispel from the shards, so you can use it on yourself or allies. If you can get early... Doom comes out! Can they get him? Stampede oh. used. That's a Doom counter. Gets into the trees because he's a tree hero. My analyst told me that. Spider is trying to eat Sneaky, but he's fine. As a Fade runs away, spawns some babies there. Even if he dies, his DNA remains. Can we look at the Italian gangster for a second? I want to say his skill build, but we can do that afterwards, I suppose. Uh, they're going mid. They do have a coil. They throw it out immediately. Up. Uh, is he gonna break it? Does do it there behind the tree. It's all gonna be used on GeoZZ. Needs to be Oops. careful because, oh, Bushwax again, B and C. Always on the mark with those as uh, Blood Grenade misses because of his own flame break. So, Italiano Gangster dies on the bottom lane. And Kit is gonna be dropping low here. The uh, AoE damage from Red is just too much. Everybody has to run away. The thing is that he's faster than you. And he gets a double, losing only a support. That's three heroes dead around the map. Doom died in the meantime as well. Dude, the stroke of fate missing means that he wasn't able to, like, they didn't slow him down in time. That's why the ink swell missed as well. We've seen so many of these uh, good stroke picks kind of mess up the ink swell. It's a great ability, but teams at this level seem to either know how to play really well against it or don't know how to use it. Uh, yeah, please, see Amazon. He's getting something for his team, which is going to be that tower. So it's nice, but he needs to be careful doesn't get denied. Good job on Yamson. Yep, doesn't have much mana to work with, so if the Stampede was ready, he could have gotten taken, he could have take, gotten taken down, I guess that's gotten the proper take, way to say gotten it. Gotten taken down. I, I, that's, no, I'm, I'm sure that's not a sentence. Got uh, taken down, I think is, is good enough. I don't think you can say gotten. Yeah, you're, you're the guy with the library behind you, so I'm just gonna listen, I guess. Well, it says here, at Webster's. Oh, that's what I want to see for Italian Gangster. He does not have a point in Inferno Blade. That would have been a nice, that would have been the damage he needed to kill the Brood Mother just now. Because he's maxing out Devour, like you're saying, you know. So it does feel like he needs that extra gold. He is so far behind. Dude, what's he doing? Okay, no uh -huh. hand of mice. I'm good. I'm good with that. If you go for the early Shivas on Doom, you actually still have an impact, even if you're a bit behind. It's not the mice off three and four, which is even slower. Uh, mid lane tower dropped, now the uh, top lane is gonna follow. In the last game, Grin, they had the Death Prophet and it took a long time to take down those tier ones. Well, uh, Legacy is not gonna be taking as long. On the other side, we have a Dragon Knight, so the uh, the tier ones on the Radiant side shouldn't be standing there for a long time either. 
Mm, let's see. Little Nick, what's he got coming on the courier? It's his blink first item on the Centaur. He just wants to be as active as possible. I like that. Doesn't feel like he needs to get the Shivas early on. And Fade is going to be going for the Orchid, so uh, easy win. Easy win for Legacy, as there is a smoke from Grin, level 6 on the Batrider, level 6 on Sneaky, but of course on a Grimstroke, you're not going to be picking up your Soul oh. Bind just yet. Smoke breaks, places a ward, sees a Broodmother, runs away. No more Soul Bind. Interesting. I'm surprised that he's placing that much value on the other spells. I know that he's not got Phantom's Embrace, but everyone else has the spells that you want them to have. Uh, when the, uh, interesting, you reminded me of Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, so I thought there was going to be a fact coming out after that, but uh, no such luck. I didn't really like Sheldon that much. He almost feel, he felt like kind of a jackass. I mean, I know that's kind of his character, but it's like overpowers the funny that he's supposed to be. Okay, okay, but then why, why are you imitating him? I'm not imitating, I just said the word. You said I, I, I'm like him. Okay, Maybe sure, nice. sure, sure, sure. As uh, oh, BNC, good kill. Ah, uh, very dead, very, very dead. A nice solid kill for them to get. They would definitely like to get something off this Lesh track. However, he's going starting off with the sun, so dooming him, stunning it all feels a little bit less impactful, especially with doom going from 16 to 12 seconds at level one. So it doesn't feel like it lasts a long, long time. 9 to 4, and uh, Yamsen is now just gonna be farming here until he gets the Mage Slayer. He's uh, farming well. He is doing a solid job, but it's still a Dragonite. Until you get your yeah. level 12, it's it's not gonna be that uh, that fast of a farm. Exactly, it's like that's what I'm saying. Like For a Dragonite, he's farming very well. When he was playing Sven, he was just doing so much better. As Look at all those spider legs. Sneaky would love to get them. Uh, it almost... He separates uh, them, stroke of fate completely off the mark, doesn't really use that brush too well. Kits is gonna be running away after the coil was unsuccessful, and now with the Stampede running forward, the spawn spiraling onto Italiano Gangstar. They want Kits, and with just one stun connecting, it is gonna be enough. Here comes the Sharpshooter, slows down the poor Grimstroke, and he's gonna have to pay with his life. They got ahead of themselves, they got punished. Yeah, they they took so much time because I was looking, I was like, oh look at all these spiders, juicy, juicy, but takes a fire geo, easy, easy, gets it. Okay, he got it, nice. And probably the Dragonite is gonna be getting the other one if he has the guts to go for it. Geo's easy will die for a sense. Actually, with the lasso, might be able to His survive going through the defender gate. There's the Amson. He didn't go for the steal. He wants to go for BNC, and we all know dragons they eat squirrels for breakfast, lunch, and dinner whenever they find them. Uh, doesn't get the wisdom ruin, but I feel like that's just as valuable. The fact that Geo is easy makes it out alive in that situation kind of turns that that engagement very much in favor of Green Esports. They want to go for more. They know Stampede is down, but looks like they aren't going to be able to just chase to chase just yet. Crystal made back that frostbite, by the way. Great catch for the puck. I mean, Crystal made has always max out the frostbite. True, don't they? True, but Usually, I mean, I've seen some people go for like more points than Nova, but yeah, it's it's the general strategy. Or sorry, general skill build. Yep. So, no what's the play now for Grin? Uh, you are super far behind. You have a Doom, so you should be ahead because you have a built-in Midas. What's the plan? I think you can you can wait for them to come to you. You don't have to actually go out and do too much. If you can get vision on the map, that's great. Maybe if you can get a smoke and Doom on someone. But in between. You're kind of content to farm because if the game does go late, you are in the better spot. I think like their draft just really? scales better. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly on the the green side True. if we go we go late game. You if know, we go like, ultra late game, yes. yes. But like 35, 40 minutes, I'm not sure that they're. Uh, but yeah, ultra late game with like Aghanim scepters and stuff. Yeah, I could uh, I could definitely see them be the stronger ones. Yeah, if you can just keep it. Kind of even until then, you're gonna be okay as oh dear. Oh, Orchid, no. freezing field, the Amson gets the stun, but he's still gonna be gobbled up actually. Inkswell gives him enough moment speed to run away, and that Mage Slayer on the Crystal made it made sure that Pingus wasn't doing all that much damage. They have the Stampede to run away, maybe they should have used it for the damage, then it would have been enough. And he's, he had the raindrop as well, that's why the, the Wider Crystal Nova at the end didn't bring him down. He had more points in it instead of Frostbite. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. okay, okay. Uh, that's fine though. That was a lot of resources being used on Legacy. Green Esports now, it's the time to smoke. You'd love to find just anyone. Fade though, though would be premium. 
Yep. As he well, does walk let's into them. See, they see him. They don't even have to doom him. That's the uh, biggest problem here for Legacy is that you lost your carry without almost any commitment on the other side. Sure, they use the lasso, but that's not the longest of cooldown spells. Exactly. Plus, like you will always trade your la your, your support lasso for Kill and Broodmother. They did in the smoke, basically. That's all that they had to use. Um, Kits is going for a blink. I want to see a Yules. It's very scary if you jump in and you get caught by a Frost Bite or the Orchid. And I think that's very possible. Still, he wants that mobility. Maybe he'll be able to. Uh, he'll be like, okay, I see the Orchid used. Now I'm gonna jump in, which is fine. Uh, then it's gonna be easier. Bottom lane tower taking a lot of damage. Uh, top lane tower taking a lot of damage. Of course, it's a two, tier two versus tier one, so definitely the ones that are gonna be happier with the trade. If it does go that way, it is gonna be uh, legacy. And they're actually keeping the broodmother to the bottom lane, so actually thinking about defending. This took too long. Silence, Inkswell gonna be used, sneaky, he, he doesn't have the shard just yet, Yamsen gonna be turning around, gets hoof stomp, gets the uh, dragon tail to fingers, but it doesn't change the fact that he's just gonna be sharpshooted to death, this time around it's, uh, it's the other way, it's gonna be squirrels hunting dragons. Clear victory there for Legacy, getting the tier 2 was already better trial trade, and you also get a free dragon knight carry on top of that, so you're very happy. What's dragon knight, I think he's going for what, blink dagger now that he's got the witch blade. So, he just wants to initiate Blink Dagger on the puck, so big amount of movement coming out from Green Esports, which they need. And, of course, Doom also finishes his Blink Dagger. He was going Shiva's first, but he's like, I'm going to get Blink, then I'll finish the Shiva. Which is fine. I, I like that. Uh, Geo's easy. Okay. He's just farming as well. Dude, there's four Blinks on the Dire side. The only one who doesn't have is the Grimstroke. But, you know, to be fair, he does need the Shard way more. No you know what that race. means? You know what that yeah. means? That means that you have 6k gold yep. or you're gonna have 6k gold that's not gonna make you stronger. Okay. That can be well, problematic. Then. Sneaky? Oh, oh, oh. Used to Isn't be there. 8k? Because there's like, there's four blink daggers? When they, when you oh, four. Yeah, 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 four. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, my, must be Serbian math over there. Oh, so you've learned not to uh, not to poke at the region that we're casting. That that's smart. Oh, yes. That's smart. I already yeah. saw the uh, the chat with like pitchforks going for us, and uh, you you finally learned your lesson. So they're maybe just gonna be uh, gonna be easy on us. Don't worry. In a few in a few minutes, I'll find some way to insult NA and just be mean about it. Because uh, it's just how it is. Let's track. He has a, I think the BKB on the way. Yep. There you go. BKB finished. But Doom doesn't care. You could do him? What? Oh, they're going for the lasso and the double hoof stomp with a stampede. Bushwhack actually off the mark. The Doom is gonna get shot through the meaning that he slowed down. There's the stomp from the Dragonite, the double one as well. The double Doom too doesn't change the fact that you're just all going to die. And this was the easiest fight ever. Is, is the Centaur actually gonna live? Nah, no yep. way. Dude, that was such a difference of opinion. You can see Green Esports. Itana Gangster did not want to fight. Sneaky was like, we are fighting. He ink swells him. He blinks away. Oh, man. That was... Like the clearest example of miscommunication in the team that we've seen in a long time. And also, they see a soul bind, and they're like, oh, this is what our lineup is supposed to do. Let's go. Right? Double spell, double spell, double spell, and you'll die because you were in such a bad spot after the initiation. That was honestly a perfect fight for Grin. You have the Cliff Ward... You have Red walking up high ground, making that mistake. You have everything ready. Then the guy just bought BKB, so you'd love to do him like while he had like, you'd love that situation. But I don't know. Grenis was that was a huge mistake by them. Huge. Arcane Rune Lesh, just going for another tier 2, put it in his pocket, you've only lost 2 tier 1s in your versus a Dragonite, so if you're Legacy, you're super happy. We talked about Grin and their, uh... Mm. Their weakness of being bad at taking objectives. And I think it's showing in both games in this series. Even the first one that they won. Yeah, they've, they've always been really good at uh, long-term thinking, but not the best at taking these team fights. And we just see them just now, right? It's like a fight comes out, you think, okay, they're gonna go well for Sneaky. Well done! Did you see that? Nice. Stroke nice. of Fate hits the spiders, hits BNC. This is kind of a... We expect that he's like yeah, 700 damage to me, guys. What the hell was that? Like he gets a shard for his troubles. Like here, here, have a shard. Just uh, don't stop cry, crying. BNC. Yeah. Yep, uh, exactly. I like how mean we are. We're like, stop crying, dude. It's just... Stop how is that mean? 
It's mean to tell, tell somebody, go cry. No, it's stop crying is you mean well to somebody. I think that's the exact, exact opposite, but sure. We can go with that. How's Doom coming along? Well, last time we saw, he just picked up the Blink Dagger. I imagine he might have the Plate Mail, but probably still far from that Shiva's. If our observer will ever indulge me and show me the Doom, the Doom, the Doom. That's fine, Hoodwink's good too. There we go. Yeah, he does have the money for the Plate Mail. And actually the Shiva's recipe, but not both. Nah, he was just messing with you. And I really have to say, this is one of the better observers I've I've worked with in general, right? Because the way that we're seeing these fights, it is it is just beautiful. I, uh, I really have to, to shout out to him because I don't even need to watch my uh, my other screen to, to know what's going on as he shows everything. Uh, but though the thing that he's not showing right now, he kind of experienced the caster curse himself, is that Roche is dying, right? So that's okay. one thing that he kind of missed as uh, BNC is dead again. It's at least you get killed right as they get Roshan, so you are going to be wasting some of their Aegis timer. So it's oh, it's not, it's not okay. But with the Aegis, you're behind anyway, so you're getting anything for yourself is okay. Any trades are really are good for you, so it's something. And we've mentioned before, and I still feel like it. If we go 40 minutes, and this is the only deficit, 8,000, it's okay for Grim. You know, if you don't lose buildings and all that sort of stuff. It's so hard not to lose buildings, right? You're versus exactly. a Lash who has the Aegis, so he's coming for you, ready or not. Uh, look at that, Grimstroke. He's got the Whisper of Dread, 10% more damage. Just farming away with the Stroke of Fate. I love it. He understands how strong it can be, right? Yeah, he does. So you can go for some of the Stroke of Fate talents as well later on in the, uh, in the game, and it can really... Imagine he is level 25, there's like... Yeah. 20 spiderlings and he went for the 75% stroke of fate damage. Imagine how much that would be. Coil onto the Crystal Maiden, silence as well. They're gonna save him with the Stampede being used. The puck needs to run away and the Crystal Maiden will survive. Now Kids might be in trouble himself. He's not careful, but uh, he will be careful and gets himself out. It's not the worst death in the, in the world. Again, the Bat Rider dies, but he's fairly not like next to his tower, so he should be okay. He should be up in time to defend it, basically. I say that as they are knocking on the towers themselves. Where is the Grimstroke? There he is. Where is the Glyph? It's not there, so this tower will fall. Diabolic Edict is way too strong. Man, they move way faster than I thought. I thought that, they, that you know, on Greedy to have a, you know, Bat Rider would be up by now by the time they reach it. But they're just like, nope, beeline, go for it. But Why is spiders yeah. shining purple? Uh, the spider links. I feel like that's a Google result. Why, pipe, why is spider shining purple? Uh, Not yeah, sure. Chat GPT. Look, look at what he does. He, he's doing that. There's a hot key that you can do this, like a command you put in where you press the spider links. They all go in, like, spread out here. Oh, it's not a gangster. Not oh, use the duel. Does I do? can use my hooves to stomp as well. Okay, and they caught him as well. He thought he could TP away. He waited for BNC to be in the vicinity. Mm, yeah, definitely a uh, a type of kill when you're going to be very content. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah, I'm son, can you pull... Can, he, needs to pull a, he needs to pull a pretty impressive magic trick for him to win. He doesn't actually go for the blink. He went for Manta first. But blink will be available in about a couple of hundred gold if he wants it. As... Come on, give us the stroke of fate! Although the spiders are so split up now, that's not as good as it used to be. Yeah, he needs that brush to be uh, to be working a little bit flexible, not just in a straight line. As the dragon tail connects, the earth split as well, and the double lasso! Where's the double doom? The doom is there, he had to buy back and look at what the lash is doing for them! Oh, they last will be close to their base. What am I gonna do now? I guess I just kill you all. Sharpshooter onto the Dragonite. Here comes the Doom. He this actually is the misses and will get stunned up. Has the Ink Swallow that will remove one stun, but there's just so many to work with. Moves stun onto the two of them, kills one, sets up for the other as Red is just doing a massive amount of damage, killing everybody in his wake. Uh, they buy back on the Doom. He's got Doom available, but there's no Soul Bind. There's no Yamsa. Yamsa can buy back if he chooses to, but. He really needs to do that very fast, because yeah, if you don't do it in the next few seconds, you're going to be losing another set of He's parents. just a man, though. doesn't have the dragon form. Sometimes a man is all you need. No, the, the song goes, I need a hero, right? So, uh, so I need a man. It doesn't really, uh, doesn't really work. 
I know she was she was recently in like um, she traveled to the Middle East to do a concert there. And I'm like, oh my god, this song is 40 years old. I didn't know you were still alive, actually. What but, uh, the I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. It's okay. an old song. That like, is a very old song as uh, they're gonna be coming forward. He's got him out the, the acorn shot. Red's still running forward. Has an Aegis for another 35 seconds. Doesn't even mind if he dies. Might even want to. Double, Double Doom gonna be used. Double Lasso as well. They're killing the brood mother. You're gonna be able to kill her. And now, will Nick in trouble as well. Shop connects. Red is Good back course. and does the big guy. The double stun. I need no soul mind to do that. As he just does not care. Has the Bloodstone and the BKB both to play. Three versus one. Where's your fourth hero? The Puck is there, zoning everybody else, but he is not as strong as this guy. Nice double is being spilled with removing sun. Either way, it doesn't matter. Red seems unstoppable at the moment. Flame break gonna be quite nice. B and C nice catch. Not gonna get burned down, but the trees are and now who's stopped on to poor GOC who's not gonna be having a buyback. That's a dieback in Swollen Yamson. Science on the uh Lesh rack, but he's gonna be getting himself out and dealing with the Phantom's embrace with ease. So it costs them two buybacks on the dire side, but they do hold, you know. And to be fair, they did get the double doom off. The only reason they did was because they kind of gave it to them, having less strike all the way front in front. But it's as you can see, it says it's an overall even trade. Next time you can get the double doom off with the Lesh and Broodmother without, oh man, the double was that? without the Aegis. Pretty damn good for Green Esports. Game if you recap: the fight recap does not calculate buyback gold. Does not? No. Nope. I was like, oh, uh, well, because I, I I could see that like they legacy walked away with a huge net worth advantage. They that before that fight they were like I think 13, 14 thousand. Now they're twenty. Oh dear, we really would like Geo's easy to be alive right about now and get the double lasso. Yep, they do have the soul bind. They don't have the doom, however, and they're not gonna have it for 35 seconds. The thing is, you don't have that much time. They go for the hex. Nice top on the earth splitter there with the mini stun, but you've lost the range axes. Melee axes will follow. You're dealing with mega creeps with heroes that are not great at killing them. What an adjustment by Fade, by the way. In game one, he went for Lack 3 Echo Saber, and that was a big hex crash. This game, he goes for Orchid, BKB, and he's just like, all right, well, you guys can't do anything to me. All right, you Green Esports, your backs are definitely up against the wall. Maybe through the wall very soon. Yeah, it feels like their heads are being smashed into a wall rather than uh, than anything else. So, Otomo, I can see that you're really trying hard to find mm -hmm. something to say that is going to be redeeming for Green, green Esports. So, uh, what have you come up with? I think this is a good time to start drafting for Game 3. Okay, very, very true. Hex, nice four staff. Keeps Italiana Gangstar uh, alive for Definitely half a second longer. As uh, it, it's just Red running forward and everybody just getting trampled under his feet. It, it wasn't even a close fight. It wasn't even a close game. We are uh, we are going to a decider. Green Esports, they played. They did just did not play the way we, we were thought. We were thinking they were. They've always had problems with team fights, but that one time when they get. When the Leshrac is walking up high ground and Doom is standing right there and everyone's already, it's like, oh my god. In my head, this was the comeback. This is the moment they were going to do. Then he ink swells the Doom and Doom blinks away. And you're like, what? It's, they get team wiped after that. And I don't think they kill anyone. So, as... When I see a misplay like that, I feel very, very weird about it. The headline is wrong. Grin does not lead the series at all. They are actually equal one and one right now. And this is going to come down to a best of one, almost $6,000 match. Dude, they lead the series. You know why? Because you have the momentum. Momentum in Dota is everything, right? Imagine when you have 30k gold lead five minutes into the game. You're going to win 100%. But yeah, they do tie the game against Green Esports. And with that, we know there's going to be a decider. Game 3 will happen here. And we want to see a Game 3 because uh, this might just be the most exciting series that we're watching today. As nouns are waiting for these two teams. And they are the heavy heavy favorites to win the entire thing. But for now, we take a short break before we come back with more Dota.
Grin and Legacy are currently tied 1-1 for that one last spot remaining in the Grand Finals. Who's going to be the victor? We find out right now because the draft is already on the way, Ultimo. Yeah, we are, like no time wasted. Let's just go straight into it. Okay, first, we have to look at their logos so you guys know the current situation. It's 1-1, so it's a best of one at this point. The winner gets guaranteed $5,700 and the chance to take on now the winner 14. of that one. Sorry? And fourteen dollars, five thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars, and they go up against Nouns for a chance to go for the actual uh, league itself, which will feature Dyer's twenty-four teams. Twenty-four Radiant teams is insane, by the way. I love that we're gonna have that. Yeah, let's repeat it again for our viewers. So we have the uh, the Swiss format of the competition, mm -hmm. where uh, eight teams are gonna fall off, and then eight teams that go through are gonna be going to uh, to play versus in a group stage in a long round robin group stage yep, uh, right. against eight teams that are directly invited to the group stage. So it's it's just gonna be an amazing tournament, all in all. It, it's another tournament. It's a league. That's how they uh, mm -hmm. call it. And then we have a uh, we have a playoff in the end because. People have understood from the DPC that a playoff is needed just to t make things more exciting for the viewers. Agreed. You know, nothing like having people eliminated. And seconds. if you go, by the way, anyone who makes it all to like the Swiss stage, you automatically get $10,000, which is nice. I like that, you know, last place still gets money. This was a problem that we had before the DPC with like Division 2. where you don't uh, make Participation money. trophy. Participation yes. trophy. No, I don't like participation trophies. Everything into the winner. Thank you. That would, that's the quickest way to kill the scene, by the way. That's just the best way to kill the scene, as orgs will be like, really? Oh, you're, yeah, if you, really? If you're like, hmm. No, no, like, in the age of social media, mm. you just put the guys that are winning everything, like, you know, on yachts and uh, in uh -huh. their uh, Ferraris or something. Everybody's gonna want to play. Like, I want to be like that guy. You probably never will, but you can dream and you can try and you can hope. Uh -huh. So uh, I think that would actually be a, a good way. Radiant sure, sure. Pick. That we can we can go with that. And but you know, teams will be like, "Oh, you're only the third best in Western Europe. You don't get any money. I only want the best of the best." In the meantime, let's go into the draft. Legacy. They start off with the Crystal Maid, and Green takes the Centaur, which means they won because Centaur has won every single game that he's appeared in this series. Well, both of them, and. Yeah, it just seems like both teams really like to play him. Italian Gangster or Lil Nick. Yeah, but still, Crystal Maiden plus the Kunkka, so that is pretty good versus the center. They did ban out the Shadow Demon uh, this time around as well, so... I kind of feel like in terms of opening of the draft, Legacy are gonna be better right now. And Green Esports, I like their two support responses, both of the games in at this part of the draft, but I... I can't fathom that they can again impress me that much. So I think just by the way that the draft is starting, Legacy have a much better opening than they had in the previous two games. But Grin picked Centaur. I mean... Who cares? But Centaur, that's... I mean, do I need... I don't know why I keep... I, I've said it once. I've said they have Centaur. Doesn't, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Come on, you know? Okay. Dude, I, I don't know if you were le reading the chat. Yeah. I like when we have less viewers and then we can actually see what all the people are writing. Yeah, One of our chatters best. said, you have to ban out ACM or Legacy are just going to win. And mm -hmm. uh, they are playing really well with the CM in general. They always win their games pretty fast with it. Fair point, fair point. And who are we to ever disagree with chat? But Grin, they do ban out Fade's uh, Broodmother. Game 1 didn't look good. Game 2, though, he adjusted and like crushed them with it. And as we mentioned, Legacy, they have their problem, which is that they don't have a standard position one player. They have two offlaners. One of them cosplays as position one. It's not even the best cosplay. It's like, kind of like mid, as they would say. Dude, he is top three in the NA close qualifier. So you said that you're not gonna, not gonna crap on this region, and you're just doing it, right? Uh, they, uh, they don't even have a carry. Like they suck. They're, they're top three, Ultimo. Like they, that's. That's a solid theme for sure. That's not a region crapping, firstly. That's a team crapping. Literally. No, I no, was no, like... They, if they're top three in a region, or, or top five, let's say, because Ten two teams seconds. getting invited, then you are that. You're saying, like, your fifth five best team left. or fourth best team is, like, really Dyer's bad. I would think that being fifth best team in NA is not something you put on your resume. 
again, the... again, you're doing it again. <laughs> this one, this one, I put on purpose though. This one, I mean to do it. I mean to be mean. As a... oh, look at that legacy, very squishy group. I know the Kunkar's run buff is there, but Crystal May and Puck Batrider, one of these just gets caught. They're just instantly annihilated. Not left. loving that, and the damage is also kind of. It's not great it's somehow. I don't know. I'm not liking the, the way the legacy is playing. And Green Exposed, they recognize the damage is whatever, so they take the Dragon Knight. I'm, I know you like Legacy's opening, but I'm way more on Green's side this time. Yeah, Legacy's damage output really mm. sucks. That's your 100% uh, correct on that. But they have found ways to make these fights last long and yeah. then win fights. The thing is, I look at Grin and I see so much burst potential, and it scares cool. me. Yeah, but then it's also Grin who has not had the cleanest you know, execution in a lot of these fights. I hope that they are going to be able to enter this one and be like, all right, we're going to be doing this, 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 and everybody get on the same page because game two, they were, they were playing in different cities, not even in the same bookstore. I mean, you know, the U.S. is a big country or uh, North America in general. It's just a uh, really, really big uh, like continent with a lot of big cities, so I don't think that uh, mm. that there is a chance that they're all in the same one. And yeah, I remember I have like this friend from the U.S. He's like, I'm flying from the east side to the west side. I'm like, oh, what's that? He's like, it's like you know five. Six. I don't exactly remember, but when he told me, I thought it would be like, oh, it's an hour. And he's like, no, the U.S. is huge, dude. It's like a whole continent. That kind of shocked me at the at the time. Yep, yep, it is, uh, it is a place. huge freaking country. Huge, as my son would say. He can't say H, so he says Y, so he calls it huge. As, uh, well, the Legacy, they get rid of a couple of you know, standard carries. Actually, quite a lot. The Sven, the Faceless Void, the Naga Siren are out. Green Esports, they're banning what? Offladers, because they're assuming Lil Nick is going to be taking the Kunkka. He's going to be playing the safe lane, which is something that's happened a lot. Ten will seconds. Fade bring out his patented... Enigma at the very end. We'll see. Broodmother. He's gonna bring out a Broodmother. It looks pretty good for Legacy once again. Not gonna lie. By the way, we have people really discussing this jump rope thing. And I got some people on my side. Which, you know, considering your height... Can we even find a rope big enough for you, giant man? Dude, I have I have a rope and every single jump rope, if you've ever jumped it, it, has, it is adjustable, right? Oh. See, you're telling me adjustable ropes and tactics, and I have one at home, and I'm thinking, maybe I really yeah, overestimate myself on this one. Nah, nah, we are, uh, it's going to be a cool competition. Anyways, though, uh, if it Great. ever happens, right, yeah. unless you unless you get scared. But uh, what are Grin going uh, to be picking up here? So this is definitely going to be a Dragonite mid. You picked it versus a Puck. Please tell me you picked it versus a Puck, and you're going to get a carry now. I hope so. I hope so as well, because I do like that matchup. Then they could... Oh, what, 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 what else could they take for Grin? Uh, they were, I mean, there were cards being banned. Up. Troll Warlord, is that something you want? There's Troll Warlord, there's Morphling, Medusa, if you want. Lina. I'd, I'd rather something like the Troll, honestly, or the Medusa. Something that Yamsi can just go and farm with. And they go for the Troll Warlord. No, yeah, not bad. Uh, Legacy's turn now. Mm. No, no Brood, please. Brood's already banned. You, you yeah, know. okay. Right, yeah, so, but no, no brood versus the troll, please. I'm thinking it's fade zero. I've been I've been harping on the enigma. I think it still looks pretty good. Ten but let's seconds. assume enigma is not picked. What would there be their second choice? Five uh, seconds left. They haven't shown a whole lot of diversity on this team. And I'm, and I'm not. And I'm thinking maybe the little next is gonna be the safe lane. So you pick something in the off lane. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. I mean, like, so you know, not Tide Hunter. You're up against Brake, so you don't really want that. Uh, Timber Saw's already banned out. Mars already banned out. Doom is in the pool. I don't think that's actually that's that bad for Legacy. I'm not sure about the Doom. I I don't want to pretend that I know what they're gonna pick. I'm completely Same. lost. I I wouldn't be surprised with any hero, right? Oh oh, they picked a wait, just just a punch. Sure, yeah, you picked the punch. I I would say yeah. I would, was expecting it, but I'm not surprised by it, not one bit. To be fair, Pudge is Lil Nick's most played hero, so if Fate takes the Kunkka, that would be obvious. And the only problem is that the Kunkka, I'm looking at the Kunkka, I'm like, are you a carry or are you off? Let me know, pick a lane, bro. But because we don't know, it's, we have to predict like two different roles, and that's very difficult to think about. 
The brain is not now, wired you, that way. You see, guys, I, I have an analyst here, and he's telling me it's hard to predict something. I can, I can slide by Otomo because I am a uh, play by play here, but you have to uh, find a way. And Razor, that's that's actually pretty decent, right? Because every single hero on the side of Grin needs time to start doing damage, and uh, Troll hates playing versus the Razor. Dragonite is not too happy about it. Yep. This is actually quite nice. I guess the supports plus the Centaur are decent versus it, but this is one of Fate's heroes as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really good one. I really like this uh, pick. You're up against the Troll World, so you're going to be fine in the lane. You won't be able to sort of do much against Sneaky and GeoZZ early on, but it doesn't matter. Dragon Knight, Centaur, Troll, all of them like to be relatively close range, so very good for the Razor. The problem is... If you fall behind with Razor, you struggle to come back in. So, for the third game, I'm sticking to... Man, I want to stick to Grin, but they perform so badly in team fights, even when I think their draft looks so much better. I feel like Legacy are taking it here. I am also disappointed in Asotomo. I mean, mainly in myself, but I guess you, you're my colleague here. So anyways, we kind of suckered our job. If we thought long and hard, Razor really was the best pick here. And it does go well with how Legacy want to play. So uh, we, we just should have thought long and hard and we would have came came to a conclusion. But yeah, this last pick, Razor, is giving me confidence because Legacy were missing out on that damage that is going to make yeah. use of these yeah. long team fights that they can go for. And Razor is like the perfect hero for this. I agree. I, I like I like, I like everything that Razor gives you because you also need a bit of durability and he does give you that as well. So in those extent team fights, he can do a good job. I like everything that Razor brings. But I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that you have Crystal Maiden Puck and Bat Rider on the same side. Why? I just feel like it's a little too fragile, even with a Kunkka. And if Fate ever falls behind on the Razor, your game is done. You know, like he has to perform really well. You underestimate the rum. I can see that you are not a Jack Sparrow fan, so. Or an alcoholic. Uh, those two things. All right, I, you know what? I'm sticking to my boys on Grin. Like, oh, yeah. there might be a fight happening. Let's get into the game. The flame break sent them away. Well you guys didn't see it, but. Uh, you uh, you can enjoy the radio cast a bit. We are in here. We really wanted to show you those amazing logos, as uh, there uh, will be wards placed, but uh, nobody dying. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to stick to Green Esports, and they do have the ward. Oh, well timed, very well timed. You can see Geozizi and Sneaky making, doing their best to make sure the ward goes off. Meanwhile, Batrider was like, I'm going to get it too. So. Very careful. He's got the RGB axis. I've not seen that one before. Really? I, or I mean, maybe I've seen it, I've just never noticed it, but... Wow. I see it all the time. It, it's weird, like, everybody has them. I don't know. Maybe... I, I'm not sure. That now I'm now I'm kind of confused, because I see this very often. Well, well, well I, I, I know it stands out for me, but they're very cool axes, I suppose. Yep, Although, yep, they definitely are. I'm, I'm, Hey, three ruins going here for Legacy, so great start for them. As that's a 400 gold advantage for your side. Mid lane is going to be Dragon Knight versus Puck. You know, Puck can try to harass, but Dragon Knight doesn't care. He already has the two bracers queued up. You know, a couple points of Dragon Blood, and you're just going to be fine. So it's just a, a snoozy farm fest, which we expect. You know, we have seen these surprise kills. Snapfire versus DK happened once, but overall, it should be a snoozer. Yeah, we've already seen a uh, a puck get destroyed in uh, in lane in the previous game. Though it was red doing the destroying of the puck. Now he's probably yeah. going to be on the receiving end of it. He's like, I know how this how this feels like. Make sure. All right, let's look at the side lanes. Which Whoa, lane? he got all four. Oh, kudos. Bottom lane is going to be the Hoodwing Centaur up against the Razor as well as the CM. Very much it's a, a mass can go both ways, but I heavily favor the, the Grin side. Centaur Hoodwink is insane. Once we have level 2, they might be able to get a kill. Plus, Pingus is super vulnerable. Even even Fade, he's not that tanky. Yeah, he but he can keep his distance, and they are just poking on Italiano Gangstar. They don't even care about Sneaky, who is uh, being a nuisance. We all know that Hood, Hoodwinks, they do this. Squirrels in our world are cute and awesome, and the only squirrel I know in Dota, apart from those critters on, on the ground, it's it's super annoying. I hate this hero. I even hated the sound of, of her attack animation. Right. The, the, 
and then and I'm like, oh my god, she's got the low. You think it's like you wouldn't hear that much because she's got the lo- longest reload or whatever you call it, but it just uh, yeah, I don't like her. I don't. I haven't actually played Hoodwinks yet, but I don't like her. Yep, I played a couple of uh, of games when she came out because I was like, I'd rather do the sound than be on the on the receiving end of it. Maybe it's just PTSD, really, from the uh, from the laning phase, which just continues to hit you. It you feel like it doesn't do any damage the first time she does it, but then when she does it 15 times, it really does. Uh, that's her. Speaking of 15, that's the number of CS that the Dragonite has. Puck only at 10, but it's still not a complete demolition of the puck just yet. The demolition is happening in the bottom lane, though. As you can see, you know, Razor's only got 6 CS. This is the problem. Centaur, while he will take a lot of harass, he's also better at CSing than, than FaZe. So FaZe is like, all right, let me him, get him away. You know, he's got his chain. Walk the dog, as we call it. Or, sorry, the horse. Time against him. Barely Ooh. makes it out. Woy, woy, woy. He's actually Boy. got a Wraith Band for the early armor, feeling like there's just too much harass coming out from these guys' right clicks. And that, now Fade has got him away, he can see us in peace. This cost no, it is good. gonna... It is Mono, gonna sorry. get the healing lotus for them, so that's that's nice. And I guess you have a Crystal Maiden, so once the aura is out, your mana is not gonna be in that much of a problem. It's it's solid. Although level one, you get I think what you get one point two for your ally for your nearby ally because it's tripled for nearby, which is kind of nice because uh, the whole global thing is kind of weird. As little Nick, nice flame break, not good enough. Dink Swell will connect a couple more hits. He has a lot of fervor stacks and that's gonna wow, lock to kill Nick, who luck. gets behind the tree, survives barely. You don't want to run into the fire. That hurts. B and C, dude, what a god. We've seen him on the, the Tiny do a lot of work. I not, I was like, little Nick, you know, we're going to be giving first blood to Yams. It's going to be a good start for them. As Josizi does get him, actually. They want him? The ball again. B and C, he just doesn't make mistakes, especially in the laning phase when it comes to using spells. It's just dumb how good he is at using some of these spells in, in a perfect way. And, you know, doing it once or twice is fine, but when you repeat it every single time, it just goes to show how high his mechanical skill is at. He has is incredible. At this point, it's like, I don't know if you're killing Lil Nick with him around. That's two attempts, which he would have definitely been dead without B and C around. So, really well played by him, keeping the, the lane competitive. And, in fact, because of that, Cholor is not actually farming. He's going for these kills. He's not getting the CS he needs. So Lilnik is... Uh, just now he was ahead of him. But they're very even. Him and the Troll Warlord. Yeah, but in general, Green Esports are doing a lot better in terms of CS in this game. Yeah. If, remember last game they were getting crushed in all three of the lanes? We were just like, oh, this guy that has only uh, 10 CS less than the uh, than the other guy in his lane is actually doing really well. Nice bushwhack with a double hoof stop and a double edge. It's insane damage going their way. He might kill Fade as well. There's going to be another double edge coming in. He does have the one charges to keep him alive, but I actually shots. Sneaky, he did use the lead. He's coming forward and he gets the kill. What a play from Sneaky. This is what we were saying, like bomb lane, while you can't harass him because it's double range, it is Hoodwing Centaur. There's a reason this is a very classic combo, massive amounts of damage. Same with like the Centaur Techies or, uh, or Dark Willow. You can just do so much with it with a combination like that. Sometimes yeah, I, I wish I had a, a, a standard laning party to do this as, oh my god, Fade Our again. Rotation. He has six one charges. The bad rider is coming in. It doesn't matter. Did he get the one charges off? Yes, he did. Okay, I thought he didn't there for a second, but it's just that the double edge does so much damage. Can we look at the net worth? Because this is, by the way, this is devastating. These, this one thousand. It's like it looks like it's not much of a lead for Green Esports, but killing Razor twice is huge. This is not here that recovers very easily. He's gotten better at over the years, but he's still not here that recovers too easily. And he's kind of your main late game damage dealer, along with the puck. Right. It's, it's, it's so worse. sad. It's so sad now for the Razor. You have a Razor CM, you think you're gonna be winning the lane and you get demolished. BNC is coming to the mid lane. They oh, want to protect so nice. the star. They need to protect the puck, however. The blocker he connects. Inkswell is there as well. Red will be surviving. Kids? Red, he didn't use the uh, orb defensively to the other side. Actually goes back to the tier 2. Will be fine. That looked kind of uh, risky to me, but That's... he's gonna be he's gonna be surviving. Dying Gangster just TPs away after the Frostbite comes out. He's just going to be fine. Uh, the decent rotation on, on in the mid lane, but Red just walks off like it's no big deal. So, I'm not sure you really want to go for the puck too often. 
That was a good attempt, but it doesn't seem like he, it's the safest kill. Whereas bottom lane, bring down fate a few times, feels like a more is the more safer strategy for Grin. We'll see how they're going to go. As yeah, fade, 2,000 net worth. Woo, yo, 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 yo. You know how I see it? If you mm. dive bottom lane now when the puck is level 6, he's going to TP and kill you. Mm. So you probably just want to make him suffer. Now when they forced out his TP, maybe they can make a rotation towards the bottom lane. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of stacks coming out here for Gwyn. They've BNC, sorry not BNC, um, Sneaky is almost always thinking about stacks. Every game I look at Green Esports, they've got their, their triangle. It's not the triangle, but there's no other word to describe the area. Because everyone knows what it means. The triangle, well, it's stacked with like three or four. And when Samson has his BK, sorry about Valfury. It is a triangle area. There's two camps and one outpost. Yeah, but we usually meant it as three camps. That's not the meaning usually. Works. Yeah, but they changed it, right? So now it's two camps and uh, one outpost. So that's fine. Still a triangle. I guess. Bottom lane. Fade again. Oh, man. They have hard off to kill this guy. I think they're just going to go for it again. Oh, yeah, but Shrakan X, there's the TP from the Kunkka this time around, but he killed Fade. Italiano Gangstar will pay with his life. There is an X on him. Pulled into a tower once again, and he is going to choose when to die there with a double edge. Little Nick gets the kill. Geo's easy. Going to be uh, running away. They know where he is. He has a TP, however, and he is being sandwiched by these two. Has been found. Torrent connects as well. That's it's some freezing cool. water coming through. Inks well will be used. He uses the stun to stop the Kunkka from getting a double, so Pinga secures it. It took too long to DP. They, like, the longer you uh, you waited, the more you were likely to get pincered, and he just get pincered from both sides. Nice move by Geo's easy to spot him out. Still, you kill Fade. That might be the first... Well, if it was a trade of Italian Gangster for Fade, I would say even. Even though, like, Centaur was ahead. But trading two for one, you're happy with that if you'd like to see. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's leave the troll completely unattended, who is farming towards his Battle Fury. But of course, he's not close just yet. But if he continues yep. with this kind of trajectory, it is going to be a pretty early one. Sneaky. Look at Red. He feels like something's going on. He's not next to the tree. It's really well done. Of course, there was an Observer Ward that just gets removed. So that's why. So, well done by Red standing that situation. Still has to be careful. Stun into Phantom's Embrace and you can lose your life. They know. They bring out the exact area. They're like, dude, something is happening here. As uh, sneaky. Oh lord, that well, well juked. But eventually, you get that or that vision from the orb. This focus on the mid lane by Grin has really been punished several times, and I, I'm not seeing it. I feel like you can just do so much more work on the side lanes. I really like that he X'd him just before the sharpshooter went off, so he returned him. Like, you get yourself to the low ground and instantly you find yourself back on the on the high ground. BNC removes the Phantom's Embrace. GeoZZ is gonna get flame bricked. Actually, he misses there on BNC. We have been uh, praising him way too much. Curry gets taken down. He's gonna go to the low ground, flying around, burning down everything. And uh, BNC should be fine for now. Has a TP away as well. I mean, doesn't he deserve our praise? He just managed to juke three people and get a courier on the way out. Like, that is very... He missed the flame break. Of... You know, so that, that's the mm. first one that he missed. True, so. true. Okay. That's but the other players. One guy, a guy does like nine good moves in a row and we, we only remember the bad one. Or the mis the minor mistake. No, no. When he made the uh, good moves, we were like, yeah, that's awesome. Here we're like, yeah, okay, he made the mistake. So no, 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 we were being fair. Yamsen coming forward. Doesn't have his ulti skilled up. Doesn't have a skill point either. Yep. So BNC doesn't know about it. But if he knew, he maybe would have committed for this. He's got no more... He doesn't have spells to use at the moment anyway. Uh, is he disconnected? Okay. What? It, That's a long what? TP as well. <laughs> okay, What's running away in Flame Break. He's still alive? No, not for long because it is going to be the Whirling Axis. He just forgot about... Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to maybe TP to the mid lane. Maybe I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure what he was thinking there, but definitely not paying attention. He just he TPs in front of Troll. Okay. Um, here's a free BM, son. We didn't feel like your game was going good enough. Uh, that's pretty good for Italian Gangster, though, because right now he has the, he had the time. He gets the Blink Dagger. He's ready to go for these engagements. He, he is jacked up and ready to go. No boys in retaliation. I've been seeing this more and more often on off They just want as much burst damage as possible, so I don't want to retaliate. 
If you go for the veil, maybe you have some tankiness, but this way I think you just go for the... If you're going for the blink, you just go for the damage. You want somebody to die super yep. quick. Exactly. And... Uh, yeah, I, I just want to put one point of the album also good, but I see what he's doing. A double stun? There. Oh, the nice dodge from the puck, however. So they're gonna, gonna be getting BNC puck. And a little bit of trouble. The freezing field is there, and you might be doing a lot of damage, but you're definitely not tanky. Stun on the puck. He gets on the stuff. Somebody needs to remove it right now. He has the orb, he has the vision, he's fine. And now the dragon I get pulled, and he's gonna be axed into the river with the boat connecting the doors up in the air. He is gone. What a turnaround in the spell usage. They want to use the sharpshooter. Trying to go for the puck will be off the mark. As he finds a region rune, Red doesn't even have to go back to base, he can continue the fight. That was a bit of a mistake by Tiny Gangs was going low onto the low ground steps, going up to his own tower. And they get the turret on Sneaky, but he should be okay. Oh no, sorry, X Mark, he's dead. Very dead. Oh, actually, again he dodges it, Red cannot be stunned. can be touched. Yeah, when well, you think you're gonna jump on Puck plus one, you're just jumping on the plus one. As DK, he's coming in. He, he want, they want to fight this, but it's too late. You know, just make it out of here. You're you're being pressured by on Grin without Fade being involved. That was the kind of the guy we're looking at. We're like, oh yeah, the Razor's a great pick and all that. He's not even doing anything. It's the other four. Troll? Flame break? They're getting closer. They're not gonna be close enough. They actually get the lasso, have the silence, frostbite, and he can't get his ulti off. This is gonna delay his battle fury so much. First, he was chasing down BNC. You get the kill, but it does stop you from farming. And now you can see this Razor, who had an abysmal lane, the worst one in the world, is actually close to the troll. He is. There's barely any gap. And this is bad for the troll, because he's the one who's supposed to be farming up. He's the one who's supposed to be like, oh yeah, I accelerate as the game goes on. Kids, he is kind of attack? being surrounded, but no, just makes it out of time. No, no big deal here. Blink Dagger is about a thousand gold away from BNC. He'll be able to make moves when that happens. Puck has got the Witch Blade, so his damage in. just shoots up right now. Kunkka, and Kunkka's already got the water park. Holy moly. Yep, he has the uh, Agon Inception. It's being delivered at the moment, but he still needs to wait for the courier. So won't be going for Italiano Gangster just right now. And he's kind of being surrounded as kids. Not all alone, but only the Grimstroke is in the vicinity. Freezing field stop instantly. We'll deal with the Phantom's Embrace, and everybody just decides it's time to bail. Yeah. Uh, no big items on the on the dire side just yet. It feels like Radiant are the ones with the Aghanims on the Konka and the Blink coming soon on the Bat Rider. So you have to be a bit scared here. This does have the double damage ruin, and we'll see what he can do with it. Do it. Amplify damage. Yeah, that's why I said double damage. Uh, double is also an amplification. Oh, that's a, a good kill. Uh, it's a kill. Uh, BNC has a coil. He can use his lasso to break it. Actually, they're going for the center because they don't want to be dealing with the stampede. And there is a water park coming in with the torrent and the boat drowning them all. Lil Nick is hunting for more in four seconds. He will have an X, meaning that Sneaky is very unlikely to run away. Nice bushwhack, keeping himself alive, but he's seeing clearly you're right on top of a ward. X marks the spot where the ward is and where a squirrel will die at the hands of the waning rift of the puck. My lord, I thought they'd just be able to get the crystal made and leave, you know. I was like, alright, this is a nice quick, quick kill on Pingus, but they just back him up on Legacy. They're like, no, oh, we're gonna make sure we, we get as much as we can out of this as Fade overtakes the troll warlord what a disaster right now for green esports it's very unlikely you're gonna get a kill and leave right because there's mm. x coil lasso mm. it's very hard to get away yeah but three people dying as well it was a little unexpected as red uh oh he gets it this time but no backup not enough time at least to get another sun off that sharpshooter did almost no damage it didn't right. actually connect I, I'm wait. Did you say it didn't connect? I, cause I think it, it did. did. It, oh, yeah. did it did. It did. Because I saw this as well, and I was like, "Huh, that's not the same structure we just see." Fade is dead. They're teaming in maybe to avenge him. Took a little bit too long. Italiano Gangstar is super low. There's the drums being used. Nikki gets into the trees nice with a stroke. scurry. He'll be able to hide himself. Torrent off the mark. This time around, he'll be able to leave. BNC is here. He's got the Blink Dagger on the Bat Rider. So, you know, you, you stampede. He doesn't matter. He just jumps, catches someone. You're like, oh, crap. That's not good. And Puck's also going to have the Blink Dagger as well. So you can jump and coil people. Tangaster just trying to cut the creep wave a little bit. But no may... TP. 
Lucky goes the other side. Holy moly, if BLC had guessed that one right, he would have been lose he would have lost his life. Yep, hundred percent, especially with the lasso being available and the solo kill as well on the enemy core would have been quite huge for him. So for a second there, the razor was ahead of the troll, and now suddenly Yamsen is a thousand gold ahead. That is what happens when the battle fury comes out and the razor on the other side dies. I love games like this, where the two teams are you know, pretty even, there's a little bit of mistakes to be happening there and there. It makes the game so much like you don't really know who's going to win. If you see like Falcons play against another team, you're like, all right, I know who's going to win. Or if you see Nigma play against another team, you also know who's going to win, but for different reasons. So this is, this is really cool. I, I like matches like this. It's even. We don't know who's going to take it. There's a lot of, on the line for the two teams as well. And Otomo, you sometimes surprise me with your courage, right? The Nigma fans can be uh, pretty uh, nasty. Uh, uh -huh. Sure, let, let's go with that. And uh, there might be a Reddit post, Otomo, uh, kind of uh, speaking bad words about Nigma in a uh, in a cast. So, yeah. good luck. Good luck. That's all right. I'll survive. And uh, do you know that they haven't, Green Swords, they haven't taken their own Wisdom Rune yet. It's been there for quite some time and uh, would be nice to get that as they do spot these stackies. Tasty, tasty. They had a ward there for a very long time, so they knew about the stacks. Nicely done by Kits, by the way. And But it uh, looks like the Legacy, they want to contest this. They, Or at least they're on the way to contesting it. Yep, they kind of assume where their enemies are. There will be an Invis Rune in the river. The top side, the... Uh, Asians are already gone, and so much vision there from the side of Grin, so it might have been a bad idea to engage anyways. Yeah, uh, Grin just gets an eye and steals enemy stacks. They still, again, they still haven't taken the Wizard Ruin. Maybe they're letting it cook. You know, three more minutes, it does upgrade. Let's see. What's he got off to? Tries to get the BKB next. Is, and if that's going to be Sanja and Yasha. So just, you know, very standard troll, uh, troll world items. Oh, okay. Dragonite caught. That is pretty dead. They even stopped the TPs. They're aware. Gets that uh, nothing in this world can save your life. You're just going to go down and the tower will follow as well. This is actually scary. Grim might lose the Wisdom Ruin. Because it's you know, that 20 minute mark where they might go for the Tormentor. They still haven't checked on Legacy side. I know we've been harping on a lot about this is but so much EXP to give away. A Thorn Storm does catch Sneaky a couple of times. He needs one more Tidebringer. We'll be getting the kill. Two supports getting taken down. Lil Nick, he's setting all of this up. His Kunkka, sometimes it really falls flat, but sometimes it is just insane what he can do. And he's going for a Yules. This is giving me a confidence that he might want to get the refresh at some point, but he's actually thinking of a Bloodstone. Uh, yeah, he is. Huh. That's interesting. Bloodstone, okay. I thought I thought might be going for an Octarine instead. But either way, he I like it when he goes for the control build on the Kunkka. His Radiance build the other day just not, didn't look like it was hitting it. I still like the item on Kunkka, but eh, it wasn't the best. Yep. But still, this Razor is behind, and that is your like carry that is going to carry the game later on. That needs to be able to deal with the troll. With this amount of net worth, I'm not sure he's going to be capable of doing so, but I like phase item choices. Manta into a BKB, that's kind of the way to, to go for the Razor right now. And also, you know, the Razor Shard is cool versus the Stampede as well, because it is pulling the targets towards you. So you actually do slow down a Stampeded target with this. Oh, that's insane. I, I mean, I know that uh, also like Tidehunter's anchor doesn't care about Stampede. You still move slow as uh, Sneaky. He is not moving at all. That squirrel really? is twitching. You don't move slow when you are anchored with the with the Stampede. I think you move fast oh, that, still. Oh no, that's the, the Weaver. Sorry, the Weaver who gets it. Oh yeah, maybe. I've not. I've, I've no. I've tested on the Weaver. I'm not. I'm not, not making me doubt it because I know Centaur says you can't be slowed, but. Huh. There's so many mechanics that we have to think about. But the Anchor Smash, I've seen it slow down Weavers to a crawl. Mm, I think it also works. I'm, I'm fairly sure it works against the, the Centaur, but there's always that weird thing when someone tells you, I don't know. X Mark, oh, oh dear. Poor guy. Nice. The Coil, Veining Rift, Silence, a lot more than uh, long enough. He does buy the BKB, so at least you don't lose any gold. But it's a 5k gold lead currently for Legacy, and they're the ones controlling this game. We talked about them, how they when they start the ball rolling, they usually win super fast. Yep. It's, it's looking like one of those games. 
if Green, Green Esports, they shut down Fade, that's the thing, you shut him down, he's still recover. he's still kind of recovering, but the supports on, on Legacy are doing really well, the other two cores are also having a fantastic game. However, once the BKBs are up, that does remove the coil, does remove the water park, does like negate a lot of what they have, so Green Esports, they might be hitting a power spike fairly soon. Only the Troll World has BKB, but Centaur, oh, sorry, Centaur also has one, it's a fresh one. And the Dragon Knight is going for... I don't like the Manta as much on the Dragon Knight in this game as I do in others. Why not? Because you really because there's so much AoE anyway, and it won't help you against like the Coil. It won't help you against like the Water Park. What you really want is the BK. You can break the Coil with the Manta. I've seen it done, but it's not reliable 100%. You know, with the Yules, it's actually really easy because the range of the Yules is the same as the range of the coil. So if you just click on your Yules while you're running away, and the second that that little green circle goes over the coil and you Yule, you're going to be breaking it. Yeah. You didn't know that, did you? Uh, first, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Dota player, so I have to pretend I know everything. So it's yeah. it. I'm, I'm finally glad someone mentioned this well-known fact besides me. I'm tired of saying it every stream, but... I would still think a BKB is safer. And okay, you break the coil. What does Manta help you up against like crystal, no, crystal, sorry, freezing field and um, plasma field? Well, there's a lot of fields in this one. It's just, it's not that great, the Manta. It's good for the split push in the farm though. How many spells that have field in them are, uh, are there in Dota? Kinetic field, so that's three, right? Okay. okay. Magnetic okay. field. Yeah, kinetic, yeah, kinetic field is the disruptor. Yeah, but magnetic field for the Arc Warden. Oh, uh, really? Yes. Huh. Wow, there's the next one. What's that one called? What is it called? Kinetic something. I don't know. Which one? The Disruptor. Is the it's the kinetic field, but yeah, yeah. We're, we are up to four, right? So there's two in this game. There's mm -hmm. two that we just mentioned. Is there any more? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Okay, let's not talk about it. Like, who the hell cares about uh, spells that do have... Okay, sure. You, you can go with it. We can forget about the game. Nobody cares about Legacy and Grin, it seems. We, uh, we just want to know how many fields there are in Dota. Mm. Well, Roshan is available here. That's something that if you're Grin, you might want to... You might wanna, you have to start thinking about. You have the Troll Warlords. It's pretty damn fast at it. I think you're definitely the faster draft as the Yeah, he just is like, let me just go for it. He's been caught multiple times. He does have the BKB, but you don't want to use BKB every time you teleport. So the Aegis would help you with that. You're like, oh, if I'm caught, I can just BKB this. When I come back, they have nothing that pierces it. So a nice move by the Esports here. Uh, and it doesn't seem like Legacy's in a rush to get there. And you can't really wait too long. It is Troll Warlord here. Yeah, once he gets the fervor stack stuff, then he really starts uh, attacking the Roche super fast. I... It was a shitty ulti when you couldn't use your items during the uh, during the ulti of the troll. But the troll is one of the carries that I used to play when I do when I have to play a carry in a pub. Yeah. And whenever I would press my ulti, I would literally just you know uh, move my arms in a motion of attacking with the axes. We get super excited, right? <laughs> and uh, I just love that. Oh man, I still think they need to do something about this ultimate. But Ice Frog, he's committed to this uncontrollable. Weird ultimate for troll. Like, dude, let it go. Nobody likes losing control of their hero. Uh, I really like it, to be honest. There's the uh, lasso into a Kunkka X. They have the torrent as well. He will protect himself with the uh, uh, with the ink swell. Not for long, however. Red comes over and says, Guys, are you really incapable of killing a Grimstroke? I have to do everything myself. Nice kill for them because again we are you want to waste time right now with the with the Aegis, but it's still very early. So it's still very They're gonna murder in. them. He's, hey, you know who would help? If he had a BKB. Up, uh, he uh, got four staff there just so to break the call. Actually, look at how tanky he is. He's we talked tanky. about the damage problems and uh, we are seeing them in play right now with an 8k gold lead surrounding enemy heroes with four of your own and it takes like seven, eight seconds to kill him. Yeah, but they killed also the, the Hoodwink before that. So they're not sad at all with how the game is going Legacy. Definitely not. As yeah, but as the game progresses, I again, I've been saying I am worried about these damage issues. Faith, he Buck. has. Buck is getting the right items though. He's going Maelstrom and the Nags, so you're not gonna have damage issues later on. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. And you can also upgrade the Witchblade to Parasma, get a Molinear if you need to. Once you have the Aghanims though, you you yeah, he, the guy does all the damage you need most of the time. 
Yep. 25 minutes in, almost a 10k gold lead. Looks pretty decent. Fade, his uh, net worth is finally ahead of both the Dragonite and the and the Centaur, and even this uh, Battle Fury troll who has had a pretty good laning phase, but the continuation of it wasn't all that great, is not that far ahead of the Razor. Yeah, he's not, he hasn't been able to do too much. Yamsa's only got one kill, two deaths, and zero assists, so he's just been very much AFK farming this whole game, not involved with his team at all. They are smoking up. They would like to get something for themselves. Three minutes on the Aegis. I don't think this is an Aegis where we're going to go high ground, but it would be lovely for Grin to equalize and take a big team fight with it. They know where the puck is. Oh! Uh, this time around, he's not going to be dodging the Hoofstomp. Really wasn't expecting it. And actually, there was no bushwhack. Sneaky went for. He went for the sharpshooter. They still kill him. Well, I'm surprised as well. I know what you're thinking. It's why like, why not go for more disables? Though? Yeah. Why did they kill him though? Face shift blink was available. They get a stun onto the Kunkka. There's the shard on Italiano Gangstar. He's gonna be using the boat and the Torrent Storm. Troll with the BKB doesn't care much about it. He does have the Yules protect, to protect himself for another two and a half seconds, but as soon as he hits the ground, he'll be under it as well. So. Well done. Well done by Green Esports. So I was saying, this is not a Aegis that's going high ground with, but it is a great equalizing Aegis. And you get kills on the two most farmed heroes on the enemy side. And these are the ones who have been causing you all this grief. So, well, really well played by Grin. Is anyone building Heaven's Halberd on the, on the Radiant side? There is an, an, sorry, an Ethereal Blade on the Batrider. I like this one. Should be should do a good job in preventing Troll War from hitting people. If Troll War goes for the Agams, though, it becomes a little bit less effective. It's gonna take some time, however, yeah. though. So. But uh, yeah, in no. this game, as a troll, you really don't want to buy an axe early. But at some point, you will have it, of course, if, if it does come to that portion of the game. I agree. There's not a whole lot you remove from yourself, apart from, like, the the bat rider sticking, uh, yeah, sticking a palm as well. And the slow from the... Okay, there's a, there's a bit of slows from the CM. Oh. And they get him. Oh, oh. Beautiful TP. Up, has the shadow amulet, so uh, he's gonna be able to to get himself out. The Aegis didn't really get that much for Grin. It reduced the gold lead by 2k, but uh, I guess at this point, extending the game a bit is fine. But I still don't know how the uh, how the troll is gonna win versus the Razor. It's just a little bit too tough. BNC trying to buy some time still. It doesn't even get a chance to use his blink or a four staff and dies. You know, you say that about the net worth, but one, it was ballooning out of control for the Radiant. Secondly, you look at the win percentage, it went from 58 for the Radiant to 60 for the Dire. So that's a big change. And Red dies again. Oh my. Dropping the ball, really. He was 7-0-7, yes. oh or 8-0-7, oh and, and now he's 8-2-7. and seven. Really hasn't done much. It, it just goes to show that when you're just being passive, oh, let's not fight, they have the Aegis and being scared, that this is going to be the result. You still need to be making movies, even when the, your enemies have an Aegis. You have to make something happen on the map as a theme, or at some point you're going to get caught. I can't believe I just died twice in a row like that. Oh, God. And, well, x -Mark comes out. It is on the tankiest guy who's got the BKB, so what? Nice, nice. Well done. That, that deserves that, a voice line. Really, really well done, because that was literally almost pixel perfect with a tidal wave, and you don't connect it now. They catch the Razor, who has the BKB, got broken, Manta runs away, X was there on the Italiano Gangstar, so he's gonna be returned, has the BKB, 9 second, 1 being used, gets to losing his damage, but this means that the troll is not gonna be losing his damage, now you're gonna be losing his lasso. Actually, yes, lasso, they pull him away, and he is gonna be able to take him away for a long ride, the two supports surrounding Yamsem, just keeping him in place, he's so wow. much isolated from his team, being and see with the plays oh that was so cool that was insane and i think i also i think he has been using his bkb ulties very early in these fights you know sort of like more like a damage boost than anything else where you see a lot of trolls being like all right let me just wait until i'm in trouble then i use it but he jumps in with the bkb with the ulti and for bnc that's perfect because you get to waste time on two key spells with just one ability you last time you're like all right you can't bkb or do anything after this and he just pulled him away from vision of the Razor, and then he starts attacking the uh, the Batrider. Because usually you attack the closest target that has a Fervor stack on them, right? But if their target is not close enough, you're going to be going to the next guy, which in this case was uh, was the Batrider. Poor, poor guy. And this is what we've been saying, right? Being uncontrollable? Not fun. 
As the bread, they see him, they have vision of him. Oh, could not get him. Not this time. Him. Actually, he blinks to the trees, by the way, so that he doesn't see the wind-up time, but the ink swell animation was there. So he's like, all right, I'm going to be moving. Oh, there's another lasso. BNC gets into the low ground, has the uh, stampede. Doesn't have a BKB, BKB for three seconds. The X was there. It's going to BKB now. Nice lasso. There's the double silence and the bushwhack as well, but the boat is there. So you're not going to be doing all that much damage. The Ultra and the Dunka protecting him in red. He gets the coil off. Yamsen has the BKB and goes for the ulti. He doesn't know who to go for. Now his damage is being drained. Those oh, axes, yeah. they look cool, but they're so freaking blood. They're not doing any damage. Give it to me, Fade. Now he's going to be killing anybody he gets his hands or whip on as uh, Sneaky is being chased down by the puck, pushed away by a neutral item, but either way, Red is still so mobile that he will be able to run him down and get the kill. Grin, they lose another fight, and they're uh, troll once more. Troll again doing the exact same thing we said. Immediate BKB and ulti, and the team just is able to like play around it. Yul Scepter on the Konka has been amazing. You, we saw the soul I was like, all right, Grin's got something, but then he just soul buys himself and dodges so much of the spells coming out. So this is this is why just only a couple of carries in the world and a couple of teams can perform with the troll. The hero is just way too hard to play. You, you yep. cannot be this simple with him. I'm gonna be KB ulti and kill them all. No, you're not. They're gonna have something against you. I guess Scepter at least is finished on the Dragon Knight, so that's gonna help him out a little bit. But well, all right, what, what do we have coming out for the troll warlord? He's going for the Gleipnir. So, no, no, okay, sorry, Disperser, my bad, my bad. Disperser, that'll be nice. I don't know, I just don't know if that's going to be really enough. It's like, if it's going to be changing my... He's got the, he's been having the... He's had the BKB Sanjin Yasu Battle Fury built for a while now. So you can move the Silence, you can remove the Frostbite. In general, it's not a bad item. Yeah, but you can also do that with an Agonist Scepter. Like, I don't know if, why you would need the Disperser specifically for that. More it's damage. actually way cheaper. The da that's what I'm saying, like, as a damage item, it's... It's decent, it's decent, it's fine. We'll see how we can, we, what we can go with. They do get and the Tormentor down, Sneaky gets it, so a little bit of extra damage with that Boomerang. You can, you do also some damage, even if your damage gets drained because of the, uh, because of the mana burn. But I, I'm not sure. I, to be honest, I don't see an item that the troll is now gonna pick up and like, yeah, that's the one. I think the approach, the idea of how he needs to play Dota in this one needs to change, and that is very hard to happen in, uh, in like 20 minutes you're just gonna become this 10 times better player on the on the hero it just doesn't work that way agreed and, he, and sometimes you might have an, a neutral item that solves your problems like nemesis curse is a great item for damage for neutral item for damage but he's got paladin sword which is uh, not as good in the damage department let's just go with that Buck has an axe, so the Maelstrom is going to be going on everybody. You need to be very careful not to get caught in, in a coil with multiple heroes. The Buck is and just going to kill you all. With a Vindicator's ask, oh dear. Damn son, he's got again. There's the... Uh... And now they go for the stampede, but look at the backlines. The supports just got killed by red, and Yamsen losing all of his damage. He's gonna be going for the ulti. He can't do any damage because he doesn't have any of it. He can literally heal fade, and I really think that's how it should work when you go into minus. Now Ritz is gonna be caught. It gets sorry taken down. Italiana Gangstar has been X'd as well. BKB gone, pulled back. X way too good of a spell. BKB doesn't do much against it, especially when it's down to six seconds. And Fade gets himself a double grin are in such a bad spot after that fight. The change to BKB benefiting Kunka so much because X mark as people are TPing away, you still get them at the end. That was a team wipe, by the way, because there was a buyback from this, from uh, Geo ZZ. So this game completely out of control. There is, they have no way of dealing with the Batrider when, he, when he's catching people. You're looking at Grinside, you're like, oh, yeah, but they have Inkswell, but it just hasn't been happening. If they catch the Troll Warlord every time, he BKBs early, he ulties late, doesn't make a difference. And no matter how he uses his spells, they're just controlling him. Uh, it's way too easy. They didn't take a single tier 2 down just yet, but the goal lead now at this point seems kind of insurmountable. So, Automo, what's the play? I I feel like they're worse in team fights, worse in initiation, their map control is not as good, The their carry is countered by the enemy carry. I just don't see a single thing going for them. Grin could sneak another Roche, right? Like that was kind of the beginning of their comeback earlier. They got Roshan, they were like 10,000 gold behind, and they brought down all the way to four, then they just started, started hemorrhaging kills all over the map. 
So maybe a fast roll should be very... If they can find a roll opening, that is. Uh, is yeah. Kind of sub. He it's is very liberal. Going with that in. Nick. There's the top. Title, bringing Kit Steven deeper into enemy territory, the lasso and the boat. Miss Dragonite, his stampede is not gonna allow him to escape. Look at the back lines yeah, with the call. So... You don't have your BKB in Amsterdam. They will protect him with a glimmer, but the tidal waves are being hella annoying. Nice hoof stomp to keep himself alive. Goes for the uh, X again. It's just not fair. They allow him to. Oh, actually, he made a mistake there, little Nick. He was yeah, he way is... too early. Yeah, I was surprised. I was like, I, th I was like thinking, is my, am I fooling me? It seems like he just used it. Yep. But, you know, sometimes one should be merciful. You should just keep killing your enemies over and over again. Yeah, look at these guys. We're just going to allow him to live and still beat him. That's how much better we are. Uh, for us, we're on, uh, on red coming out. In the previous fight, he gets the coil, and you look at the troll losing half his life one, from one puck coil with, the, of course, the right things. And you're like, damn, Yamsun, you are just... You're really suffering, aren't you? As he changes items, he wants to go for the MKB instead. Mm, okay. Uh, at least it gives you some amount of damage. Puck's got the Vindicator Axe. 35 attack speed and 30 damage. That's what I mean when I say neutral items that give you damage. Uh, Bath Rider also bought a Dagon. I, I feel like this is for the Dragonite illusion. It's the only thing that kind of annoys you, the shoving in of those waves, and now your Bath Rider will be able to kill one of those instantly. Roche, dead, Aegis Cheese on the dire side, so that's going to be an even easier way for you to go for the push here for uh, for the side of Legacy. What well, your The thing that kind of brought you back into the game is not, is not an option anymore. They're kind of waiting, maybe hoping someone takes the portal, but that's not happening. Legacy just wants to go high ground, they don't need to do anything else. Big black dragon, I like it, but not enough. The, the fact that he delayed BKB and picked the Manta first, I still feel like that was a very tough choice. Uh, the Dragonite really does look cool with his Aghanims, even though we're seeing it yeah. almost every game for the... Uh, for the last three, four months, I still am quite impressed with how it looks. Now the Razor has an Aghanims and the Refresher, so guess who's the fastest pusher on the map? And there's a Troll and, and the Dragonite on the other side. Radiant used the scan, they spot the Troll War. Sorry, not the Troll War. They, used, they saw the Centaur coming in, and he's just like, If I could just get the Wisdom Ruin! Just let me get it! Oh, poor guy, a gangster. He walked at the very edge of the scan, and that's how they knew we were there. Immediately, we saw a TP from BNC. Like, what a, what awareness! Thinking that oh, he might be there. We scan, and they immediately just follow up with a kill. They also gave the wisdom rune to the puck, understanding that level 25 of the puck is like the counter to a troll warlord. Like, what are you gonna do? BKB ulti, where we're just gonna coil you and you're gonna stun yourself forever. So that that's just how it works. Poor Yamson. He's just not having a game. Uh, Kanko, Kanko has got the Bloodstone and the Octarine Core. That is a lot of health on him as well. Thanks to that, a sneaky. Mm, they're oh, going for the troll. Go for the big one. Um, they want him. Goes BKB. Should have TP'd out. Now he's gonna get X just before it expires. Here comes the boat, protected by the glimmer. Actually, didn't get stunned by the boat. And the Torn Storm is there. Doesn't have the BKB any longer. He can't even ulti there. As Razor, he's level 25 after getting that kill on Sneaky. Well played by Little Nick, by the way. Or as we call him, Big Nick now with those plays. He waits. Like, he watches the troll pass by. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna give him a couple more seconds before I throw out my X mark, so I definitely guarantee that's gonna happen. There is buybacks on the two dead members of Grin, so they can contest this. But if you buy back, your economy is already going down by 27,000. Okay, for Grin buys back, Yamsun, are you gonna give them your barracks or are you gonna fight? Uh, Dragon Knight cut the wave, but the wave is coming on the top lane as well, so it really won't matter. That's looking like mid. Oh no, Dragon Knight jumps it, they're fighting. Yeah, they want to fight it. There's going to be a buyback on the troll. Red, he kills the Grimstroke without him. You don't have that purge. Now, here comes the boat. The Rumbuff will be there on them. Fade is getting the attack speed and the attack damage. This means that Yamsen finally can go in. He gets Frostbitten, has no BKB. This is just so sad. Troll, he can't do anything. Just running around, not doing any damage to his enemies. Four heroes dead. Grin are out of the tournament. And Legacy are going to be going into the Grand Finals to face off against the heavy favorites of Nouns. But for now, at least they have secured themselves a uh, prize of $5,714. And they might still have a shot at winning the Grand Finals, though. Uh, 
I mean, I I'm not going to talk. Legacy are the type of team that can surprise me, and I'm looking forward to them doing so. I th I, I'm, it's very impressive how they were able to come back with Fade. He had a very tough lane at the start. He was on Razor. You're thinking, all right, this guy's out. But they made a huge amount of space with Big Nick as well as Red. And while they did give away a few kills after the first Aegis, you can see Grin not completely coordinated with the, with the way they took team fights. I just don't know how why Troll World every fight begins with a BKB used with the with the ultimate as well, and we see BNC every time. It's like okay, I'll just you know lasso him when he's doing these things, and he's going to be a non-factor. So really well played by BNC to counter the Troll World so well, and I love Big Nick with his Yules because he gets caught many times, just goes in the air, and they can't do anything to him. Yep, exactly. He it takes so long time to kill him and he's tanky even without the Yules. Then you buy two and a half seconds, your BKBs run out, and then the puck and the uh and the razor just kill you all. Overall a very nice performance from, from Legacy in general. I told you they were better coming into the series, Autumn. You didn't trust me. I didn't believe you. I just thought that there was a chance. I mean good esports took game one, so there's definitely a chance they could have taken the series. And I love our uh I don't know what you call it, the headlights, not the headlights, whatever's down there. Legacy remounts the series. I'm like, that is a weird way of saying that they come back. But sure, they remounted it and they came out ahead in it with a surprise reverse sweep. Yeah, but our, our production is trying to be as... Uh... As cool you as you are with the uh, with the words, right? They're trying to match your vocabulary, but they they still can't do it, Otomo. Oh yes, I, I, no. There's there's definitely unique and better. As uh, this is the whole bracket of the turf. This is how we got here. Nouns all the way from the upper bracket, Z going four and zero. Oh, they not bring down IRL D two. They for they forfeit, so they only had two matches played, but they looked unstoppable. And on the other side, legacy. All the way from the lower bracket, every time they were taken down by Nouns early, but we were saying like this is one of the better teams anyway. It's just bad luck that you faced up against Nouns. And now here they are in the finals, going up against them, their nemesis again. Okay, we could be realistic now, talking about how the best of five grand finals will go, yep. but we're gonna hype up the main character arc. He loses to the antagonist. Let let's just assume that Nouns are the antagonist in the, the first, first round, but then mm -hmm. they fight their way through. They get the experience, they get power, and now mm -hmm. they're gonna be coming back to face him once again. And if you guys have ever watched any anime in the world, you're gonna know that they are about to win. So let's go onto that longer break, allow them to prepare for the grand finals, and then we're gonna be finding out who of these two teams is going to the main tournament.
three days of non-stop Dota have led up to this. A best of five grand finals between Nouns and Legacy. Nouns coming here through the upper bracket without a single game lost. While Legacy, well, in the upper bracket, they lost to Nouns themselves, but they fought it through through the lower bracket ever since round one, and they have been crushing everybody in their wake. Looking at Nouns, we have Yuma, Copy, Gunner, Lelis, and Fly. And uh, just between those names, we are going to be adding the Turcasters. are going to be me, Harry, and of course, Automo, our uh, lovely guy as uh, Fade, Red2, Lil Nick, BNC, and Pingus are going to try to take down the Giants of NA Dota. And our analyst, Automo, is going to tell us what needs to happen, how they need to approach it if they are to make this a possibility. I think they have to go for something some very unorthodox drafts, which they are open to because Legacy is playing with like two offlaners, both Little Nick and Fader offline players. So they could go for something crazy that's very fast. They could put Nouns off their on the back foot. BNC has also had a really good performance all those games, so maybe that will help them out a little bit as well. They do ban out, but Legacy bans out the Chen despite having first pick, which tells me that there's not. Are they not very comfortable with it? I'm looking at Pingus, he doesn't play a whole lot of Chen. It's like Treant, Pogna, Lion, Undying, what you know, what we've usually been seeing. Put CM. So interesting to know that Legacy doesn't really like the Chen that much. Dire pick. And versus Nouns, you definitely uh, dislike it even more as they pick up a Mars. Okay, they got their hands on it. I like it because this team can sometimes, because of their uh, weird uh, setup of players, have issues with uh, having everything the lineup needs. Mars yep. deals with all of that. He gives you everything you need already. Yeah, he can be uh, he can play multiple roles, great against the Centaur, which is sort of seen as the standard great... Uh, uh, ability to disengage. Oh, by the way, Stampede does get slow by Anchor because Anchor is considered a leash, similar to uh, Slark's Pounce. So that's why it slows so down. Sta does Stampede get slowed down? Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah as I was, because I was like, I know I've seen it before, and uh, because it's not like slow down, it's just you don't, you can't move away from it. You just have to. That's how bad it is. As uh, Dragon Knight gets picked up by Nouns. Okay, they've been. I don't know if Legacy has been picking that a whole lot. We saw in the previous season. I don't think they're not. Some, they're not something they're very interested with. But Dragon Knight, he kind of doesn't really care too much about Mars. A lot of your damage is, is physical, so he's like, all right, God's rebuke. I'm full armor. You are also able to take down buildings. So just as assault counter, Legacy banning out the Naga makes me think they they might be considering the faceless void. As, uh, they, they might be considering not wanting to play versus the Nouns Naga. I think that's important as well. Sorry about that. Uh, that's my... I, I'm sure you heard. No, no. What, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Uh... Okay, I have to I have to point something out. It doesn't really have much to do with it has something to do with Dota, but not much with the uh, you know how the uh, how the game is played. But look at the Mars and just how nervous he is. He's constantly banging his shield like rod, bam, bam. And then you look at the Dragonite and how patient and calm he is. You know, just like those royal guards in England. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Mars feels like a bit like a gladiator, right? Like he's ready to go. You know, I don't say that's nervous. I think that's excitement. Godly Godly Godlyator, yeah. God sure. Which Legacy will need a lot of because they are going up against a team that's quite scary. You know, it's Fly, you've got Gunner, you've got Lilith, Yuma. Copy is a bit newer to this scene, but he's proven himself to be very impressive as well. That might be the one area that maybe Legacy can take a big advantage of. Their mid laner, Red, Red has been looking really good, but I don't know if he's good enough to bring down Copy. I don't know. Copy is fairly new, so you know mm. he uh, he might have a great team around him, but uh, still yet to really prove himself. We haven't seen Nouns get uh, contested in any way in this tournament. Uh, we remember that they did beat Legacy two two zero in the yep. uh, in the first round. Of the, I mean, that's the only reason that we're uh, sent down to the uh, lower bracket and. Reason you didn't really like how they played because they got kind of demolished in that series. Yeah, you know, uh, part of one of the games was a big, was like very one side. The other one was slightly more, but it's still like you know thirty minute games end up very much in Nouns' favor as they do get rid of the life stealer. They pick up this van. 
Man, this draft is very durable, I must say. You know, you're up against Ben Dragonite from the start. High armor. If you're like this, you're gonna have to start thinking, can I get like magic damage? Can I get a Leshrac maybe? Oh, Leshrac's already banned. Oof, that's Ten unfortunate. Seconds. Uh, we all know yeah. that knights are good to fight in arenas, right? So yep. you see a Mars, you have an arena, you go for the Dragonite, you go for the Rogue Knight, people that don't know, Sven uh, in Dota 1. Uh, the uh, the heroes had two names, right? So Sven would be the Rogue Knight, Crystal Maiden would be Riley. Yeah. Mars, Mars didn't Rome. exist. Mars didn't exist, no he did not, but we can call him Ares. He is the God of War after all, so that makes sense. It's probably Ares or Mars. Seconds. Or was Mars the name of? Huh, I mean, you can call him God of War. I guess that like, that would be one. He cannot be Mars and Ares at the same time because they're from yeah, different right. mythologies. Exactly. I was like, I was like, there's something wrong with my logic, but I can't know. I don't know where it is. Like there it is, different, uh, different fiction. Let's go with that. Legacy. Who would you want now? You know, you're up against Sven and Dragon Knight. Maybe I think it was to go with something like a hoodwink or a techies. Techies, I feel like brings gives you a little bit more damage. That might be something that they would want for the off for the position Radiant's for BNC plays. There we go. We go with the razor. Okay, worked last game. Why not take it now? So is that a gunner hero? No, actually, Mars is more of a, gonna be played by gunner, right? So razor carry, razor mid. What are we thinking? Gunner. Uh, Sorry, yeah, the now is, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. So this is going to be Fates hero, right? So it's a yes. carry razor. Oh, it's going to be the carry razor. Plus, uh, Lil Nick will probably be taking the Mars, which means Red's hero is going to be the one that they're going to be getting like later on. That's the only core left. For Legacy, I would like to see, I would like to see the Hoodwink or the or the Techies. I mean, which is such a crazy thing. Like, oh my god, position 4, Hoodwink or Techies. Uh, they have... You know, BNC plays a good amount of Winter Wyvern, which may not be that bad. You see, you spend God Strength, you, you know, be like, hey, kill your ally, or he's BKB'd, you're like, let me just Winter's Curse him so that we waste some of his time. It's... I wouldn't mind seeing a Winter Wyvern, depending on what they pick next, if it's all heavy physical. So... I would like to see some burst versus the razor. Sven is pretty solid physical burst, but some magical would be uh, would be nice as well. Anything that comes to mind? Are we just gonna be going with those classic fours? I think so. Yep, yeah, there's there the hoodwink. Yeah, and it's going to be probably well, it's going to be flies here afterwards. Maybe one of those saves. What do they have? I mean, you know, Venge is in the pool. Phoenix is in the pool, which. Would be pretty good. Legacy's draft not really well suited for the Phoenix, and they could take it themselves. Uh, if you pick a Phoenix, you might get the Snapfire to the face, though. It would lane well versus the Dragonite. Uh, does go well with the Mars Arena, so I don't know if you want to go Phoenix here. Avenge yeah, is a much better one. Yep, and which in which case Legacy now they can take the Phoenix because Nouns their heroes are pretty crappy about it, against it. Yep, the Sven doesn't want to attack it, even if you kill. A Phoenix Egg. It's a Sven that usually takes like two hits to uh, to kill a support that is going to be taking yeah. six or eight, depending on the level. Or ten. Yeah, yeah that's that's sure, sure. So it's like, I would rather not. But, well, the Legacy wants it. The problem is if you take the Phoenix, your laning phase is kind of like okay only, you know? Whereas if you take something like the Techies, you're much more likely to crush the laning phase. However, you're up against now, which is scary. Then there's all sorts of logic going on. Some teams think, be like, we can come back with team fight, but team fight against a better team is always a tough, a tough situation to be in. You can say, oh, we're gonna go laning, but laning can be risky because if you don't get a good lane, you really start falling off. Pugna, let's go Pugna. I want the Razor to have some kind of a save for himself. Good versus the Sven. You don't have any push at the moment for Legacy in the early stages of the game. You deal with that with the with the Pugna. <laughs> I actually wouldn't mind it. Oh, it was gonna be they got the puck. Okay, so they give. They get kids, sorry, Red's hero right now. And it's pretty solid. You know, we've seen the Mars the Mars Spear with the Puck. You have now two sort of arenas, whether it's the coil or the arena itself that you don't want to be in. Razor's like it's if you're legacy, you pin someone down, you win fights, basically. Because nows do not want they want to be very mobile in the team fights, right? Away from the coil, away from the arena, away from the static link. So legacy, if they can play aggressive, play near the towers, I think they can win this game. Draft wise. Hmm, I'm looking at the Dragonite, right? He just 
comes in, attacks the tower, you use all of your spells, you get swapped out, and you do nothing. So I feel like that's how nouns are going to be wanting to play this one. And out of all the teams in the tournament, of course, they had the best positioning in terms of understanding when they can push. Yep. Give away support for a uh, for a tower or something. So I I'm not sure. I would want this legacy draft to this legacy lineup to yep. be very maneuverable around the map to be able to deal with the hoodwink and the venge. Mm. Well, let's see. There's gonna be next pick, next pick is going to be for legacy. Phoenix feels pretty solid. Winter Wyvern is okay, but you're up against Venge, so it's kind of like, meh, who they go with? They go with the Wind Ranger instead. Huh. That's a BNC hero. That does, yeah, I think it is BNC's hero. Okay. All right, for now, you need a mid laner here who's going to go up against the Puck. Actually, put the Dragon Knight, you can put the Dragon Knight mid, you know? Just give it to Copy and pick something for Gunner instead. Uh, I, I would go that route. They probably feel like, yeah, it's gonna be Gunner playing it. But Copy, I think, in this tournament has already played one Dragonite, so why not? Let's see. They play a lot of this amount of Beastmaster, which is something that we don't see too often. Ooh. Like something Gunner could go for. That's actually a perfect pick, right? It gives you some uh, another hero for tower taking, which versus heroes that are so much oriented on the team fight, which are legacy heroes, they don't like when you can attack on two sides of the map. So yeah, I would love the beast. I actually love that. time. They go for the primal instead. Oh, That's man. what I meant. Yeah, taking the, the beast. Primal beast, exactly. Gunner's gonna go for. It. They do put copy in the mid, and it is going to be BNC on the Wind Ranger, Fade on the Razor Soul the draft. While we didn't predict all the heroes, they are all going sort of where we think they were going to go. So, Nouns, very tanky. I feel like that's the biggest problem about the, the game, is that they're just so damn durable, on especially armor-wise. And you look at Legacy, they don't have a whole lot of magic damage apart from the Puck. I mean, Chris May's got some, but usually you freezing field, you instantly cancelled. This is very scary for Legacy. I feel like you always underestimate these supports like the Crystal Maiden and the Wind Ranger in terms of damage output. They can actually do quite a lot, but for me yep. the problem arises when the Primal Beast gets a BKB and Gunner, I can't see him rushing it or maybe he gets the blink and then into a BKB. Once he has it, you don't really do much for a solid period of time and in general Primal Beast should be okay versus all of these heroes to uh, to have at least a solid laning stage. So yeah, I mean, Nouns are coming in as the fa heavy favorites. Mm -hmm. I don't think Legacy out after them. It is very easy to make a prediction. Can Legacy mm -hmm. win this one? I'm okay with their draft. It's kind of in sync of what they want to do. They have a mm -hmm. high skill hero on BNC. They have a snowbally type lineup so i think they got everything they wanted now just the question is can they perform on the same level i mean they don't have tower push that's the problem you know it's like even if you win fights you don't have to, you aren't able to take towers you are up against this better team i don't really i don't i don't, I don't feel the draft i like the announced draft way more but good luck to legacy hopefully we can get a series where it's not just like three quick games from us i would like this if they were evenly matched. I'd like to see Legacy take a game or two. Or yeah, all three. I, I'm, I don't care. Man, if Nouns don't go to the um, main tournament, good, NA fans yeah. are going to be super disappointed. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's going to be happening. But who knows? The, uh, mm -hmm. the main character arc of Legacy, we'll see how it ends. Does it end with them uh, getting back up? Maybe they start losing 2-0 and then we hear uh, I have the Tiger Rocky mu music, you know, and then suddenly they... Uh, uh, they stand up and they, uh, uh, and, they continue and punching. Trio. Yeah. Uh, I like how he, how little Nick uses PPD's lines as PPD. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's either CEO or spokesperson or now. He is very much involved with them. So it's kind of cool when uh, they use their boss's line against them. Like, come on. He has been very involved with the scene, uh, trying yes. to get, you know, the NADCL up. And that that's pretty nice. I also, like it too. I, yeah. And he's, he's approachable, you know, you can message him on Twitter and he'll actually respond to you, tell you what, the, what the, their, some of their plans are like. It's good. I wish we had more people that you could communicate with. I know, I don't want them to be too accessible, like anyone can just message them. I Obviously, have, they have their own lives to work with, but it's nice they can reach out to him once in a while, at least. As... Ah, that's quite cool. Especially because, you know, you know that uh, PPD used to be very salty and... Uh in pubs and stuff like that and then you would assume yeah this guy is uh he's not nice look at that but no he's actually uh a pretty cool guy dota just uh sometimes takes the uh the worst out of us 
And to be fair, I mean, to be fair, he was, he was younger. You know, we're all, we're all like, they were all a little mean. Plus, it's, it always looks bad when you're young and successful because it's, like, it's just not the best combination sometimes. But uh, you know, it's it's like you you grow too arrogant at too young an age. You don't you aren't able to sort of bring in that ex life experience to mellow you out a little bit. Okay, okay. If you uh, if you say so, Optimo wouldn't wouldn't know because we are just kidding. We're so uh, successful in casting. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. As uh, anyways, nouns versus legacy will continue. Uh, we're looking at the uh, at the top lane. How do you reckon this one is gonna go? I think it should be kind of tough for the radiant for nouns here. You have Crystal Maiden as well as the Razor, so these two range people can do damage. The, on, on the flip side, though, we've seen this many times. Crystal Maiden is super vulnerable. Once Gunner's about level two, if he takes the onslaught and trample, you can just kill Pingus, especially with the bushwhack. So, uh, who strikes first is is more like is what matters at the top lane. Yeah, I really bottom, like that. I really like that when you have an offlaner that has the mobility spell, and then oh, you can so just nice. trade with the other support. You both get low, and then he just comes in and, and kills your opponent. It's amazing. And I mean, Primal Beast in general feels like a really strong hero. When even now, even after the nerfs he received, it's just the onslaught makes him so valuable. Uh, as bottom lane is going to be hmm, Mars and Windranger versus Venge and Sven. Mm, not feeling the kill potential much from either side, and that they are there is kill potential, but yeah, I'm not feeling it. Oh, he takes uproar. Okay, so no gunner's not problem is unlikely to get, be getting kills at least until level three. That's actually a good thing for the for the dire side. I don't know why you're not feeling the kill potential on the bottom lane. Like there's literally so much kill potential as uh, everybody has a stun. BNC dropping low. There will be a blood oh, grenade. And Otomo, Otomo is just not feeling it, so you're not gonna die. And he doesn't. There you go. No, I mean it's like <laughs> I'm having a hard time deciding who will be getting the kill first. You know, sometimes you look at the lane, and you're like, ah, I think this is definitely ah, gonna okay. go this way. But here, it's like vengeance. Ven is good stuns, but Little Nick is durable, and you have wind run. Oh, he wanted to throw the spear, little Nick from Wildway, but good stuff for Fly keeps him alive, but Fly might pay for it with his life. Yep, he uh, doesn't have any stick charges, and he will die for sure. Ooh. BNC takes the kill for himself. A couple of creeps there get missed by little Nick under the tower, but to be honest, he's farming better than the Sven, and the lane will be uh, going in his yep. favor as the Sven cannot get the pull off. Ah, uh, he's uh, trying. And BNC, oh, but he's a carry hero. He doesn't know these things, you know? So he's like, what time do I pull? They're like... 53 is like, I can't do it. I just can't be there. Can't, not 50, sorry, 46 would have to be done. Okay, players. What can you do? Primal, <laughs> it's I... so easy. It's so easy to understand when I cast with somebody if they're a support or a core player. Of course, for you, I know because we've been uh, casting together for quite some time. But uh, man, how they put each other down. Like, these support players, they suck. Like, it's always. I would want you as a support player to critique these support players so we learn something how they could have done it better or uh, what they're doing well. Because uh, No, the they're, they're sports are all perfect. They, can, oh, okay. they literally cannot make mistakes because they're support players. And okay. they're so much better than me. But when you but you look at Corey like, ah, oh, come on, you made a mistake. Oh, can't believe that happens. As Gunner takes two points of trouble. Again, no points in the onslaught. He is farming well. Like and we're not but this really but without onslaught his kill potential is significantly limited. Yep, he is gonna have it on level four though, but uh you know you could have already been uh, killing this CM. He's going to get a lot of his damage drained. That means a lot of these creeps are just going to get denied and easy CS for the Razor in general. So, and by the way, uh, suddenly... Go on. I was going to say, Trample is based on your attack damage, not your strength. So when you get, like, reduced, it does redu do less damage. Oh! Dodging everything, dodge. Yuma! His, uh, his footwork is great. His fly is going to be coming forward. Running into three heroes was the enemy. Mid laner rotated. That's uh, that's pretty ballsy. The, the puck, of course, he wanted to go back to the mid lane. Yeah, he, he felt. I mean, what we can see, copy basically unkillable is Dragon Knight. He actually got him low a few times, or couldn't go, get the finishing blow. So it's like maybe I should move another place. And Yuma did the amazing strategy of walking in a straight line while the enemy team thinks you're gonna you're they're gonna be like, well, skill shot him here and there. He's like, I'll just walk straight if that's okay. Yep. And survives. Hey. Finally, we're going to be seeing a difference, a big difference between the Dragonite and the Puck. It started off well for the Puck. Gunner losing a ton of his damage. Going to be using the Uproar. And uh, let's see now. Bushwhack on Fade. We'll be fine. 
overall though uh now Lelis is just gonna try to do the wing things which is be as annoying as possible overall this top lane pretty solid i say for the for I legacy fade and vingus had a decent time gunner did get cs and might get a courier boom it's a flying courier oh where's time for it to start flying or for him to level up i mean Copy almost killed Red in the mid lane though, and he did apply some damage to the tower, but now finally his siege creep is going to die, especially with the rotation of B and C. That's a nice rotation. Uh Legacy are actually haven't made any mistakes in this early game. Like maybe a couple of spells missed, but they Lucky. were skill shots, and they also get the regen rune, so Red is available to continue staying in this lane. He willed it to happen. And he's like, I need it! Uh, it just happens BNC. Oh, Shackle doesn't land, Copy should be okay, Red still doesn't have his ultimate, so the threat, the kill potential is a bit limited right now. Is it probably gonna die to a CM, has the upper, so the extra armor will be there, but a long time until you have your onslaught, so I'm pretty sure Pingus will be trying to run him down. He does have a mango and a frostbite, yeah, Gunner is gonna die. Oh, is he? Needs a, does uh, upper have a again. For crystal? Dude, are you kidding me? And yeah, he just makes it out. But what a lot of time away from the lane where he's just not getting anything for himself. Oh, but is... the net worth shows it. Yeah. We, I mean, we have Yuma and Gun are both kind of struggling in the early game. Sure, Red is as well. But you'd sacrifice. I mean, you're happy to do this. They are stacking though. So at least you will have a nice big juicy group to go and kill later. I think Gunner. you at least give the big camp to, uh, to Gunner, right? Yeah, maybe. And he actually takes the Wisdom Ruin as well, because he is behind, he feels, and he's like, I need this AEXP to come back. Uh, that's just uh, how it goes. Once you're level 5, actually, you could threaten the Razor a bit, and... Uh, nice, uh, nice glyph there, Razor almost got trampled on top, but meanwhile, we're watching the mid lane as the second Dragon form. Copy wants to apply even more damage to this mid lane tower. Yeah, Red's just do, you know, spamming out Illusory Orbs, trying to make the life as Oh, Gunner, will he be able to? And seems Alive like again. it. And Lelis is there, TP from the Dragonite, they want to be turning around to the Crystal Maiden, that is a big dragon that will be burning down. The CM power shot, a little bit off the mark, Don't, not sure if that would have killed him. This is not that bad for Legacy, by the way, because this is a dra Dragon Knight, he turns Dragon form, he leaves the lane just to kill the Crystal Maiden, so he doesn't actually pressure the tower that much. So if you're Legacy, you're like, we'll do this anytime, trading Dragon form and tower damage for CM. As they also go in and be like, there's a big stack. I don't think they can actually take it without at least Mars here. There is an AD rune on red, so that is one uh, thing that you have to be afraid of if you're Nouns. But uh, it is still scary for the puck to go here. Bushwhack oh, will yeah, connect. Puck? That's going to be a problem. Oh, dodges the magic missile just well in time. Done. When he rifted aside, has the orb. Actually sends it forward. Just knowing how aggressive he can be. There will be a coil being coil used. Breaks. Immediately broken. Hoodwing still alive. Has the healing sound, so he can come back into the fight. Shackle shot onto the Dragonite. His damage is being chased. Goes around. Gets the stun. Runs away. <laughs> Lots of bull. Sorry, I was gonna say balls. Bull blows being traded here at the end. Legacy. They don't get anything, but they, they still want to contest the stack. There is no dragon form. There is no pulverize. Actually, dragon form just come, comes comes available. Yeah, but he is pretty low there. Magic missile onto the razor, dropping pretty low, especially with the bushwhack gunner running away. Shackle shot only for the mini stun. Pingus, he needs mana. He's gonna be getting it there with the mana region. And Red gets himself a kill, and they got the stack as well. So. Pretty good for Legacy. Their early game is... It's beautiful. It is working amazingly well for them. I mean, in general, it's been they've been focusing on Gunner, who has switched roles a bunch of times from off to mid, off to mid, off to mid. So maybe right now they feel like, okay, this is the guy that we can actually you know, just destroy and hopefully use that to, you know, ping pong, ourse ping pong whatever, ping pong. Get ourselves into the lead. Okay. I, I don't know how... Ping pong should have been uh, in their one. In that Pink one, Paul, there's, there's like when you jump high. I don't know what it is, the sure, word. Sure. But we're, we're, uh. we're gonna be having our jump rope competition. Are, are you good at ping pong? Are we gonna have a ping pong no. competition as well? No, no, I'm not gonna go with that. But we, you know, it should be like that. We should have like the talent go against each other in some sort of physical sport. Because I'm all about that. I'm like, you know, I think. Uh, let's is... go basketball. Oh no! Hey, you have 27 <laughs> centimeters on me. For Americans, that's like. A foot, you know. <laughs> Wait, is it a foot? I think it's slightly less than a foot, but it's almost it a foot. Okay, okay, no, no matter. We will find something else. You, you, you can choose. Anyways, uh, looking at the uh, 
uh, looking at the uh, game, the game right now, we only have mm -hmm. three kills. Yes. And I have to say, it hasn't been boring. There was a lot of action. Just nobody's yeah. dying. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of close shapes with, for the two teams, for sure. Uh, I've seen that now as a couple, they tend to go all, start, you know, they take it slow a little bit early, then they just excite the more the enemy team makes a mistake. Like they are kind of a reactive team where they don't force the issue if they don't feel like they have to. So I'm not surprised by them being even at this point. Uh, Level six on fly. It's fine. Uh, considering that nobody's going to be dying because nobody's dying in this game, I just want to encourage our viewers if they now, when they uh, have the uh, time to do so, just go and follow this channel as well as our other ESB channels. ESB yep. underscore EN underscore or underscore Dota 2 underscore EN and then there's underscore B, C, D, and E. So be sure to follow those because uh, we want these channels to get uh, taken up. It is only the start. This is the qualifier for the first Elite League and there's many more to come. Many more. I think I know that there's at least two more, but I'm not quite sure exactly yep. if it's two yep. or three. Three were more. announced. Three, three were, were announced. announced. Yeah. yeah. Little Nick, by the way, he kind of figures, I don't know how he does it, but he felt like they were coming. They smoked up, so he backs down, backs out away just in time. He is moving forward, but he's got BNC with him. Gunner's here. He would love to do something for his team right now. Bushwhack. Really it's nice. Trouble. Magic was have follow-up. They have the pull rise. He's waiting for it. The shock shot to the creeps. And they have the swap with the follow-up storm hammer. So many stuns. Lil Nick gets taken down. That's the highest net worth hero on the side of Legacy. Nice grab for Nouns. Just when we were praising his ability to sort of move away in time, but he does get caught in the end. A little bit unfortunate. You know who's also having a not having much of a game? Red. He's you know, kind of low in the net worth. He hasn't doesn't have a single kill or assist to his name. It is a low kill game to be fair with you, but that's what Puck should do: is find kills. And you're up against Hoodwink and Vinch, not the hardest heroes to to murder. Uh, Bushwhack <laughs> is sometimes annoying when you're a Puck. You sometimes sure. can't see it coming. Especially like if you're in the tree line, it comes from the trees as well, and you're like, oh god, that's it is tough. Copy is having a phenomenal performance. He goes for the hand of Myers, recognizing that this is a slow burn, recognizing that if we go late against a Razor, doesn't farm that well, we're happy. It's. I think Nows is getting away with way too much. This is a, a team with a Midas Dragon Knight and a Sven, and they're not being pressured at all. I mean, you always say that the Razor doesn't farm that well, but he actually farms pretty decently. I know that he cannot match up with the Sven, but uh, I have the Storm plus Plasma Field are pretty decent farming spells. Yes, but uh, but but I said it's not. Therefore, I'm I am right in your wrong. Yeah. I, I don't like this game, <laughs> and I don't like that conclusion. Gunner gonna get swapped out. So Fly is gonna be giving his life away. What a captain! If the ship goes down, I go down with it. Nice time. Yeah, I, I'm not liking the way the game is moving for Legacy as well. It's way too slow. Can we look at the win percentage? It'll give us an idea of what we're what we can expect in the future. BNC, he might be going for the Spirit Vessel. I like that. You want that percentage damage. We said that the other side, high armor, high health. Spirit Vessel is great. And Lil Nick does... Okay, maybe now they want to be more active because you have the, the blink on Lil Nick. Catching a couple of people would be very nice for you. When, uh, fine, I'll go to the client and show my um, find myself the win percentage. I don't mind. I ain't lazy. It is 75% for nouns. Yep, it's... Uh, I guess that's just... Uh... The way it is at the moment, they are their favorite to win with the lineup they have. And look at this, you're inside of the arena at the uh, center of it. There's nobody else in it. The Spear onto the Sven, that's actually pretty dangerous currently for Yuma. He's going to be trying to run away. They do finish off a little Nice blink in from Copy, but Yuma will be losing his life either way. So uh, both of the bottom lane cores will be going down. Coil stops the onslaught. Now Proud Beast wants to run away, but he oh, can't do it. The swap. swap out breaks the coil, still gives them the shield that might allow him to live. The bushwhack is going to be huge because he still finishes him off even through all of that armor. Copy also pretty tanky, but Fade is starting to ramp up the damage. Here comes the Plasma Field with the Shock connecting once again. Fly is trying to turn this one around as they, they go for more. Stands on Fade, and now it's only the two supports. Of course they want more. Fly this time around, he didn't go with the ship. What's with the Bushwhacks? They're amazing, but it doesn't matter because you've still lost four of your heroes. Uh, I think uh, it might be a bit difficult to get that, that fifth team wipe, but Dude, this is what we were saying. Like, you are strong on Legacy side. You know, the other team, they have a farming Sven who's not really active yet. He, they have Midas on DK, so he doesn't want to fight to one. So once they were 
They jump a little Nick, little Nick does lose his life in the end, but it doesn't matter. He was able to bait them to go in deep. Good job by Fate to show up as well. Very nicely done by Legacy. They need to keep this up though, because again, late game is not in their favor. I like the Sanjay and Yasha pick up on Razor. Gives him all that he needs at this stage of the game. Oh, and Legacy, have they not taken there? Was there was Dimruin? Yeah, they haven't. Uh, okay. They do kind of need it. Uh, they will get it now though, because nobody else is uh, going to be going to steal it. They do get a nice kill on B and C, so that's quite nice. But uh, that last fight really did favor Legacy. It uh, did work out quite well for them. Well, Gunner, what's he going for? First item, BKB. I like this. And he's, he feels like he just needs to go in and, and survive. We saw Fly even break the core by... I don't know if it was by accident or you want to, but either way... Oh, little Nick. It's gonna be caught there. A lot of stuns connecting on him, but still he's surviving. That uh, acorn shot will be doing a solid amount of damage, not enough Link. to bring anybody low enough. As Lelis will be next on the menu. Arena on the hoodwink, dead as a squirrel. Is that how they say it? Not really, but he is a squirrel and he is dead. Gunner gonna be using the uproar. They don't have the stuns any longer, and of course the damage will not be sufficient. I think they say dead as a dodo, which is an extinct bird. I don't think I've ever. I haven't heard of dead as a squirrel before. I see no dodos in Dota. Ex yes, because they're all not alive. So dead as a squirrel. And uh, squirrel. So I, I knew you were gonna say squirrel. I knew it. <laughs> I mean, why do you even try then? Can you? We, we can try for you to end my sentences sometimes. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna give you a cue, but I'm gonna like try to take a deep breath before my last few words, and I'm pretty sure that sometimes you're gonna be able to do it. Few words? I mean, I'm not even sure I'll be able to finish the word itself when it's halfway through. Oh God! I believe I, in you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Light collector being picked up on the Mars, a good way to sort of break the trees around you. One of the neutral items that feels specifically made to counter other heroes, like a Nature's Prophet or a Hoodwink. So, alright, that's pretty cool. Top lane though, copy, he's getting surrounded, or is he doing the surrounding? Lil Nick stunned up, Sven doing so much damage, and actually Rush the shot is gonna be amazing, and she lets it go, you are gonna freeze! In the freeze kill, Bushback stops oh it, but Lord. PSC gets the kill on Yuma, and there's the swap, also the sharpshooter, Pingus goes down, Fly puts himself in a very uncomfortable position where there's gonna be Red finishing him off with the waning rift, Lelis, you need to run away right now because these guys, they are relentless, and they're gonna use all of their spells if it means that you're just going to die, BNC gets the kill, and Legacy, they are winning this game right now they are because they're doing exactly what their lamp is built for which is just run at the enemy team that was without fade and i'm surprised that now is considering going for these fights because remember they rotated to kill little nick it was not little nick it was like nick so they were way deep they had to take a twin gate for this event to do this i'm somewhat surprised that now continues to go for this when their draft is built to farm okay this is, I, mean, I think this is the first time in this whole tournament that Naus has been behind by more than like a thousand gold. Exactly. Exactly that is the case. Of course, they haven't played that much because they just kind of rolled through that uh, upper bracket. Oh, that's a nice kill. Still it's getting the BNC ward. down. That's fine. It's that next to the ward. It's alright. These things happen. What does BNC have? I, know, I think he went for the Spirit Vessel. He has it. Going for the blink after. So... As well as the shot. So more focusing all on utility after he has his damage item. I wouldn't mind if he goes for Diffusal and Maelstrom after. It's like Spirit Vessel is good, but I want more. Yeah, BKBs are still going to be a problem. And they're going to be coming so, out fairly soon, right? Primal Beast is going to have one in 200 gold. And mm -hmm. Sven is going to have his in like 8,000. So... Mm -hmm. uh, actually, yeah. he has it right now. He's just going to disassemble his Echo Saber. Okay. Hoodwink is going for Maelstrom. I like that from Lilith, just so you can do a little bit more damage in the team fights. What does Red have? He's got 1,700 gold. I wonder if it's Agadims or what is, what's his what's his thought? Lilith almost has BKB himself. Fades is close to his BKB. So, a lot, so BKBs are going to be showing up in the next giant team fight. Multiple on both sides. Let's see now. The uh, they're already waiting for the tormentor. Want it down as fast as possible. They have the hoodwink and the uh, venge. So whoever gets it is actually quite nice. I like the venge one to, more, to be honest with you. But yes, both of them are fine. And they get the hoodwink one. So uh, 
The one that you like, Automo, it is not going to be there just yet. Copy almost has his Manta. Little Nick. Okay, he really he hates Lelis. He hates He's him been catching so much. Him. Every single time. Well played. Like He just knows exactly where he is. Good voice line as well at the end. You know, that's the... That's just a stylish kill. Poor Lelis. Uh, he's despite all this, he's still the most farm support. But I look at him, look at Gunner, and I'm thinking, Gunner, you're really struggling. You're struggling a lot right now. Yep, but uh, he will have a BKB, and that changes the game quite a lot. Because what are they gonna do to him when he does have it? Not much. I think what they only have static link is kind of decent against him, but yeah, everything else just does not. Like, he doesn't care about it at all. Uh, Lil Nick has a BKB as well, it was just delivered, so we have some big items coming through on both sides. Gunner, he doesn't want to use the 9 second BKB instantly, but he's gonna be forced to do so. Onslaught and TP away will be successful in doing so. That's so sad. You, you just buy the BKB and your 9 second BKB goes down the drain with you not accomplishing anything. At least he doesn't die, I guess. That's the accomplishment, right? Keeps you alive. Yeah, it's, you know, if a kill that you get or a death that you avoid are almost the same thing. Kind of. Sure. Sure. But if you kill somebody, you've kind of avoided death because you didn't even get close to it. Isn't that better? I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of the same thing. All right, Venge, Fly, he's got the drums. You know, standard, just standard item for the Venge. Maybe go, we'll go for Vlad's shard. We'll see what he goes for afterwards. I'm... Wondering if Roche is going to be an objective very soon for either team, particularly the, for the Dire side, because they need to keep up this momentum. The moment they, they, that the game slows down, it favors Nouns again, just because of the way their lineup is built. Are scanning for enemies. See, the game did slow down. We uh, haven't yes. been getting fights for quite some time. But, uh, you know, once BNC has the blink, when you have more ways to initiate, it's going to be easier for you to actually find the... Uh, the enemies is a gunner. Doesn't have the BKB for 10 seconds. He is a possible target. Lilis? Meanwhile, Elelis is gonna get shackle shotted to a tree, running away with the scurry. Has the wow, bushwhack. Boomerang as well. Wants to uh, get the sharpshooter off, completely off the mark, and again dies to Lil Nick. Uh, but Pegasus will probably be their turn. Oh, what a turnaround there with the crystal clone, and he actually slows down quite a lot. Razor uh, tries to take the damage from the Sandy. But now he might be in trouble. Trouble up. He's losing his BKB. Has to leave the arena. That's gonna be a dead fly. Side of the call and the arena gunner might be next on the menu as he does get taken down as well. BNC almost burned to a crisp, but he will survive in the end. Oh well, yeah. All the damage over time from the dragon also is not able to get him. As again, when fights happen, legacy just take it. I love what Nick does. He held his ultimate, waiting for those BKB timers to go low before he throws it, throws it out. Sure, it only caught fly, but also prevented. Uh, Gunner from going in and out of the arena, which is very nice for him. As, like, Gunner, this net worth is a problem. You know, it's basically two versus three cores at the moment. Yep, it is. As, uh, if you look at it, the Sven is no longer a hazer, so that, that's a big deal. It's a 5k goalie for Lee. They are, they're crushing this game, Automo, and, uh, I'm looking at nouns. I like that was their timing with the, with the nine second BKBs. It's definitely a strong point for them, you know, where you're able to just show up and especially with this team that's kind of mobile on their on their heroes. You need to be able to just chase the enemy down with those BKBs so they can't slow you. But no, it it's still in favor of nouns if we go ultra late. It's just this five thousand gold advantage. A little bit annoying. We'll see. So far, there hasn't been any attempt to take Roche. I think if you're dire, you wait for it to go on, on to the enemy side. Because you don't want to be like, oh, we fight on the Radiant, we kill, get a few kills, but they buy back, they TP, and suddenly they take it away. Like, let's just wait where we have the, the geographical advantage. Why? He has the drums. Seven charges left. Fade is going to be picking up the Wisdom Room. He is going to be level 18, Ottomo. That Eye of the Storm, it's... So strong once you get it up to level 3. And he is going for a Lincoln Seer, which is so huge. He understands damage is already there on his team. He just needs to survive at this point. And plus, once you BKB, the only thing that can annoy you is the Pulverize. I guess there's a swap, but you know, that's usually going to come out safe. But you do not want to be Pulverized as BNC. He's like, Gunner's here, guys. I see him. I know where he is. 
He's walking next to a, a Radiant Observer Ward, but Gunner, will he actually like go for this? It seems, it seems like a way too risky play. Roshan has moved to the Dire side. Still no team making any like any serious attempt to take him. And Lelis, he's going to be uh, taking it upon himself. He's like, yeah, my team, they are uh, not really doing that well, so I need to do it myself. They do find BNC. This is going to be a nice kill. Finally, that ward does pay off, and it is going to be expiring, so really not that big of a deal. As a Fly, static linked up. You know, goes for the swap. TP out. Nice attempt Ooh. there, but... Uh, Pretty much unsuccessful. Dragonite breaks the coil, but the thing is, there's a follow up arena spear and copy goes down, so you just get the double kill on fade. And immediately, Nick is like, guys, let's just get it. They probably will take the creep cre wave and then just go for it. This has been what they've been waiting for a chance to do Roshan, a chance to do it on their side, and now it gives them a couple of kills for it. So they're like, this is perfect timing for us. They're not the no. greatest Rosh taking lineup. No, they're not. No, they're not. But this is why they need, like, they can't go into Roshan with now it's around 5 versus 5. You have to take the advantage and you can go for it. The, the scary thing is, Legacy might need to use this Aegis to go high ground. Like, pick up into high ground. It can't just be a farming Aegis. I don't think that would suit them. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think you're underestimating their late game. Like, imagine a puck with an Axe yep. and a couple of items. Razor in the ultra late yeah. game is not to be under Mars as well within, with the double arena once the BKBs on the other side are low. Revenant brooch maybe as well. Why not? Why not? Uh, he's not queuing it up though. He's going for a completely yeah. different build. He wants Shivas into, into a refresher. So I like that. Uh, it's uh, Not every game ha has to be like that. He's relying on the others to do damage. He just controls them, which is a, you know, a fine way to, to approach this game. We have about four minutes of Aegis timer left. We'll see what they want to do. They don't actually give the, the Aegis to Fate. I think it went to the Puck, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, Fate cannot die. Like, let's not kid ourselves. If he gets the BKB off and his team is in the vicinity, he's not going to be going down. There's just no way. Yeah, he, should be, he should be fairly solid. Especially once he has the Linkus Sphere, which I think he does have it right now. He has the gold for it. That is the gold for the ultimate orb. Oh, wait, no, ultimate orb is way more expensive. Holy moly, I didn't realize it was increased by that much. Oh, dude. I, I see a lot of people making this mistake. I, I've, I think I have gotten used to it now. It took me some time, but I think I'm there. And there it is. It's finished. You know what else is going to be finished? The Aghanim Scepter on the puck. He just needs 300 gold for it. As they did find Gunner, BKB, TP out, will be successful. But that's another wasted BKB charge, which uh, makes it now down to six. No, uh, no more longer BKB charges. It's on the dire side to punish him, though, for that, right? It's like, okay, we know his BKB is down. Are we going to go and push high ground or get over objectives? Because if they don't, then it's perfectly fine. They're chasing me around the map, and they're not getting anything out of it. Very nice. Craggy Coat on the Primal Beast. God, this hero's going to have so much armor. Yep. And it is going to be uh, very tough to bring him down with physical damage. Luckily, for the Legacy side, they have a pretty solid amount of magical damage as well. Gleipner done on the Hoodwing, so Lelis's damage is going to be increased quite a lot. That Might be a nice way of also ensuring that uh, he doesn't, like, when Lelis jumps him, you glide near him, you throw a tree, you throw a bushwhack, and you can survive a little bit in the arena. Someone's dying! Is dropping low, not that just yet. Lil Nick enjoying his time in the arena, but also there's gonna be Crystal Maiden going down. Instant buyback, they don't want to allow this fight to go badly, but it's starting oh to go really badly as Nick is dropping down low. They're taking damage from Yuma, that's a big sword, but it's not gonna be as powerful. They're gonna be getting a lot of shots into him as well. And Fade finishes him off with the stun on the puck being used, coil on the ground while nobody's there. Nice blink out from Copy, who will TP out from the little river there on the side. I like that Pink is bought back in that fight, recognizing that as much of their advantage they're in, this is still a, they're on a knife's edge with this one. And at any moment they can lose their advantage, they won't be getting it back. So he buys back to help his team out. And yet another successful victory for Legacy. But just one kill and a buyback, and you can see it's almost even. Yep, it is, uh, it is almost even. <laughs> I mean, in what they got from the fight. Ah, okay. Yeah. Right, well, Sven died, but I guess in terms of gold... They... Yeah, overall gold experience, it's, it's, it's close-ish. Yeah, true, true. Puck oh. does have the uh, the axe, though. So if that, if that Dragonite got caught in the coil, he definitely would have died. 
Mm. This is uh, this is scary for Nouns, really, and for Nouns fans as well. As uh, they, this is not a good look for sure. It's only game one. It is a best of three, so they have a good chance of five. coming back. In, oh, sorry, best of five. My bad. So I meant like there'll be three, you know, at least three more games for them if they lose this one to come back. So it's fine. The Nick has already got the sheep as guards. I'm looking at Nouns as a team that might be able to, uh, you know, play with the best in the world, at least some some games. And I understand. <sighs> yeah, it's this like is... if you are if you want to go up against you know Falcons and Betbull and Team Liquid, but you're losing to Legacy, even in a, one game, the best of three, it's not ideal. Because I don't mean to be mean, but Legacy's players aren't the most well known. So like, who is who's Fade? Who is Pingus? So. It's not Fade and Pingus. Yeah, Fade and Pingus, yeah. And the game is not over. It is a best of three. Now it's good crush in the rest of them. But five. right now, best of five. But it's... <laughs> no, don't curse on stream. This is a family friendly stream, Otomo. Don't never uh, do it again. Anyways, though, there's gonna be a gem being bought on the uh on the legacy side. Just kidding. We uh I mean we love families, but uh we uh we can also sometimes get curse words out. It happens, it's Dota. Uh, I mean, if, if anyone thinks that Dota is family friendly, like, I'm sorry, have you have you been to the regular pubs? No, nothing like that. I wouldn't even put criminals in there, let alone families. Yeah, and also all of the uh, heroes are well dressed, not exposing any uh, unneeded body parts either. Actually, Dota does that very well, I think. It's like Queen of Pain is a bit much, but that's kind of her character. You know, it's like a lot. There's a lot of monsters. A lot of people. It's it's fine. I've, I've I see other games and it's like way worse. This does good with their representation. I think as a man, I can. Say, I don't know like if women feel the same way. Oh, I hear coil. Okay. That's two supports. Fun. Dead? One is dead. Yeah, the other one is dead as well. The arena will be used there just for good measure because Lil Nick loves for Lelis to, to die surrounded by walls so that he just feels claustrophobic. As Copy, well strong winds are blowing. He's gonna be dodging the shackle shot, but here comes the Sven with the Aghanim Scepter. He purchased that off. No, actually, Windrun wasn't available. Yuga now needs to run away. He's gonna have to be KB if he wants to live. God's Rebuke doing some damage, not enough to threaten his life. Copy's got buyback, but you'd feel pretty crappy buying back in this situation. We'll have to wait a few seconds for the sports to come back. The, the creeps are a little bit far away, so at least this backdoor protection is going to be up until the sports come back. What a jump from Red, though. He's just possibly like, I'm going to kill, kill them both. That's it. And also, yeah. good followed by Lil Nick. And the thing is, Cole is such low cooldown that as soon as the supports are back up, he can do it one more time. Look at Yuma. It's like, this lane of Rax is gone, guys. I'm off to farming. Beautiful icon for the stun, I must say. Like, really nice a Stormhammer icon for this event with that cosmetic. In the meantime, though, that's just going to be Bon Rax for Legacy in Game 1. They are coming in. So maybe it's the warm-up they had before this. That's why they're looking so good. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tier 2 in the mid lane, all of the outer towers are gone with the bottom lane already being in their favor. Legacy, they are winning game 1. I don't know how many people in chat believed in them. We uh, we didn't have the predictions in chat, but if we had that one guy, you know, that always goes against the odds, we'd be getting all of the points. Yeah, it's all that. It's all that there's one, like two people. Like, it's it would be 97% to 3 and you're like, alright, I see you too. It's not over yet, again. But now they are in a massive disadvantage. It's one of those things where, you know, you've been harping on their late game is good, then blah, blah, blah. We are entering the late game and they are in a crappy spot. Yep, in a very, very crappy spot. The late game usually is uh, like 35 to 45, then ultra late game is uh, kind of mentioned. Break the Lincolns, got to get the stun, fade all alone. He's gonna get stunned up by the Onslaught as well and actually Good just skill. get taken down. That is something that you cannot allow yourself to just be all alone. 90 seconds dead. Now they could be, you know, put their foot on the gas here. If Fade was a huge part of, look at that net worth, he's 22,000 gold all the way to the top. And what do they do on Legacy? They start pushing, they push top a little bit. They're trying to keep people away from him, trying to force Nouns to go back. Bomb is pushing in as well, soon enough. So it's not the worst thing that Fade died there. Looks like Nouns can't punish it too heavily. This is a lot of the teams that get the kill, they're gonna, oh, we're gonna get the tower. No, you set up for a future kill, and I like what they did. They shoved out the mid lane, they're shoving out the bottom lane. They're gonna put themselves in a position where next time they fight, they could get a better kill, a better engagement, or multiple kills, and then go for those objectives. So 
Nows are thinking ahead at the moment. I like your point, if the kill wasn't so long though. 90 seconds is a long time to not push a tower. But, you know, towers. Nows... Sorry? Two towers. You get one tower and that's it. Even if you... Maybe, maybe. Two towers, but sorry, if yeah. you shove, shove out the waves, maybe you can make, we can make something happen. Now, let's see. There, there's another smoke. They're going for it. Yeah, the lanes are really looking very nice for now. It's top lane a little bit pushed in, but mid and bottom very nice. Especially bottom because that's where the super creeps are. So, decent job by now to come back. They just they just took away the net worth fleet from 16 to 12,000. That's just one kill. Very yep. efficient movement. For sure, for sure. But uh, it seems that Legacy knew what Nows were uh, trying to do. And they didn't see that push coming. They spread around a little bit, moved back, didn't want to risk it, and uh, we'll be fine. This puck, and he's going to be such a huge problem. He already is. And so is little Nick. Oh, refresh and double arena. It becomes worse when you're 25 and you have the healing, of course, but he's 22. He's not that far off from it. Now, speaking of 25s, Razor is level 24 and he has a butterfly, so Sven being a hero that doesn't really want to buy a, uh, an MK beats a problem. Sharpshooter connects a lot of damage. They do finish off B and C. Nice way to start things off. Without B and C, you might decide against going fight. Red is kind of in the area. He senses that someone's around. Will he jump on them? Oh, he does. Pingus goes in, Bushwhack connects onto the two of them, Copy gets the kill on Pingus with relative ease, gets away from Fade there with the uh, four staff and they're just outplaying them at the moment, Brown Beast running away, that Parasma does a lot of damage but he purchases it off, now this town on Lil Nick has the BKB, that connects as well, they're cutting them so well here Automo and those illusions from the Dragonite, they're still gonna be alive for quite some time, goes for the refresher, Rock Throw slowing him down as well, thinking about going in and it's gonna be uh, Lil Nick popping the second BKB in that fight and they've still lost. They almost killed Yuma though. He had, the, the coil comes out, he was able to do so much damage on the puck, literally one hit away from Yuma, but Gunner was able to do, like just grab him, pulverize and prevent him from getting the chase off. In the meantime, the rest of the team was unable to do, you know, they lost fingers from very early in the fight. Eh, a bit scary for, for Legacy to see that. At the same time, you almost killed this Sven, so it's not... We're not at terminal stage yet. They're gonna go for the smoke. And hey. actually, look at them, they're going for Roche. They are gonna get okay. caught off guard. I mean, this is... Mind you, this is not the fastest Roche lineup on the Dire side. And they don't have Crystal Mage. She's gonna be up in a few seconds, but she still has needs to teleport here. Okay. All right. They know. Each team knows the other team is here. Well, the Black Dragon are coming. Rock Throw is gonna be there. Fade. And uh, gonna be slow down, but still, that's very scary. Doesn't have the BKB for eight seconds. Sven what? goes into the pit. They're not gonna be expecting this. Fade is gonna oh be running dear. in. The minus armor is there. Bash on Yuma slows him down, but they're getting hey, it. Hey, plasma! The plasma field. Now it's gonna be used. Yuma with an Aegis BKB. Is he gonna TP out? Decides not to. That's the uh, smallest swap I've seen in All my right. life. Yuma loses his life. They gave the Aegis to the Dragonite, and this disengage was just bad from. Now the idea was great, but just TP out. I love that. I love that. Uh, that swap. Like, he immediately moved him like one foot, and uh, just for the shield. Unfortunately, doesn't give him anything, and Yuma does not have buyback. Now did a great move. They they were able to scare them off the Roshan, but then they just kind of fumbled it away with, as you mentioned, a pretty bad escape. Yep, and uh, the push is gonna be happening. Level twenty five Razor is nothing to. Uh... To underestimate as there will be Gale Force, really have to be careful there as it's gonna be a shackle shot off the mark. Spear as well, missing a couple of their spells, but they're gonna be killing the tower. We can't really miss the right clicks on that one unless you're attacking from the low ground. This fade, just so much attack speed on this razor, and that's the only thing that the hero sometimes lacks. Shackle shot off the mark, seconds. power shot off the mark. No, well, Polvice lands, they're going for a little nick, but he's very tanky. Yep, it's also gonna be the sharpshooter as well, immediately surrounded by his teammates. That's a no buyback hero as well as Fly loses life. What a damage from God's review copy. That's what gonna a be a shackle. shackle shot, the perfect one. And he's taking his damage, he's taking his attack speed, and he's gonna be taking the life of the Black Dragon, who does have an Aegis, but doesn't have his form. It's uh, it's really kind of over. Sven is good versus Mega Creeps, but 40 minutes into the game, this is a very unfavorable situation to be in. And there's a chance Legacy will just keep going. You know, you're five versus three. 
We don't have to go back. It might, like you said, maybe they'll be like, they could be Mega Creep Cupcat. We've seen it happen multiple times. Why would you take the risk? As, yeah, they're just going to continue the aggression. I like this from Legacy. End the game right now. Don't give them any more openings. Or any opening, sorry. Hounds, they're missing two of their heroes. They're in a five versus three scenario. The spells on the other side are going to be coming back up. You actually cannot fight. I mean, they're just running around. Look at Yuma. He's actually without an idea of what to do. He is th definitely thinking about it. And, oh, the Gale Force, he's, Yuma's dead. Oh, yeah. my, that's a GG. GG's he fault. needed to think harder, obviously, as, uh, I mean, they didn't have a choice at that point. The game was already over. Legacy, they take a game off. Now is the first game that they lost in this entire qualifier. And they, they lost in style. They kind of got demolished. It was a 40-minute game, but for the last 20, Legacy were looking unstoppable. And this is what we would wanted to see, right? We wanted to see a fast draft where you can just take the fight to the enemy side. They did that with the puck. Little Nick was also had a fantastic game with the Mars. And Fade, you know, it's a razor. If you give him a good start, he's going to make, make good with it. Now, they went for the hand of Midas on the Dragon Knight, and they took a couple of early fights and lost it. At that point, they were firmly in the back foot. And uh, just like what Legacy did, they didn't overextend. They played this very carefully. Very well played by them. Just very clean. Which you would think the other side would be doing more of. Yeah, I mean, Nouns were playing clean, but at like 15 minutes into the game, they took yeah. some fights that they should not have, mm -hmm. right? And that those were the mistakes. Because at the start of the game, you could see that both teams were moving perfectly, going around the map, and that, that one mistake from Nouns. But this is actually scary, because Legacy, they really didn't make that many mistakes. And I yeah. talked to you uh, about the main character arc. This is, uh, this is looking good for them. The trading arc has been paying off definitely for Legacy, as they take this the first game. It's the best of... Five, so there's a good chance that uh, Nas can come back from this, but it's a good start for Legacy after they beat down Grin. Now they come in and take game one convincingly, really good for their confidence. I hope they keep playing the same way. Yep, let's see if that's gonna be happening. Before that, we're gonna have to take a short 10 minute break, but then we'll be back with game number two.
What seemed impossible when this series started has happened, Otomo, and that is Legacy being ahead of Nows in this best of five grand finals. For those of you that are just joining, you're watching the ESB Elite League closed qualifiers in NA, and we are at the grand finals. The winner goes to the main tournament, the loser gets $5,714. I was about to say gold, but Otomo, I saw, I saw the chat. A lot of people, if not all of them, are wishing for Legacy to win, which is weird because Nows are a pretty lovable and loved team in general. Ten seconds. Five seconds left. Dyer's turn to pick. Dude, dude, I'm, uh, I'm cool with B and C. I'm super biased. I'm gonna try not to show it in my, uh, in my cast. But you already got your pom poms out. I don't know what. Uh, I heard you. I heard you laugh and smile and be super happy when nouns were losing, which isn't nice, Otomo. Ten seconds. Well, they're not equal. Nouns, I still see them as the favorites, but Legacy, man, if they continue with this role, their spell usage is so good and it feels so fun watching them do it, right? Their movements aren't always the cleanest, but they had a really clear idea what they needed to do in this game and then combine it with the spell usage that is on point is just beautiful. Yep. So... Mars on one side and CM on the other. So this time around, Nouns are going to be taking that away from Legacy. Well, Legacy will be getting the CM. That's a hero that has really brought them a lot of success. I mean, maybe even the hero that is the one kind of with, with the most, the biggest reason they're here is the CM. They've utilized it so well in all of their games. Okay. All right. Looks like my, my audio is back on, so it should be good. Okay. Okay, Automo is back. Automo is back. Did you did you hear while I was uh, explaining the CM in a nice way with a lot of vocabulary? This is why I need you, Automo. Ten You're the bookworm. Seconds. Yes, I am. I uh, I know I was hearing you the whole time because you know I was on Discord seconds, anyway, so it's all good. Okay. Okay. So how do you feel about the opening in general? Mars on one side, Crystal Maiden on the other. Legacy, you are not gonna have both this time around. Well, well, I like the Mars pick overall because we are seeing, you know, Mars is doing really well. He's great counts with like the Centaur and these high mobility heroes because he keeps you in the arena. We see a lot of teams either go for the Revenant's Brooch and to God's Review, kill people, or you go for a Refresher and you're just able to lock everyone down. So there's two really good options for that. Yep, so uh, they ban out the Kunkka. That's a solid one. If you start off the fight with the with the boat, the arena is just not going to be as scary because, of course, nobody's going to be taking all that much damage in it. On the other side, Legacy got rid of the tiny, so uh, that's uh, that's the one that you don't want to be playing against versus versus Lelis. Oh, actually, no, they uh, they got rid of the tiny in the first ban phase. I'm very sorry. I'm very very sorry, but I'm getting a kind of an important. Uh, like if you could just I'll be here I'll be back in a second overall though legacy they uh, need one more ban it is gonna be the faces void that they're gonna be getting rid of and getting themselves a life stealer have they played a life stealer I'm not sure my Ultimo is having some uh, some issues so I'm gonna be checking it myself it's uh it's always easy when you have a uh, a co-caster guys and then you just send them yo yo go go check that one while i speak now i have to do everything myself as uh no life stealer no life stealer they did play a life stealer versus not the cut that was uh, actually yesterday and uh well they obviously won 
Uh, they played the Lifestealer versus Tilted Boys. They won that game in just 22 minutes. And now are going to be picking up a Shadow Shaman. So that is something that we don't see too often. But I kind of feel like this hero is underrated. The extra damage that you take when you're hexed up, that's uh, that's pretty solid. Plus, you have a Mars to protect you. So if this is the double lane, it probably is. This Lifestealer is going to get punched in the face. So there will be a Terra Blade picked up as well. That is, in general, a Lifestealer counter, if it is a carry. But we've seen Lelis play this a couple of times in the tournament thus far. Uh, also, in some other tournaments, we have uh, seen a lot of Terra Blade as well. People are really picking up on this position 5 TB. Considering there's going to be a patch coming out soon, it's uh, probably going to be losing in favor. A bit. These things never persist, or very rarely persist and I uh, saw some of the uh, reddit posts talking about 2b people uh, he used to be called 2b savior of meta in Europe and he would play like a TB support uh, a troll support even when they were out of the meta right he also played a lot of elder titan from time to time so he was uh, he was a pretty fun guy and actually uh, sometimes very high ranked, but sometimes obviously he would he would drop super fast because sometimes those those heroes just don't work in the meta. As legacy, they uh, they are gonna be taking their time, but you need some magic damage, and this is the thing, right? Because if you target the Terror Blade right now with a lot of things. He is just going to be moved to support, and your uh, picks are going to go down the drain. On the other hand, if you don't, Terrorblade versus the Lifestealer is great, so th that's why this pick is so good. So you go for the Puck versus a Shadow Shaman, that's scary. Shadow Shaman's Hex, though, doesn't have that much range, but you usually go for the Interlands or the Blink. So this is a... Uh, this is going to be the first time that this uh, Red Puck is really going to be... Uh, going to be tested. I mean, he won versus a Dragonite in the mid lane, but it's nothing like the Shadow Shaman that has so much single target lockdown. And the TA comes out, so that's gonna be a mid lane versus the Puck. We all know that Copy can play this TA quite uh, quite well. It is also a very strong Yuma hero, so it might be a terribly TA lane, though. Whenever I say it, we just see Lelis picking the TB up and going away but still things very much open on the side of nouns i'm loving how they're drafting batrider is good don't get me wrong but uh the thing that legacy don't know what's going on in the draft that they've been countered their two main cores are countered by the possible two cores on the other side it really does make things very very scary at the moment but I guess a Lifestealer Radiance here helps with a lot of things, right? It doesn't solve your terribly problem, but it helps. And Radiance is pretty good versus the TA. She like, she hates missing. Plus, it helps you to go through the uh, Refraction Charges, which is something that the Lifestealer doesn't naturally do too well. There will be a Primal Beast ban. Not a lot of offlaners are left for Legacy to go for. So I'm kind of curious to uh, to see what they will be doing. Hello. Hello, Otomo. Are you back? Yes, I'm very sorry for that. Uh, my wife knows I'm casting, but it was something very important it's for our application for a visa. And it's like, you know, the embassy is like, give me these papers. They're like, prove it. Will you prove that you have them? So she's like, can you please send me a picture? So I apologize. Uh, it's unavoidable things that sometimes happen at the same time. Looking at the draft, are we? Do you feel the same way that's going to be Lilith's Terror Blade on this one? I don't know, because it is a good counter to the Life Stealer, right? So I think they're the only they know, right? Yeah. But I would be okay with a carry Terror Blade actually. And then I see a Shadow Shaman. I'd rather see a four Shadow Shaman than a same. five. But they, but Legacy is banning out carries. They ban out the Morphling, so they feel like it's going to be something Yuma plays. A reminder that there's also a puck in the pool, but I'm not liking puck against like life stealer. Uh, sorry, a, puck, a meepo against a life stealer and the puck. So we'll see about that. Now I am feeling they have the support duo, and I agree with your point. The shadow shaman as a fa as a four, he needs items. You know, you want the eighth lens, the blink, the uh, the shard. Even if you can get more than that, it's also really good. So not not because of that. I. I wouldn't want to lane the Shadow Shaman in the safe lane. It's hard in the safe lane to maneuver properly to get the right clicks in. 
Oh, I was like, that's the main guys. thing. I'm muted. I'm like, Five sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. But for Legacy, we're definitely looking at an offlaner. Although, I think Lil Nick does play a little bit of Batrider as a core. You know, it's more of a pop pick for him, to be fair. He doesn't play it a lot in the pro games as a core, but it is there as an option. Hmm, versus a TA, it actually might not be half bad. And, you know, imagine BNC picks up a puck and they send the Batrider wherever the TA is. That'll be cool. Right, for everyone who's, who's, who cares, the things I needed to do are solved. My wife says thank you. And also to all you guys for being patient with me, for being away. Anyway, um, that's irrelevant. Nouns, we're feeling like they might take their carry. We see Lifestealer being picked up here. Mm. Five seconds left. Is it? I mean, we did we we did talk about that Yuma plays a decent amount of TA, right? Yes. Yeah, so it could be a mid as well. I mean, that's what we're thinking. Is they but they ban out carries from Legacy, so they feel like it's going to be a carry coming out here for Nouns. Faceless Void is in the pool, although you don't have the best heroes to, to work with it. And they go, oh, okay, so they go for the Bane. It is going to be the carry Terrorblade in the end. We all got baited and positioned for a Shadow Shaman like you wanted. Yep. I mean, um, I don't know who we are, but um, I know one guy in this cast that didn't get baited, but sure, sure. Uh, I really like the Bane. G good save. Good uh, good catch for the puck, good follow-up. Great catch for the Lysler as well. So I'm, uh, I'm loving it. Also, you guys here, Otomo has a wife. So mm. there is hope for Dota players, right? To uh, to find a girl, to get married, right? So it's uh, it's not just an impossible dream. It is more than achievable. Yeah, but I met my wife, like, before Dota existed. You know what I mean? Like, what? Over, yeah, over 20 years ago. 20... It, and three, Dota existed back then? 23 years ago, all right? I, Dota they, existed back then. Did it? Well, that's crazy. All right, like I said, last pick, last pick. It has to be, we think they're off lane. What are they gonna be taking? You take the Magnus. I like the team fight. I like what he can give the the life stealer. Good infest target as well for little Nick. And yeah, I like the, I like the Magnus pick quite a lot from Legacy, especially if you can pair it up with the Bat Rider in the bottom lane. But still, it is Terrorblade versus Life Stealer, TA versus Puck, Shadow Shaman versus Puck. Mars versus Magnus as well. Mm. Some save for the last. So I think Nouns got all the tools here. Again, it, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Legacy have this potential to snowball. Their, their lineup is capable of it. And Lifestealer in the ultra, ultra, ultra late game can actually nowadays fight the Terrorblade. Yeah. I mean, even once you get the Radiance, you're kind of solid versus him, but you're still weaker. But you can kind of fight him later on. You know, a five-slotted Lifestealer, I, I think, is, is going to be untouchable. But you have a counter for him because there's a Fiend's Grip. So in general, mm. Nouns have got an edge. I don't know if I would say that um, at that big of an edge. I mean, one side you have you have BKB piercing abilities on the other with the uh, with the Bat Rider, with the Magnus, with the Puck Twenty Five. Like, there's a lot of things that Legacy can work with, and Yuma will take some time for the Tailor to be active. I don't know if you want to take Radiance on Life Stealer just because you mentioned it, right? Like the counter with the reflections is really good. I'm coming in the feeling like both teams have a decent draft overall. And I, I do like the Shadow Shaman, I do like all the lockdown, but they're also fairly squishy and you have a puck, so he can't catch. This is very much an open game when it comes to drafts. Good. Mm. Give, you, give us your prediction. Like, uh, I, you know that mm. whenever we cast, we have to be ultra manly here and course. never skip the questions, right? Mm -hmm. So just, just, just give me who's winning this one. As much as it pains me to say it, because I'm definitely not biased in any way, I do think now is... Game one was like, maybe, you know, maybe they're still cold. Maybe they're waking up. Whatever it is, I'm still favoring Nows in, in this series overall. And I believe the comeback begins in game two. What time is it in NA right now? Like, they're not just waking up. Of At course. least I hope not. It's probably like something like 7 p.m. there, or probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's pretty much morning for Dota players. Well, you know, we know how it is. Maybe they haven't played. They haven't, like, waking up to the game. As in, they haven't been playing, like competitive matches with their tournament lives on the line they're just they're just getting into the groove of things very true very true though you know eastern europeans mm. wake up very early very very early so you would have problems fighting games after like three but 3 a.m but at 
like uh, 6, 7 a.m., you would already be able to find pretty solid games in Eastern Europe. I never really had any problems finding games at any time. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm super high rank in Southeast Asia, but I've queued at like all hours of the day and you always find a game within like 10 minutes. There's way too many people in Southeast Asia. It, it doesn't count, right? It really yes. doesn't count. And we, we have been absorbing uh, players from China as well because they've been moving here as uh, Fly. It's a nice reward off. Decent start for them. Bouncy Ruins are going to be three and sorry. It's going to be 2-4-2, two two. so better start than the previous game where Nouns had, had three bounty ruins. Oh yeah, and uh, I mean, Legacy won that game, so now an even better start. Yep, mm -hmm. it's over, 2-0. 2, -0. 2 -0 in, the, in, the, in the Grand Finals. But, talk to me about this uh, mid lane. TA versus the Puck, we all know mm -hmm. that the TA wins. Yes. But, how much? Uh, decently well, just because you have so much extra damage from Refraction, all the harass coming out from... The uh, Lucio Orb is just like irrelevant to you. Puck doesn't do high instances of damage. He just does these like few very damaging attacks and PA loves that situation. Sorry, TA loves that situation. But early levels, it can go either way. But once the levels come in for the TA, she's going to be ahead. I say that overall slightly behind, but I it's fine. It'll be ahead eventually. Yeah, yeah but I mean... These first couple of waves, Red has really been crushing it overall. Even in the previous one, he got all four of the of the CS under the tower, which is hella impressive. Courier gonna be going down, and that's a big courier. Sure, a long courier, only one minute of the of the map, but uh, a pretty solid grab by BNC. He's continuing with his amazing plays, especially during the lanes. Yeah, that's all of Fly's region as well, like the Tango and the Salve. That's gonna be very annoying for Fly. Question comes out, just a little bit of harass here. This lane, I believe it should favor Legacy, but Fly could be a big X factor with it, with his sleeps and how just insanely durable the Bane is overall. So, I, I favor Legacy though, the top though. Well, we'll see if uh, if it does work out for them for now in terms of CS. Nouns are doing really well on every single one of the lanes. Of course, it's just the first couple of waves and that yep. uh, that might just change. It's the Mars that is pushed, that is pulling on the bottom lane. Nice cure back, flying some trouble. He doesn't have no fairy far as BNC has to run away. That metamorphosis is way too threatening. So uh, you just better decide not to fight this big demon. I mean, meta plus reflections, why we can even consider this here as a sport. He gets such a big bonus out of it. Although Yuma, is he too far? Problem is BNC is only level 1, so he can't really do too much. Ooh, let's go for that fight. Yeah, they just get the kill. Lilnik is also going to be in trouble. You skewered this guy, and he just show you who, showed you who's boss. Magnus, he has the Wraith Band and the... Uh, uh, and you know these branches so his stats are quite nice we'll be able to survive but that top lane is not going well for legacy so that's first blood for you and doubling the cs of his opponent so very nice start for now and a big part of it is because bnc is just not level two he can't really firefly or do anything to help his his friends up and i thought that when he skewed it that metas was about to end but no there was like a good you know 15 seconds left of the meta so good that he could skewer them twice but they just weren't ready for those kills and uh, wow, look at the CS on nouns, baby. Ah, it's looking beautiful. But again, we're not seeing many kills. I mean, it's only three minutes in, but if we're guided by what happened in the previous game, 10 minutes in, we're gonna have like three, four kills. And that is a lot less than what we have been used to in this in this qualifier thus far. And to be fair, even if they're a little bit behind on Legacy, you always have the Magnus RP to, you know, like as a big equalizer. So it's not the biggest deal. We know the middle is going to go in favor of the TS. He starts to slowly pull ahead here. Right. I mean, that's that's, TA, that's right? just what we expect. Yeah, once you get uh, level two in refractions, it becomes very hard for the puck. There will be a glyph being used. Copy doesn't even want to allow him to get that one range creep. Stacks might be an interesting aspect of this game. Both teams have great stack takers. Well, slightly better for the TA for sure. But if you make stacks, you really have to defend them. Make sure you don't like fight in that area, lose, and then the enemy team comes and takes us. Fly is being burned alive, but again, BNC only level two. He's always a level behind. That's what's costing him. Yep, the uh, the stats of the Bane, they're not what they used to be, but they're still pretty high. So you can't really fight him all that easily. No, you can't. As a B yeah, the top lane, just because BNC is struggling, that means the Magnus is also not having the best time that's why and they gave away first blood it's still it's not a catastrophe now it's just a thousand gold ahead in four minutes but it's not a good look either 
Yep. It was a much better laning stage in the uh, previous game, but overall, uh, they are still in there. They're not getting crushed. They're not getting smashed. They're playing their lane still. Yep. As Bat Rider gets slapped, Meta comes out. Reflection is there. Nice flame breaks push him away, but it might not be enough. Yep. Will be uh, able to survive there on the bat. Had the healing Lotus to play with and didn't even get forced to use it. Has the healing salve. Will be able to continue fighting in this lane, especially once the meta goes down. It's a lot on red. Red has got to be able to fix those lanes once he reaches level six. He's not far from me. He's five and a half right now. He's doing well in terms of, e of experience. But once he hits six, hey, look at that. Mm, they're going for Yuma. Yuma is looking pretty much dead. Him. He has the five stake charges. It's not going to be enough. Fly gets a return kill. No, actually, it was Yuma who posts more than with his dying attack. Gets the punch in and knocks out little Nick, but he won't be getting any experience for it. So, again, it is a slight win for Legacy. Early game levels are way more important than goals. So that's actually a nice thing. Lilith he's going, he gets grabbed, but maybe, maybe he grabbed the wrong guy here. They're going for it. Ah, the puck is coming over as well. He doesn't have level 6, but he definitely wants these kills. Lelis, dropping low. The slows are there from Fade. Needs a couple of more hits. This is a speedy Shadow Shaman, which we don't see too often, but went for both the lace and the uh, boots. And this rotation from Red, completely kind of uh, unneeded. And uh, he just needs to get back to the mid lane as fast as possible. Also, I was looking at the same. I was like, this is not slowing him like I'm used to, right? You see Lifester hit someone, but Lifester also doesn't have the Orb of Corrosion as a top lane. Looks like uh, is he gonna be fine? Yeah, he's fine, especially with Bingus coming over. This is, uh, no, Lil Nick is gonna have the skewer. Needs to get behind the trees. He's actually gonna be skewering. Lelis into the tower. Was that a good choice? Maybe you sh could, should have just ran away. He's actually gonna be BNC. surviving. And oh, there's the brain sap that finishes him off. BNC coming forward. Lelis standing his ground. Him and Fly they have so much right clicks between the two of them and will be protecting their carry. That was very ballsy. He could have, okay, Lil Nick could have escaped, but he went for the for the high risk, high reward play. I like it. Even if it didn't work, that was still a very cool to, thing to watch. The problem is that they didn't have BNC there earlier. I, mean, I don't know if his TP was not available or he was just like, it's more efficient for me to walk there. In the end, Yuma, he survives and they do get a kill on Lil Nick. Still, in terms of net worth, there's not that big of a difference in mo among most of the cores. This offlaners have like, what, 300? It's not that huge of a deal. Yeah, it's like two, 300 between all of the uh, counterparts in various positions. And then you have BNC who is head of all of the supports, just uh, then getting close to equalizing this... Uh, <laughs> This gold at the moment, only a slight like 1k gold lead for now at the moment. This little lick, secure away. There will be a hex, shackles as well. Nice sleep. Immediately woken up, and uh, BNC is gonna take a beating as well here if he's not careful. They freeze, they burn, but Fly will still live. The big thing about the top lane is that honestly, as a support. Shadow Shaman is probably the best person to have among the all four supports in this early game. You know, Hex and Shackles. If he Shackles, he heals himself, so he's hard to bring down. Like, and he's not as fragile as like the Crystal Maiden. So Lilas is doing a lot of work for his team, as well as securing them a nice shield ruin, which, nope, gets denied. Yep, he could have picked it up for himself. Though, yeah, when I look at the two supports on the Legacy side, they have nothing to stop the Shackles, and that yep. is a problem, right? You are three heroes on the top lane, he gets the Shackles on the Magnus, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Fade, he's like, D I dare you to... Oh, top, bottom mid lane. Yeah, they're going for copy, he's just standing his ground and fighting. The supports, again, stronger on the noun side. They get the Hex on the Crystal Maiden. This time around, Legacy got ahead of themselves. Minus Armor there, one more hit on Pingus. He does get the Frostbite off. That trap damage isn't going to be enough as he didn't have time to set, but that one did, and Pingus is going to be taken down. All right, traps shouldn't do that much damage. I'm sorry, but the slow, was the slow of the vision not enough that Icefrog was like, you yeah, know, this, this lacks damage. Let's give it a little bit of it. And uh, we are seeing now start to really pull ahead now. Zillis also gets a good stack off for his team. This is scary. Like 3,009 minutes, that is a big deal, actually. Ah, they got mad. They got mad after the previous loss for a good reason. Like, how dare you beat us? We are the gods of this NA closed qualifier. Though, uh, Legacy, they're still not out of it just yet. Nine minutes in, a lot can still happen. Oh, for sure, for sure. Like, there's a, there's plenty of games to still be played. It's just that you also know Lil Nick is going now for the Blink Dagger. He still needs about 2,000 gold to get, so he's going to be a bit of way off to go for it. 
What is what's fade building on the life stealer? He just got an extended armlet, nothing crazy. Yeah. The while you're talking about him, he's just running down gunner, being hella annoying with a ghoul frenzy. Has a skill point ready to use for rage or infest, depending on what he needs to escape if it does come down to it. But with the rotation of the supports, you get the hex and the shackle, and you might be able to kill him. He doesn't. By the way, he's, he doesn't have a point in ulti or rage. We'll have to pick one of them very soon. Has a skill point. Yeah. Ah, there's the fiend's grip. That's how they started it off. He's not getting out of this one alive for sure, especially with the terror blade coming from the side. They combo their silence perfectly. Don't overlap anything. And Gunner finishes him off. Yuma is here to push as well as they do pause. Hopefully, it's not a BM pause. Uh, or it is a BM pause. We don't care either way. As yep, it's a mouse problem. We've been saying it like the noun support in the first five levels are incredibly useful. Even when they when you go ultimates, like their ultimates are, I'd say generally a little bit more useful. Yes, lasso is great, but freezing field tends to be cancelled within half a second. So they've they've been winning this on the back of fly nonetheless, hundred percent. Looking uh, looking pretty good for them. And a uh, 3k gold lead at the moment, and the tower on the bottom lane will get pressured as well as Red is coming over. Lelis is gonna get coiled, gets the hex off, not breaking the coil, wants to get the shackle off onto the puck, won't be able to do so just yet, and he dies before getting anything done. Puck just runs away, slowed down by the trap, but he will be able to escape. Red needs to do so much of this. There are easy targets for him to go for. Lilith, Yuma. Fly, they're, they're like, these aren't the highest health heroes. He should be able to get kills on them. It's just, it's so much weight. You know, your Magnus wants a wants a blink dagger, so he just doesn't want to be active right now on little Nick. Nice deny on the tower. At least you are getting that gold away from nouns. You don't want to be giving them anything more. But the map will get open, and that is a life stealer tower that was taken down, plus the puck tower as well. And the life stealer wants to stay in the lane as long as possible. I feel like one by one, the things that the uh, radiant lineup is supposed to accomplish are just not uh, not working out. Yeah, to be fair, a lot of it is hard to accomplish, right? Like mid lane is going to go tough for you because it's big mismatch. Top lane, they kind of suffered because of the three, you know, the tri lane versus tri lane, which is better for nouns. And bomb lane fate did not go for the orb of corrosion. Oh dear, we talked about this. We did say that you know stacks are going to be very risky for you to make this game. And he got the AD rune as well. We'll be taking it down with ease. Goodbye, Stacks. He's gonna be leaving oh, one no. just for good measure. Yeah, just remember you had a stack there. Now you have nothing. Sleep taken by the uh, CM. That's a bit too deep from Lelis. We'll lose his life because it he actually That's cancels well. the... Uh, the freezing field, and now they're turning around. Lelis will leave the arena, meaning that he's not gonna die. Actually, Lele coming from the other side, but you're just slaughtering everybody inside of it. A huge arena gets three kills. In favor of Nows, after they've just stolen a stack, everything is going their way. I would love to see a replay of that, because I can't imagine how Lilith survived. They just kind of ignored him. They're like, all right, he seems dead. I'm like, no, he's not dead. You know, he's shackling, he's fine. He throws off the snakes in the end as well. Sure, he dies, but he trades his life for for the most, probably the most important heroes on the, on the Radiant side, the puck and the supports. What a interesting turn of events. Yep, the second he got the shackles off, and it, it was the second that you knew that it's gonna take a little bit longer to take him yeah. down. They didn't actually have their spells, that's the idea, right? Puck and the CM use their spells, and then you need to wait for another round. In that downtime, you really don't do any damage. It is scary. Now is at 85% win rate. In the previous game, they were 75 at this point as well, but that didn't feel as, as dominant as this in this particular game. However, Lil Nick does have the Blink Dagger. So now we might be able to see some good plays with that. If you can coil two people, RP, break the coil with the skewer, that could work out for you. Uh, the thing is he doesn't have his tier 1 in the mid lane and tier 1 in the bottom lane. So we're actually going to be able to make these plays with the blink. It's only if nouns overextend and I kind of feel like they're not going to be doing it. Plus, there's so many traps around. Lelis goes for the shackles and just a couple of hits of the TA will finish him off. Double coil. Breaks it there. And actually, an RP onto the three of them. That's what he's going to be doing with the blade. Getting them into tier two. They use the glyph as well so that everybody gets the ballers. Oh. He heroes. Bye-bye. Feels good to be this good. PPD. <laughs> He might be invested in nouns, but uh, Legacy, they're using his words to hype themselves up.
That was exactly what we were saying should happen, right? We're like, he has it. Uh, you were you were doubting. You're saying they all they, they have to overextend. And now, I, I know they overextended. I yes, the, you, you don't respect legacy like that again. As now they that was a huge move. They cut the network deficit by half, and they bring down multiple field phase. Okay, BNC, is he going to be fine? He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He's flying away. Fade is going to go for the Radiance in this game. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but it will what give them that. What would you want him to go for? Like, you're dealing with two heavy right clickers? True. It's just that when you get ref you know, the reflection charges on you, or sorry, the yeah, reflection illusions, it's not the best. So it's kind of like it's good against them, but it also hurts you as well. I mean, and they're asking what, what I would, I would prefer. He goes for. I don't mind if he goes for like this, this Osanji and Yasha kind of build either. I mean, you know, you are up against a team that has a lot of disables, so the, so the Sanj does work really effectively. S and Y, I like. S and Y, I like. Though actually, I'd rather see Halberd. I think this is a Halberd game. You go Radius, Albert's you go Halberd. Yeah, I don't that's care. As long do. as you, you build something with Sanj, that's all I care about. I don't care if it's a Halberd or a, or a Sanj and, y and Yasha. You, there's just too many stunts and you, that would help you. Maybe even a BKB on top of it, honestly. With that, I there's agree. No, with... There's no silences, though. Unless Copy's going for the shard, he does get the shard on Copy. I was, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the, well, like I said, the better TAs go for this because the silence is super good. So the bad TAs don't buy it? Uh, no, I'm just saying the best TAs buy it. That's not, that, that's not what I said. I said. The best he is get it. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, RP, infested little lick. It's gonna be the lights that are coming out after the um, the skewer. I like this. A lot of light stealers, they see the RP, they instantly come out. Fade waited for little Nick to move him, and then he got out of him. Right, and you skewer him away. You're like, no, bring him back here. I'm hungry. Uh, good kill for them. And little Nick has been MVP right now. In this game, just that three-man RP breaking the coil with it, looking really good. So he's very, very firmly re recovered. However, Copy and Umar still have a farmed as poor little Nick. Eh, mm -hmm. I, I think he's this. fine actually with the lasso, the terror blade. Maybe just pull him away, BNC. Not the way that this guy is running. As they have the shackle, here comes Copy as the arcane rune. They're gonna make short work of uh, one of the heroes, and little Nick will ultimately fall. It took a long time, but he does die. And so it favors now. And by the way, they are on the dire side. I wonder if they want to. Sorry, like Roshan's on the dire side. I wonder if they're thinking about it. But it seems like everyone just sort of walks in different directions. And nah, it's not happening. Until you get the death, so it just takes too long, probably. Agreed. Even with the melt strike. Fade. I was gonna be, uh, he buys the first. Sorry, the sacred relic. Should have the radius without an answer to. Wow, that was way off on the spear. Yeah, but I'm actually surprised Fade didn't go for the Rage. I don't know if he saw it, it was gonna miss and just decided not to do it, or if he was just super slow and then after it he uh, he decided, okay, now I don't really need it. He's like, I played pubs with Gunner. I know he's not landing that spear, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll show you how much I believe in it. Ooh, the Gunner crushes it with the spear sometimes. If he, had play, if he has played pubs with or against him, then he would just be having his finger on the Q all the time. All right, so then we're going with the other one. That fade is a little slow on pressing the Q. Yeah, somebody has to suck, right? <laughs> it's just, just how it goes. As right now, BNC. Oh, they're doing the sucky sucky on him. Shackles comes out, and they do kill him again. It's not the worst thing in the world for Legacy that a bad guy is off the field, but you would like him to help make you space for your team. It's like your big playmakers are the mags and the puck, though. As long as they're alive, it's still a bit scary for now. The problem is he is very underfarmed as a Batrider. This is a hero that yeah. needs farm, right? Without your blink, you're nothing. Yeah. It is, that's actually a big problem for them. In that that aspect, like fly on a Bane has more net worth than a Batrider position four. Like that should not happen. Ah, definitely not. And the Crystal Maiden later on in this game is really not going to be that big of a deal. It is going for the shard. Yeah. Helps you farm a lot. So there, there's some value in the shard in that aspect as well. As top lane, little Nick. BNC breaks the smoke, but he's going to be paying for, paying for it with his life. Classic BNC. 
<laughs> Otomo, Otomo is in savage mode this evening. I don't know what, what's happening. Like, uh, double personality coming out. Usually it's nice, Otomo. Ha ha. Everybody's cool. Everything is fine. But then savage Otomo, I like a lot more. Much more entertaining to me. Hey, hey, I'm not being mean to him. I mean, BNC is doing what he needs to do. He's dying to make space for the team. It's better if BNC dies in Little Nick. Sure. Well, BNC may not feel good about it, but he is doing sort of the right things with breaking the smoke. Sure, sure. I, I understand it. When somebody dies, you just say classic, insert name, and you, you didn't mean anything bad. Oh, yeah. Classic space created. Little Nick, we died for you. BNC gave his life. Oh, Little Nick. Just had to go for the extra creep wave. Uh, you mean classic Lil Nick. Yeah. No, no, yes. Lil, 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 Lil Nick got the good RP, so I like him till the end of the game. <laughs> okay, okay. As they get the call onto the DA, we'll be breaking that immediately, but the slows are insane from the traps. They just can't get on top of her. Copy will be fine. Now he's deciding to turn it around as his teammates are coming oh, over. Yeah. Lelis gets the hex onto the puck. Here comes the cause we All three of them, they got the puck. He's gonna be dying, or will he get the silence off before he kicks the bucket? They have the fiend script. No, nothing to stop it. Waiting there for the infest. BNC isn't close enough. They got the silence. BNC next on the menu. Dies to the spear of Gunner and now's only lose one plus they're gonna be stealing your tormentor it's amazing the many things that had to happen for that fight to go that to go as amazingly as it did firstly they killed an unlike in the top one so it wasn't available to RP and secondly because BSC has been dying so much classic he doesn't have the blink dagger in time to actually jump and catch the TA so if the slow comes out he can't blink the fight takes too long and the backup announce shows up like all these Dota's he made, doesn't made even have a blink decisions. Yeah, exactly. That's why I say he didn't have the blink. If he had, he could have blinked and caught him. Yep. But because he's been dying so much, he's so poor, he doesn't have the blink dagger. Like, there are thousand decisions leading to whether you win or lose the game. And there's been a you know, billion good things going for Nouns. And not that many or not even close to a, a good number going for, for Legacy in this uh, in this game too. So now yep. on a good trajectory to equalize the series, but it is still not over. What kind of things need to happen here, Otomo? BNC is going to be getting his blink in just 200 gold. Is that the uh, thing that changes the game? I don't think that gives you a team fight, but if you can get two pickoffs on it, like on human copy, you're, you're in a good spot. You can recover easily after that. Now they are smoking up. So it's a ten, so a nine-man smoke here. You, you'd be, you'd be happy to kill Yuma. You'd be happy to get a team fight without him. That's what you want for, for a legacy here. All right. They know that someone's nearby. Oh, they found him. They got him. Oh, and now he see. got out earlier. And now getting out of the arena, they're pulling him in. The sleep is there. Might allow him for a sunder. Yuma will be able Good to thunder. do it onto his own teammate. And, uh, no, actually, it was on Pingus as uh, the God's Review gets them away from Lelis. They don't want to allow him to die. Lelis saying, guys, you're always allowing them to kill me. Not this time around. Five-man wipe with you making the move. The second that Yuma got the Sunder off, it was pretty apparent what was going to happen. Uh, they, by the way, the worst thing happened. The thing that we talked about earlier, which is that he jumps the moment the RP lands. And they skewer him away. So he's yep. forced to run after. And he doesn't able to get the kill. Great move by Fly. Giving that one second of sleep was amazing. And you know, we saw the Sunder come out. And Pingus suddenly you, the kill that was sort of almost guaranteed. Because of a couple of mess ups. It doesn't happen. Why do we blame? Do we blame the Lifesteal for leaving early or the Skewer for coming out? No, we blame Nouns for being too good. That's what we do. Right? Mm, I like that. So that I don't think he, they would have killed him anyways. Also, there's an MKB on the TA. I don't know if you know this, but she's really packing a punch. She doesn't care about the Radiance any longer at all. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, you know, you're up against Radiance, you, you want to build it. I don't know if, if Yuma will go for it as well, but eh, just one person's good enough. And now, okay, BNC he is going to be losing his life. A little bit unfortunate. Lilith has been on point with his catch with this Shadow Shaman. I, I was listening to what you were talking about when you say this hero is a little underrated. I completely agree. I, see, I still think he's better than Lion. But oh, what a fiend's grip. A perfect one. There will be a follow-up Spears. You're not getting out of this stun whatsoever. There were also traps there ready to stun him as well as they get the hex. And they're going for him. Is this going to be a solo kill? He does have the face boost. He can definitely leave if he wants to. Gets enfeebled after the rage. And Fade will be be able to run away he, he just did like 60% of the lifestealer's health by jumping on him dude Lilith is 
is a madman. He's going for BKB as well, recognizing that apart from the lasso, nothing else actually like bothers him. RP, so, RP. Oh yes, yeah, RP. My bad, my bad. It doesn't matter still. If you use that just to break the shackle, it is it is a win either way. And you don't want this puck to just be running around you and uh, and stopping you. Plus, you know, you can catch the Magnus. It's not, it's not like the Batrider will be able to jump on you. Pingus is looking very much dead. He uh, does get the frostbite on all of them, but now he's going to be inside of a nightmare and he will never wake up from it. He, I think he may have gotten mo almost more gold from the bounty than he gave away when he died. So... Not the worst deal in the world. Plus, you force them back a little bit from your base. But damn, look at this gold! Like mounds. I don't know what they were doing in game one, but they clearly should do more of it in game two. Whatever they're doing in game two. Lulus turns around, they're gonna get the Yules on the puck, Spear as well, you can't even get your lasso off. BNC is not having a game whatsoever. Wow! You know, like what dominance, what a turnaround, what a, just nouns, amazing, honestly, the, the way they would, like, you see the way they can, Lilith can jump and he gets saved with by gutter, where they bring that, make sure the puck can't do any spells, they get a full shackle off every time, basically, it's, it's impressive. Also, impressive. the reaction time there was pretty solid, but BNC, I think he had the time to go for the lasso. There was some turn rate there on the on the Shadow Shaman that he went for as Fade. Gonna get slept. They have a follow-up spear. Copies in the vicinity. You need to use the Fiend's Grip. I don't know how few people forget about that, but doesn't matter. Even after the spear does not connect, as it first does damage, then it stuns you, so you can always rage it off. But... Uh, that's uh, that's pretty huge. Still, they got him. The supports on now are out of their mind this game. Like it's, it's very impressive. And little Nick, is he gonna be jumping? Look at the Do you see that? I just didn't understand the language that you were. Uh, oh, that you were was... talking there for a second, but uh, that that's a nice kill again. That is me just bowing down to Lilith and his absolute mastery of the Shadow Shaman. As this is. A slaughter right now. Can we get an 18 plus on the screen right now, please? Because uh, this uh, shouldn't be watched by miners 100%. In NA, in USA, that's uh, 21. But I'm gonna say driving age, so 16 in the US. Because of the violence, plus. right? Because of the violence. Wink, wink. Yep, exactly. Yes, because of how, because of how violently Nouns is killing them. Sure. Uh, also, Butterfly is being delivered to the Terrorblade, so good luck doing anything to him. Legacy, they still think they can fight this one, but this game looks very much over to me. You have a better carry matchup, you have a better mid matchup, you are almost at 1k gold per minute, pre-30 minutes in a game. It's just not something that you can win. They could always, if Magnus is able to go and skewer people, we've seen comebacks like this before. With the Magnus, you jump in, you RP, you skewer with the one guy that you kill him, and you do that a couple of times to, like, you know, uh, reduce the net worth dif difference, and then you're okay. I don't know if that's actually going to be happening this one, though. Little Nick, he's going for the harpoon, but he is a long way off from that. Man, we were so excited when uh, <laughs> when Legacy were winning pretty much in the same way with no chances from Nouns. And now we're like, Nouns are winning. This sucks, bruh. It was so expected. <laughs> I know, we're so, we're so bad. <laughs> Look, no, we, we, we are... I'm, ha I'm happy for, uh, for Nouns. I'm, uh, if they win this, I'm happy for Legacy if they win this, you know? I'm a big fan of... I'm quite a big fan of Lilith, I must say. Uh, it's it's always nice cheering for the underdog. It feels so cool when they win, and the games always feel more exciting. But now yes. they're making it uh, look easy this time around, especially Lulus. And in the previous game, even when his team was losing, Lulus was doing a lot of damage with his hoodwing. So definitely on point today. He was actually turning off the the radius. Okay, he turns back on on fade. Now as they're respecting the high ground, they say if we go out position. We could lose, so instead they're just farming all over the map, getting what they can. Lil Nick actually steals the enemy wisdom rune, so one nice thing about the change to the map and it being bigger is that there is more opportunity to get some farm, even when you shut down your base. Like, someone can go out and do something. In general, how do you... it has been a year or more since the map was changed. Are you, are you happy with the change in general, that it's bigger? 
Yes, bigger is better. Because we're old, oh, little Nick. He just he knows that they're coming. I, I like that the map is bigger. I feel like it gives you more options to play. It does change the dynamic of some heroes, right? Like, teleporting is kind of more useful because there's so much more area to cover. And I think that's one of the reasons why MP has been looking a bit better. Nice courier hunting by little Nick. And a TP out. Okay. He activated boss mode for a second. Uh, that boss mode could have been cancelled by a hex from Lelis very easily, so she should be very happy that he found a little spot to hide that, that in Dota. Somehow, a big fat... He's a mammoth right now, not a rhinoceros. He can hide behind one one narrow tree and actually not be spotted. He's a magnet car, whatever the hell that is. No, 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 he has the uh, mammoth... Uh, like the... Um... The mammoth skin when she doesn't have one horn. Oh, okay. All right. I just don't remember. I just don't remember many mammoths with arms. You know, my bad. Okay, sure. If you remember mammoths, I know you're old, Otomo, but I didn't know you were that old. Sure. I read from like the movie Ice Age. Good movie, by the way. First one's good, and it kind of goes downhill a bit after that. Anyway, they just they smoke up for like you see they can't find anyone. Which is a little unfortunate. They haven't lost any barracks. And the net worth, if you look at it, has not been decreasing, but now I'm going to do something about that right now. Hex. Pop shot, shot, they go for the arena onto the two of them. The silence will be there. He did use the uh, clone as well. Instantly, they canceled the freezing field. Killed the CM, killed the wards as well. A courier fl fly there for some reason. And the, the gem, I think there, there was a gem on BNC, so that also gets transferred to now side. Now you have oh, so that's why they were sending the courier to uh, to pick up the gem. And now you have to defend high ground without your support. You, Lil Nick is all the way in the top lane, and I think he's yeah he has the tower now. He's probably going to TP back to defend his base. But uh, I mean, you really you would like to have your support. They don't provide a whole ton of damage, but they do provide control. Look at the greed, they're actually pushing two lanes and uh, one uh, range racks falls in the mid lane, one melee racks in the top lane, they're still continuing to go for everything else. Copy, without the Deso he's not really that great at uh, dealing with the, uh, uh, with structures, but uh, he can, uh, he can definitely hurt these heroes. I'm surprised Fade was completely uninterested in helping his team, he is very close to the MKB but decides to TP out rather than buying the Demon's Edge. So, they like you said, they're putting they're putting all putting it all on the line for like one big team fight. You know, it's like let's just get all these items that we need. We'll sacrifice two raxes. We don't care. It's all in on this one play that we're gonna make. Oh, and they are smoking mm -hmm. towards the top lane where nobody's at. The Roche is actually on the bottom part of the map. I. I mean, you have to go through the twin gates right now. You pretty much know what's gonna be happening. You let the Roche go and you're lost. Are for enemies. I think I think they're just gonna let it go. Honestly, maybe the maybe but how do you win then? You you try to kill the guy who doesn't have the Aegis and hope for the best. I think look at that. For the other side, they're waiting for something to show up anywhere on the map, but they do not want to go near Roshan. It's just so damn scary. Even though you're the one with RP and freezing kill and coil, which you think is like you know, auto Roshan winners. Uh, with a 30k gold deficit, there is no auto win. There's only auto win for, for nouns here. If they let go of their keyboards, there's a good chance that their heroes would be able to fight off the enemies. This TA has a nullifier. This is a build that I haven't seen. I mean, people have been experimenting with the TA builds. I don't know if you know Mickey, him going for a uh, Maelstrom yeah. as his first item. Pretty uh -huh. cool, but uh, this, is, uh, this is something new to me. I have heard of the name Mickey once or twice before, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know him. You know what I mean. You know, I know what, what you I mean. meant, Otomo. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. I know you do. Oh, that doesn't banner. matter. doesn't matter. Yep, the, the banner planted. is there. All right. The swole creeps are here. It feels like they move slower when they get bigger somehow because they keep the same movement speed, but uh, they're such big news. Oh, they see Yuma, but not the guy you want. Anyone but Yuma has the smoke. Actually, I think Red actually hit him and breaks the smoke. 
Ah, well, but uh, Yuma running forward. He has an orchid. He's ready to silence the puck. He's ready to silence his enemies by ripping their tongues out. That's pretty much what he wants. And the smoke is coming through. You want to kill anyone else? Wants to engage. Gunner, he broke their smoke. Has a Wind Waker as well. He's going to be flying himself away. As Yuma, when he postures aggressively, you don't do anything. Low mix. He is trying to find somebody and they're just letting it go. You know, uh, guys, defense of the ancients and your base is helping you in that. They're just letting Yuma get away with whatever he wants. Just like Yuma was lost in the previous game, now they're oh lost versus him. He's just gonna be killing this battery who does have a buyback under in the other side of the fight. Pops the BKB and there's the spear onto the puck. Got silenced by the trap. Double buybacks will be used. They just get destroyed by Yuma. And there's the arena keeping them all in for this terror blade to demolish them and annihilate them. The only thing that is left from them are teeth on the ground. We get him into the fountain, he gets the silence off, but gonna be caught there inside of the fountain and brought down. There's also gonna be a crystal clone, so he might get caught again. Buys the Ghost Scepter, however, so that's gonna be nicely done. Make sure he's gonna be fine, but they use the what? RP and get him in. Thunder, not available. That's gonna be a dead Yuma. The problem is that you're losing tier fours, and that's not the only hero that you have to deal with. It will bring down Lilith, who's definitely the MVP of this game thus far, and of course, Fly will follow. You don't have any more tier fours, but you're still in the game. You are in the game, but yeah, as you mentioned, you have no structures, and it takes the tower, sorry, the fountain, hitting Yuma to, for you to win these fights. So now this is an amazing spot. Can Legacy somehow push all the way to the enemy side? They have to go through at least one tower in the top lane, two towers and all the others to even reach the, the high ground. Yes. Oh, we're playing make-believe. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, they Fantasy. might be able to do it. There's gonna be a Wind Waker. Magnus trying to get out of this one alive, but the Mel Strike will finish him off. That's gonna give a slight advantage to Nouns at the moment. Uh, am I good? Am I good? Tiny bit, you know, you're not quite on my level, but one day if you practice hard, you will be. Well, I will try, I will try, Sensei. You have to, you have to really be a little kind of delusional, you know, to be like, yeah, it's an even game in some way. It's not really an even game in... Chaz, what's the chance of a comeback? Can we see the graph? Can we tell... Is it... Does it have 1% on Legacy or is it the zero? I'm gonna tell you. It is a big fat zero. It is. When you said big fat, I knew it was gonna be the zero because it's such a fat number. You, know, you look at the one, it's so thin, but the zero is like big and beefy, which is ironic because it means nothing. You know... We look like number ten when you stay next when you stand next to me. You know the uh, <laughs> the song from Bo Burnham. Uh huh. No, I don't know that song. Oh boy! Like, yeah, you... Uh, do you know who Bo Burnham is? No. Um, like you have, you see, you have these interesting. Like, how about can you can you like you know who Taylor Swift is? I'm like that's my level of uh, of media consumption. You're like, oh yeah, and her best friend. Rihanna? Is that her name? Right? That's, that's Are they going. friends? I don't know. Are they I mean, friends? Like, like, that's my level of knowledge and artists. Okay, cool, cool. As there will be a BKB on the terrible, he doesn't want to get skewered into the fountain any longer. The fountain wasn't fun. They have a glyph on Legacy, so they have seven seconds to buy for themselves, even if Nouns do go for the throne. They're trying to find an opening. Smoke breaks. Gunner doesn't find anybody other than a sentry ward. Getting rid of those is quite nice because then the traps are going to be that much more powerful. And uh, there's a power on the life, so it's going to hit level 20 soon. Can they. Can they screw someone in? Yuma just turns on his metamorphosis. It's a bit hard to catch. Oh dear. BNC got caught. No buyback. 46 seconds on the sidelines. Might be the, his last breath in this game too as Fade. Popping the rage, going forward. You must stand his ground. RP will be used. Throne dropping low. You still have the. You don't have the glyph actually. So uh, they can just they take it down if they want to. But first, they're going to be dealing with the heroes. Buyback from the life stealer does absolutely nothing as his throne no longer exists. Massive snowball by now, honestly. Like, they just did really well in the lane stage. We're seeing like 10 minutes, they had three or 4,000 gold lead. And from there on, they just never lost a single fight. The Magnus takes. It was taking a bit too long to get online. You know, you, you want to go for this first item blink dagger, but he wasn't able to join these fights. There was one time when they had a really good engagement. You're like, we could see the combo. It's just, they were never able to pull it off. And I think a lot of it came from them being a bit too eager. How many times at the top lane do we see BNC sort of go forward? I'm going to get a kill. And then he loses his life. Like they gave away first blood because of that. So 
the, the it's like the off lane was the bigger was the biggest issue for legacy this one yeah you, you told me like uh i prefer legacies double uh double lane to the safe lane of nouns mm -hmm. and then i don't think 30 or 40 seconds passed they both died mm -hmm. so that's that's that was really painful because if you see a lane that can win or should win mm -hmm. and then they lose because they got ahead of themselves they really thought that they could kill the terror blade and got punished because of it then that can really hurt you in the uh, continuation of the game but I'm... we do have a series right it, it's 1-1 mm -hmm. automo it is 1-1 and i remember now right because bnc was level one and everyone else was level two and he's trying to make plays with the flame break but he doesn't have the firefly and it's like oh it's not the time for it but they were very impatient with that However, on the other side, Lilith and Fly were incredible. Uh, particularly Lilith. I feel like every time I'm seeing he's jumping on someone. It's amazing. I will, this is the guy you should study if you want to play Shadow Shaman. Confidence is good, but uh, this time around, Legacy were overconfident and Nouns being a great team that they are. They punished it. They punished it hell pretty, uh, pretty well. And, uh, well, there was almost no chance for Legacy to, uh, to win this game. So now we are at a 1-1 situation. It's still a best of five. So whoever wins or loses the next game, it matters. But it is not going to be ending this qualifier. For now, we're going to be taking a short break, allowing the players to rest, and then coming back in just a couple of minutes.
and welcome back everybody to the closed qualifiers of the elite league we are currently in north america watching the best of five grand finals 1-1 is the current score between nouns and legacy i'm harry joining me is Otomo, and we are bringing you the action of these two great teams who are fighting for that one spot that na closed qualifiers has in the main tournament Otomo, it's 1-1 yep is it anybody's game or are you still very much favoring nouns. Uh, pretty much strongly favoring nouns. We'll see if Legacy can come up with a good uh, with a good laning stage. They start off good. I like it. That is BNC is tiny. He's made some magic happen with it. Good opening for them. They are skipping the off lane pick and just going for the tiny. So this is nice. And hopefully they can like BNC can get some magic in because when he do, plays well, he looks great. The whole team looks good. But when he has a bad game, the whole great team crumbles. BNC is just a big playmaker for their, for their side. I'm liking that the Mars got banned out. I feel like both of these teams can utilize the hero to its full potential, and it just gives a somewhat of an unfair advantage when you do have it. I can maybe see Nouns winning versus the Mars, but Legacy winning versus it, very, very unlikely. So when Legacy has the, uh, the first pick, it's almost always going to be... Uh, I think Mars is going to be banned out by uh by the team that has second second pick all the uh all the time from now on i like the dragon knight for legacy which is a weird thing to say but because it's like such a good stable here but if you are legacy you want to go up against a stable here that doesn't crush lanes like you can take puck and be like okay i don't kill him by farm whereas if you go puck against a ta your puck's game is super slowed down so i actually like the pick for nouns both for them and for Legacy. I think Legacy will be like, okay, we can play around this a bit better. So, Legacy, they uh, got rid of the Sven. That's a strong Yuma hero for sure. Yep. And you, you really don't want to allow Nouns to be super comfortable. You need to pull them out of their comfort zone. But I feel like they have hero pulls wide enough to always feel okay. Is it wide or is it deep? I was wondering it's if it's supposed to be like a deep hero pool or a wide hero pool. Uh, well, either way, I'm sure they have a wide and deep hero pool and they can just, you know, like it's the, these few bands won't phase them completely. It does, though, give legacy where like, all right, we know we're narrowing down the options that we really don't want to play against. And that's kind of a good thing. You know, you're like, all right, we're going to go up against Dragonite. We know what to expect. We remove the, the Sven and the Terrible. We know their late game isn't going to be super Radiant's ultra amazing, fast pick. farming, flash Dyer heroes. Pick. There will be a ban on the Razor. They pick up a CM Nouns. That's also the I pick from Legacy. Okay, they're taking away everything Legacy likes. I'm liking yes. this. Nouns are adjusting and they're really pulling you apart. Literally not allowing you to play anything that you would want. You know, they might consider going for that brood mother. Like you can eat the crystal maiden, your assault, you can lane any lane, you just later on, you're able to, you know, we've seen it with the orchid, right? If you go, fate goes for the orchid build, it's not bad. And Dragonite melts to the bloodthorn with all the spider links. So I wouldn't mind if Legacy does that. Not right now, but maybe the last pick in this particular phase. Because I don't think Nouns is going to be taking Broodmother. Uh, now there will be a Kunkka. That's something that Legacy have played quite a lot. Lil Nick gets his hero. There will be a Morana. That's most likely a 5. Unless yeah. they're going to be doing some cool core Morana. Though, it might be a mid lane tiny. You never know. Considering there's a Crystal Maiden on the other side, you kind of have a freebie all the time. I had a doubt it's going to be the... They're going to go for the sorry the mid tiny red doesn't play it at all. It's it can happen, but he just doesn't go for it. And hey, there's the brood mother, and brood mother is weak towards Kunka. So what do you do? You take Kunka, you take the Kunka for yourself. I'm telling you, brood mother just feasts on these two supports. Yep, and Lysler doesn't necessarily go for the manta nowadays i mean you would probably pick it up but then orchid brood would uh would definitely be cool to uh to see yeah i wouldn't mind it plus marana brood is actually a really strong lane people tend to forget how strong of a uh setup oh, no. for the arrow the silicon bolo is but they go for the enigma which oh, is a hero no. that now is already dismantled one time and you picked it into a rubik oh no it's a fade enigma oh come on like I was getting excited. Now, Fade has been has played Enigma. I think I've seen him at least twice, but maybe I think three Five times. In all the games, left. it's very tough. Like, he just doesn't seem to have the impact that you expect. 
And I know that Legacy is made of two offlane players, you know, like, like Fade and Lil Nick are, are playing the one and three, and Fade and both are offlane players, but this is not it. They're usually, this is what happens, and they put Lil Nick as the carry, they put in the Fade and the offlane with the Enigma, the Kunkka sometimes goes like Radiance, which is nice, but I don't know, I just do not like this Enigma pick. How did you watch Fade play a billion Enigmas when he has only played one versus Nouns oh. and that's it? Uh, because he was in a, another tournament that I was casting. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. And that's why. So I'm like, no, not the Fade Enigma. Why would you do this to yourselves? However, Legacy, obviously they feel like this is the you know, they're comfortable. They pick it into the way. There's so much comfort in this Enigma pick. It's crazy. They see Rubik and they're like, it's all right. I'll still win. No, this uh, this black thing under the Enigma is just his balls, right? Because that's that's what it takes to uh, to pick it versus a Rubik, right? You usually don't want to do it. You mm -hmm. are definitely gonna be uh, staying mm -hmm. away from it. But I'm thinking green holes are gonna be better than black holes in this game. Seconds. If if your balls look anything like Enigma's lower half, you immediately go seconds. see a doctor. Like you just get up right seconds. now. And go see a doctor, because balls don't look like that. At least from the ones I've witnessed. So uh, yeah, you and, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. You, you're the expert, Otomo. That that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they probably need an off later here because they see it seems like Legacy. They want the Dragonite mid, or at least they, they assume it is. So they're banning off laners. Gunner's Primal Beast, and uh, Mars already now. removed. Whereas for Legacy, they need a mid, because we've seen Kunkka almost always being played as, as a carry for Legacy. Okay, so Otomo, I, I, have, I have a question for you, it's not related to Dota. Like, okay. do you sometimes laugh to your own jokes? They say that it's like super dumb to do. So I don't know, I always feel like I, I said a good joke and then I go somewhere and uh, I chuckle or I laugh out loud. That doesn't matter. I. Uh, I make the joy jokes so that it's funny to me as well, right? Yes, one should always do that. But no, I don't. I don't often laugh at my own jokes. You know, that's. Uh, uh, you that's you, right. you keep a poker face, right? Yeah. Oh no, no! If I say something particularly horrendous, like a terrible, terrible joke, and I see the other person is uncomfortable, then I'm like, yeah, that's funny to me. Well, so like, legacy, seconds. they still have the. Oh no, sorry, the puck option is gone. There's a Quop, there's a Pango. Left. Is Pango in the pool? No, Pango has been removed. They have an Ember Play Spirit. Play Mid-Tiny. Play Mid-Tiny, please. It's such a good Mid-Tiny game. I don't know. BNC has looked great with the mid, with his offlane, with his position for Tiny. I haven't seen Red do it. I'd rather something else. Go so for something like an Ember Spirit. Ember is good. I wouldn't mind Ember. Ember would be solid because although now it does have Lockdown, it's kind of like... If you let other people go in the fight, Ember should be able to sort of zone them out in the middle, like poke at them with a slide of fist searing chains. Good with the Mirana as well. So I'm all in for the Ember pick for red. I mean, you don't want to be running in on the Ember because there's going to be a black hole and an avalanche plus a True. boat ready for you. And what do they go with? Slark. They go for the Slark. So it's going to be Mid Kunkka. Mid Kunkka. This is a definitely a, uh, how we call it, evolution for the team as they start picking a standard carry hero. Good for Legacy. I don't like the evolution this time around because Kunkka sucks in the lane versus the Dragonite. Kunkka hates playing versus fat heroes in lane because they just punch you, right? You get two Bracers and two points in the Dragon's Blood and the Dragonite, you punch the Kunkka and you punch him and you punch him and you punch him and you win the lane just like that. Yeah, but Kunkka also buys two Bracers and he becomes unpunchable. No, I, I wouldn't mind. I think that I like the Slark pick quite a lot. Now you need a... What we're assuming is going to be an off laner here. It could be a mid. Mm, what is in the pool right now? Primal Beast is gone. Mars is gone. Timber is gone as well. Tide. And you all, I don't know. You, you don't want to put the, the thing is, you don't want to put Dragon Knight against in the bottom lane. You might pick something like a Viper. And, but yeah, just to, to annoy the Slark somehow. Let's see. You don't have heroes I'd like to see. You don't have Razor as a pick for yourself either. So it's not now it's, yeah, this pick is this is gonna be a bit, bit of a tough one. Uh is Doom in the pool? 
Dude Doom is, is in the pool. He is in the pool. And he's there actually better. He's better against Slark now than before. Because now when you Doom, if he goes out of vision, he, st he does, still doesn't heal. Whereas before, yep, if you get Doom, exactly. you, yeah, you can go in a ward now. Pretty good. You go for the Death Prophet. Okay, I wanted something range. I do not want a melee hero going up against there. Actually, they are putting the Dragon Knight on Gunner. So they are putting the Dragon Knight bottom with, with the Slark. Interesting decision. Okay, Death Prophet is still okay versus the Kunkka, but I feel like, you know what, you have a Rubik, so, yeah. which has a pretty cool set that I've never seen before, and I've seen that one. you can actually smack the Slark with these two, and that is the idea. Ignore the Marana, smack the Slark. This is always the thing that you need to do in these Slark or Salanes. If they start getting those stacks up, yeah. then you're screwed, but if he's low enough, then even with a couple of stacks, he's not going to be feeling good to uh, to go forward. Mm, I don't know. Maybe if Gunner get maxed out the Breathe Fire or Fire Breath, whatever you want to call it, that would be pretty good. Now this draft in this game, you have Death Prophet and Dragon Knight to bring down buildings, but Yuma will take some time to like farm up. Uh, is it faster or slower than the, pre than the previous game is what I'm having problems thinking about. It's like... I think, I think it's actually a better game for Legacy than the previous one. Can't get much worse, to be frank with you, but I am favoring them here. You have, you do have Fades, Enigma. You also have the Slark who can do decent to the laning phase. Like, Enigma and Slark tend to do really well in the laning phase. You have Kunkka mid, so your lanes shouldn't get crushed, and that by itself should give you a springboard to, like, de decently well. For me, mm -hmm. from what I've seen and how Legacy have played, mm -hmm. this is not a Legacy draft. Oh. It is some heroes that they're confident on, mm -hmm. but it is not the type of draft where we're just gonna run it. You, it can start to do so at some point, like 20 minutes, second, third, night time, maybe, but it is not that uh, draft with which you always threaten, which they have been so good with. So I, I'm i not sure I, I feel like they can win. I never said I think they can win. I just said they have a better game than the previous one. You know what I mean? And I think and that's that's really where I'm going to go with. I think that right, it's a better I'm draft for the dire side. They have a better chance of taking it. As Pingus, they tell him relax. He's like, run like the dogs you are. Oof, that's a harsher one than you think when you when you say it out loud. I'm really liking this line from the Enigma. If light cannot escape me, what hope? What hope have you? Right? It sounds so cool. Yeah. He's got some good lines. I like Enigma as well. I like Sand King as well when he goes uh, first blood on the sand strikes the perfect note. I'm like that's. That's cool. I like how you say it. Those words, they, they, they impress me somehow. Just to be clear, I just don't know the hero that you were talking about. I've never seen that hero in a game ever. Oh, yeah. well, he's not actually in Dota anymore, so sorry. It makes sense you wouldn't know him. Do you think there's ever gonna be a hero removed from Dota? Well, yes, all techies was removed. The whole concept no, of he's... No, he wasn't removed. He's still in it. Like the 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 model, like Crystal Maiden, no longer exists. No, I don't think that's ever we gonna happen. To you know, you, you, but you remove them by just rebuilding them, basically, or remaking them. So that's we. I think we had a lot of. We, how many times has Clinks been remade? You know, every every two patches, you're like Clinks is a completely new hero. So that's how they get sort of removed. I don't even know what what Clinks does these days. Oh, don't Death you know, Prophet. he has that tar bomb, which increases his damage done, he slows you down, and he just smacks you down. He doesn't have the burning uh, arrow any longer, but when you're inside of the tar bomb, he just kind of burns you down and stuff. Yeah. Interesting move by Fate sending those eye lines. Do you see how, how Death Prophet walks, by the way, with her head and hands just swinging side to side? Very ghosty. Very, very good. Well, she's right. a ghost. Uh, Yuma is dropping low on the bottom Yuma. lane. So uh, he will be fine, but uh, that definitely hurts. Had the fairy fire to work with as well. This is BNC on the tiny. This is his best hero so far. It's expected that he's going to be having some decent impact. Well, Fade is also pretty low, and you know, once he gets a few levels, we'll probably be looking a little bit better. They yep, do and not... tiny is the best support to go with the Enigma, like by far. In the meantime, both the, he body blocks the creep camp, but the small, but his, but sorry, their big camp is already blocked as well. As BNC, he's kind of caught between a lot of creeps here. Oh my Why? Well, gonna be slowed down by the tree though, and the Eidolons. Level 1 Eidolons don't really have damage at all. I would love it if the Observer can ca click on a unit just as they get hit by the uh, tree toss from the tiny, because the debuff has a cool name, which we just found out about today. 
And if you guys want to know, know what it is, you should follow T Panda on Twitter and he'll tell you. Dude, why don't you advertise our Twitter channels or maybe this Twitch channel, guys? It's new, so be sure to follow it. It's only the start of the ESB League qualifiers. We're gonna have three days of uh, SA qualifiers, not on this stream, on the C stream, but it doesn't matter. Follow this channel, follow the other channels as well, as uh, this is where you're gonna be watching the main tournament as well. Red, gonna be targeted. Copy wow. is really going for it. You definitely won't be able to get the kill. And surprisingly, no one wants to TP to help. Oh, there you go. TP comes in. Mirana and solid arrow. Enough damage. Oh, nice use of the spirit siphon on a creep just to give you some health. So, copy forces a rotation from the enemy side. And I guess that's kind of fine overall for nouns, right? You're like, you guys really got nothing. Little I mean, Stark is kind of screwed, you know, when yeah. he's all alone. They're just going to punch him as much as they uh, can. And Mirana doesn't really have the boots. It's going to take a long time before she comes. Plus, they see her on vision. Okay, he's not close. Let's punch him. Let's kill him. Yep. If you, if That's the problem, right? Mirana felt like they had to rotate. I think that's why Copy did it. Not so much they get a kill, but be like, Hey, guys, I'm threatening your, your mid. You know, do something. And as it looks like those pools, both of them are going to go two nouns. CS, apart from Slark, everyone's having a decent time. Very even so far. Yeah, even the Kunkka that was getting pushed out of the lane, I guess with that Marana rotation was uh, saved a little bit in uh, in that department. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. Of course, the Marana rotating is a factor, but uh, you have a Rubik and the Dragonite. You just run towards the Slark and you punch him and he, he cannot really stand his ground. Yeah, he's very he's a pretty low health hero, you know. Usually it's this like burst damage coming out. Ooh, no this? Nice fade bolt. Like this burst damage coming out from the enemy side is kind of annoying. I hear an X mark. But looks like copy is like eh, I'm fine. Spirit Siphon's cooldown is way longer than it used to be. It used to be like something like 30 seconds, now it's 40. So and you really take a while to get all those charges back up. Yep, takes a long time. And what is every single every single time I look at the life stealer HP, it is it is getting kind of low. So this Enigma is definitely making him work for uh, for some good CS and to stay in the lane. And some of the CS that the, that the Life Suit has is also not that high. Actually, you can see Fly. He's using the Bite a lot on these Eidolons, just so, and he's farming them up. Eleven and oh, the same amount of CS as Little Nick. Yep, they're not the. The same worth, but uh, you know, so it, it adds up. Yeah. It adds up. Yeah, something like, I think that there's something like, like 17 to 21 gold, I think. I'm not quite sure. But it's a decent amount if you can get a few of them. For sure. For sure. Uh, Kunka continues to farm well despite being zoned out. That is just beautiful gameplay from him. BNC, he wanted the toss back. In the end, the uh, CM does move herself away and does not get caught by BNC. Look at that, Yuma's like, I can't approach. There's just too much damage coming out. He's actually denying his own children. Yeah, that's 17 gold. Yeah, that's 17 gold. That's... Yeah, again, flying. He's happy with, with how... Well, not happy, but at least he's getting something for his efforts. For sure. The problem is that the Light Stiller isn't hitting those creeps under the tower now. He'll nope. finally be able to do it as the Eidolons have expired. But uh, again, we're having a very passive laning stage. Zero kills this time around. Even, even more passive than what we got used to. Hmm. It's fine for Legacy. This is this is okay for them because as we've seen, if they have a decent laning phase, they can win the game. And you have good team fight with the Enigma and the Kunka, so it's not bad at all. I'm it's on nouns to get value of the Dragonite and the um, sorry and the Death Prophet. But it's okay. It's still early. They can once they get level six we'll see what they can do with this. Uh, flies rotating, they're looking towards the Slark. Little Nick will pounce to the side, and Crystal Maiden won't be able to close the gap. Plus it's nighttime, so sneaking up on the Slark is very tough. Little, he does need to be careful on the lick. You know, Fly's still there, and I mean, if they didn't call Miss Bomb, then it could be a problem. He gets the salve off. He has an infused raindrop. He's fairly durable. Oh, I think the salve was actually from the friend. Yep, he does have those raindrops, as you mentioned, so he's not the easiest of kills. They're just spamming fade bolts on him to make sure that uh, they go through it as fast as possible. Gonna be lifted up, the dragon tail is there, has the pounce available, block grenade used, and one more hit is gonna do it. Actually, I saw the uh, the bounties being picked up, I thought this was a kill before it, but Lelis, he secures himself a first blood, considering how well this guy has been playing and good spells that he can steal in this game. I would be very much afraid if I was Legacy. 
and there's not much like ah oh, poor poor guy not much you can do also as pingus on the mirana because you're mirana you know your your ability to bodyguard people is pretty limited copy use the spirit siphon just to zone him out they'd love to oh no copy is looking very scary to engage with right now he's got shield oh. in his bottle as well bnc though did pull the wave he did a great job there he's gonna be making sure that this tower doesn't take a lot of damage that's a really cool play brilliant move honestly and copy He's throwing that spirit slime against gets cancelled, so not a whole lot of value, but can they kill fly at least? They're gonna try. Both connects on both of them with the arrow fall up in the torrent, they get the kill, but copy finishes the tiny pingus next on the menu. Has the leap and going uh, to dive at tier through that er tier two that early on would uh, would be a huge mistake. Now the creep wave goes to the tower, but the exorcism will be expiring, so you give a one for one to defend your mid lane tower from the first exorcism. That's quite oh, nice. Eight no. way too deep, Yuma. Because him also has to infest into the siege creep. And that is a disaster for the Enigma. One good thing is he did get the tower down versus a life that's quite huge. It is. And they keep their tower alive on legacy side. So it's not like a huge disaster. That was the first exo being used. Red is going to stay alive. Oof. Yeah, that like the first EXO was be was used and barely dented the, the tier one mid, so it's not that bad for Legacy. I just noticed they didn't have their icon, their logo on. That's bothersome. Let's see, Lil Nick is versus the Dragonite, but he is having such a bad time. The pounce gets blocked. They don't really have their stuns any longer. Fade Ball doing a lot of damage. Fly dies in the mid lane. A little bit too deep for him. And Scunner is gonna have the breed fire and does finish him off. They did go through all of those infused range drops, so now he didn't have anything to mitigate the damage. And he's gonna approach the lane exactly as I thought he would. He maxes out the, the, the breathe fire, just spams it out on the Slark. You have a CM on your team as well. Nice. And you don't really need like the dragon blood or the dragon tail. One point in each is not more than enough. As Fade, right, he's got the ulti. He sees Yuma. We'll probably need at least a plus one to go for it. And there's a ward there, so they spot uh, what Fade is doing the whole time. He can also pressure him out of lane, right? If you're attacking him with the Eidolons, the Lysler is going to have to run away. If you get yeah. down to half HP, a black hole will kill you. Another thing is though, but at the same time, like, you're okay with this with this view, but you still have thousand gold ahead of little Nick who's just He's been dismantled, the poor guy. Does get hit does hit level six, but that's l minute to nine that you get level six on your carry. Very rarely do you see a game go this badly as DP to the top lane. They want to push with the Exorcism Red, going for Lelis. Well, we'll be tossing him away. Still gets caught by the bow. Double Star Storm the and the Torrent kill him. Red going for a TP out. Gunner, he wants to get the stun, and there's a Dragon Tail. That's a much bigger kill than a measly Rubik. He almost made out, though. He almost was able to get out of there. That's Exo used, though, and you still trade one for one, although it's not an even trade for sure. But that means that the EXO isn't going to be able to like bring down building, and you're kind of okay with that as a BNC. Nice steal, or is it? Ah, uh, he's a zero armor hero. He's literally dead after that. As he gets into the tower, and you talked about it not doing that much structural damage. This mid lane tower will take a solid one from the siege creep wave, anyways. That's true. That's true. And uh, the spirits, by the way, they chase you for a long time. They're very clingy ex girlfriends. Like they will go to the ends of the earth to to catch you, so there's no way he's really going to be making about that situation. Arrow on Lelis, he does pick it up there, just wanted to defend the siege creep, beautifully done, they're gonna get a couple of more hits into the tower, won't fall, but it is gonna be getting quite low stolen torrent, probably only level 1, so not the best spell for Rubik. 3000 gold advantage for now, where did this come from? What are we looking at in terms of items, Death Prophet's going for the Witch, but I'm seeing this more and more come, up, come out, it's kind of... I don't know, if it, is it the standard now? Because before it used to be like you go for tank items for Death Prophet plus Yules and BKB, but now you just go for Witchblade. Uh, it has been a standard for a while. The thing is that the Yule Scepter has become so popular because a lot of heroes are countered by it that people are have gone for it a bit more. But Witchblade into a BKB has been the standard for quite some time. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, the slow is really good. Fade, bottom lane. Yep. Needs to be careful. There's a lot of people converging. 
Yeah, Yuma could bait for Lelis to steal the black hole. Pingus, still not level 6, so no Moonlight Shadow there. Oh, not favored by Goddess Elemene. They is gonna get the arrow into the Crystal Main with Copy coming over. Yuma running in. Malefist used on him. Still gonna be stunning him. There's the Exorcism with Copy coming forward. He got infested. Moonlight Shadow will be used. Tiny taking a lot of damage. They have the Sentry. He's gonna try to get out of it. Will be successful at doing so, but uh, let's see. Breed Fire, just enough damage to finish him off oh he could have ran sort of straight south but he was trying to dodge here and there and i think the creeps like were sort of blocked by him a little bit because you still have that and he loses his life pingus he denies the history and they just do not want Radiant's copy to get those ruins in there supports are willing to risk their life for it right knight he does have a blink dagger on the way bait has the uh, Vlads going for a blink as well. As you mentioned, Dragonite will have one as well. So we are definitely going to be getting into a point of the game where <laughs> rotations are going to be more common as both teams are going to have ways to catch each other. A little bit of recovery coming out here from Little Nick. Or, I don't know why, I can't really call him Big Nick, but I feel like I just can't do that. Anyway, Little Nick, he is recovering slowly. He's not The gap between him and Life is not that big. However, Life is going for Radiance. So you take that, you infest the the death prophet and you just have so much impact whereas not the same thing with a slark you know you need a little bit more items to feel like you're really contributing he's gonna have a defusal but it will be nighttime in two minutes so maybe he's gonna come over this blade mail not gonna be dissuading copy from going for you breathe fire gunner from afar also the dragon tail onto the mirana and the stolen arrow make sure that he cannot leap away it's only a level one arrow but you have nice follow-up now to the dragon tail I mean, you already amplified as well with all your spells, so it lasts a bit longer, does a bit more damage, but well done by Lilith. He just, the arrow's right in front of him, he steals and throws it back and lands it perfectly. Well, you... Oh, Black Hole, first Black Hole of the game. Yeah, that's a dead life stealer pretty much. Avalanche and the toss, perfectly connecting. His rage expired the second that the black hole ended and there was an avalanche of the toss waiting for him. It's nicely done. There will be a Slark dying, so both of the carries do get taken down. And it is a slightly bigger kill for Legacy in terms of net worth, but the overall is the same. And you did have to use the black hole B and C. Avalanche toss, you won't have enough damage to kill Gunner. He's not even tickling him. I mean, I know that Gutter looked like he was kind of low, percentage-wise, but this is guy. Oh, this! Oh God, poor guy had to dodge the arrow. Oh, and actually, Rubik does eat the arrow. That's how it's done. The, the fate, the Enigma comes forward. Gonna get Sanus, him and the Marana. The Star Storm is a much better spell to have for the Rubik, as he can shove out the lanes so easily with it. Bit of, this is turning into a bit of a disaster right now. They've been focusing a lot on getting the kills on Red. And he has been falling. Oh, they spot the stack. The stack that could have gone to the Kunkar, the Enigma. Ironically, despite... Can see? Silenced. Oh, dead arrow. Yep, he is, he's gone. Despite me sort of being a little bit mean about the whole Enigma pick, it's been working out. It's been the, sort of the best saving grace on Legacy so far. Uh, has been doing a great job on Fade. Uh, again, a little bit conservative on the black holes, but the first one did work out. So yep. this is this is more than what we saw in the first series that they played in, in, the, uh, in the tournament between these two. As Crystal Maiden coming from the side, get text. There is going to be a torrent and an arrow keeping it in place. Fly has to be a little bit careful. Has five wand charges. They turn around onto the Kunkka and he just gets annihilated, losing Fly in the process. But you're really not going to be mad about that trade. BNC still protected by the Moonlight Shadow. It'll be fine. And the Blink out from Copy. That's an item that you don't see too often. A Blink Little Nick coming over. It is nighttime. Oh, He's going to get stunned up that's so dangerous and there's the torrent lift up as well he never even hit the ground he walked into a sentry usually and the thing is as he got close he kind of walked slower so he figured it out he tried to turn around but it was just not fast enough oh dear i'm trying to think about it. like if you can get a good black hole that's great but your follow-up is okay only you know it's like it's not amazing follow-up but both on top would be great but we're not seeing like you know like just the best combos that are coming out here. Slark is more single target, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like a big black hole is enough. BNC is gonna have his blink, so at least a tiny will be able to cook something up at uh, at some point in this game. Only six hundred gold 
uh, is uh, is needed for him. After this wave, it's going to be a lot less. We'll see. It'll be good for the Tiny if he can get something going on for his team. They're fairly tanky, though. Even the, like the, the levels, the gold they have, even on the support. Fly, is he tanky or is he not? Uh, he can actually kill B and C if it's a one versus one, but it is not. Fly, uh, surrounded by two enemy heroes, will be taken down. The TPs are coming through. Yuma going through the portal. You're gonna get punished for insolence. How dare you kill our captain? The corrosive breath will finish off the Marana. And, uh, you know, she might like the Dragonite, but when you don't brush your teeth in the morning, that's that's a no-go. A big red flag for sure, as B and C hiding the trees. Picks up a tree as well. You're kind of destroying your uh, your hiding place there, BNC. That's all right, but oh, uh, they walk into each other. Poor BNC. He, he was like Gunner's hunting in this area. He hasn't spoken up me yet. Yet, but well, I'll just stay in this area, in this, you know, this location. Will he be found? Oh no! The most obvious path, BNC. He actually tries to get Roshan to come and kill him. Yeah, but I don't think Roshan goes that far out of his cave. He just looks at the, uh, you know, at the front of his house. He knows that on the sides, it's impenetrable. Yep, it's like there's, I have walls there. Nobody can go through my walls. As where are we when the, the Radiance? Yuma's farm is not very impressive considering how often they've been punishing little Nick. It's like you think, oh, he'd be doing better, but no, he's just okay. I mean, it's a life stealer. You lose your tower and it's a problem. You can never get your uh, farm back up. And that's why this Enigma pick really did work out quite nicely for them, as it can threaten the life stealer. I mean, they look like they're kind of going to the area here. Moonlight is used. They want to go on. This could be a really good backstab. I see X on Lelis. Both is coming. Arrow fall up as well. Lelis will hit it right like a pro, but here Black comes Yuma to infest him in the black hole. But he has already been infested, so even if you kill him, the Lysler is going to be coming out. Maybe he can fight. We're going to be low. Here comes Copy with the three man silence. It's time to let go of the sisters. And even the Dragonite is running away. Still, Lil Nick will finish him off using the Shadow Dance there, as the Torrent is not going to be slowing down Copy. But he doesn't come forward. And Red, because of it, he actually survives. It's a two for two. With the black hole being used, I don't know how worth it it is for Legacy. No, that was good. That was a really good fight for Legacy. In fact, if 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 they were if you all didn't infest, that would have been him dead as well. Like that was really good. They used also the the uh, black hole on the Rubik, so he can't steal it. Well played by them. Very well played by Legacy. And uh, I like everything they did this set. They put the the observer ward behind so you can spot them. They had moonlight shadow going in. They put the observer and the sentry, so like we know what they're what they were going into. So that was very nicely done. You must still taking his time with this radiance. I'm not saying taking his time like he's slow, but just they've been doing a good job keeping him out of this game. Slark is going for an orchid, and I have to say I haven't seen a second item mm -hmm. orchid Slark for a very long time. Remember, like even when no one played a mid Slark, and we would see something like this from time to time. I really haven't seen it. Same. I'm. Uh... I'm interested to see what he can do. Paige is going for the BKB after, so nothing on now is able to stop him. Because right now there is a lot of ways to stop him on pretty much four of your heroes. Is Yuma. Okay. He's getting targeted, goes in fast into the centaur. Of course, he's going to be slowed down and killed instantly by the arrow, but help is coming. The cavalry is here. Oh, why are you running away right now? There's a stolen X on the Rubik, so they're going to be able to finish off Pingus as he finishes off his mech. Not so bad. I mean, yeah, losing ping is not great, but you're already behind. And you went for a play, just... It's okay, it's not the biggest deal. Ping is also gets a Philosopher's Stone, so that always feels good. Yep. Best, best item of the game. Oh, such a good neutral item. I miss GPM talents. If you're a support, you're having a bad time, if you get GPM talents, you're like, yeah, don't worry, guys, I'll have items. Those were dumb. Those were great. Okay. It was no. amazing. It was a great. We should have. We should bring them back. You know what was dumb? The lower death timer. That was dumb. Now that was this completely pointless. As poor BNC, his life is feeling pointless right now. Uh, you know, well, there is a point in his life giving extra gold to the enemy heroes, which is also nice. You are helping somebody, and that's the most important thing in the world. But you're helping with enemies, as Pingus. He's got the mech, but no grief, so he cannot remove the silence, and he is removed from the living. Poor Pingus.
The sports on uh, Legacy kind of giving their lives away. To, I don't, I don't want to say make space, but they're just getting caught losing their life. Uh, Yuma's farm is now going to increase significantly with Radiance being available. But I can't wait to see what Lil Nick can do with this Orchid. I mean, it's nice that you have some mana region with it, so you can actually farm faster. But I want to see it used offensively. Lil Nick has to be very careful in, these, in this game. He is sort of target number one. The moment they can see that he's not you know, dark pacting, they're like, all right, we'll just kill him. And they've been Radiant, able to do it a couple times. He's zero and four and one. So he's just not been having a slog game. He does have that. Sorry, one stolen agility. So at least you have that. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> uh, what do you have going for you? One stolen agility awesome right that's uh if that's the only thing then you're in in really big it's, trouble it's more than zero sir yeah but fate he has been crushing it on this enigma like regardless of how the rest of the game goes he's been the one keeping them in so you're gonna stop hating him uh i know i uh, firstly i do not hate him i hate i didn't like his enigma and no i can't I, i'm committed Okay, makes sense, makes sense. You, you cannot just turn back right now. You have to double down and, exactly. and hope that he's going to have an abysmal black hole so that you look smart. What I've, been learned, what I've learned in the last four years is that if you're, not, you're never wrong. You just sort of keep doubling down until you're right again. Very true, very true. As uh, BNC, he is trying to just shove out the waves and this is nice i think right now what you need to do is buy time for the night time to come and exactly. then maybe you can make something happen with the extra vision from the slark it's anytime you can just push out a wave that's good that's just less pressure on your team you want all three waves pushing in it's something if you're playing a support you're like how do i grind even more do this you know you go out in the lane smoke up if you act if you have to to make sure you, if you're scared about dying and push it out some heroes are naturally better at it than others, like Oracle, for example, is uh, as good at it as Pink is at staying alive. <laughs> oh boy, Otomo, when he's uh, tired, he really turns into a savage. As, uh, there will be uh, a Murana dead once again, but the game has slowed down, I have to say. 100%. A legacy have done a good job slowing the game down every single time that we've seen a team playing versus nouns in these kind of situations the gold lead would be increasing more and more yep. significantly but uh, they are keeping themselves in it of course now with the uh with the shards coming through with the tormentor dying that's that's gonna give an extra 1400 to nouns yeah they're still in the game the gap is not big but it is slightly growing these kills on the supports do add up eventually we're looking for him in the Mirana, still working towards the Guardian Greaves. Lil Nick. Oh, Doc packed it. Got x uh, He's gonna get pulled back. Avalanche is there the to ulti. stop it. Stolen. Avalanche, very nicely oh, done. Oh, and oh, BNC, oh, you helped the death of your teammate. They lift him up in the air a little bit too early. Lelis making a slight uncharacteristic mistake. But either way, you get the Slark, you're happy. Oh my lord. I was like, he's looks like he's gonna live. Meanwhile, the other in the mid lane, this avalanche, Lilith, he's loving it. I mean, tossing rocks, it's not hard. So for a, for a genius like Rubik, he could have figured it out easily. Makes sense. This poor guy. I, I thought he would be able to survive, but he's giving away the avalanche. Really cost him. Lilith, how many times has he done this? He just steals the spell right in front of him and kills the person with it. Yep. And, um, I mean, his performance in this series has been on point, really. If if there's one player on both sides that has done everything right in all three of the games, it's most definitely Lelis. Of course, you, you can point out some mistake, especially mechanical ones here and there that are going to be popping out. But in general, he has been on point with positioning, spell usage, understanding of what he needs to do. It's just, uh, it's just beautiful gameplay from him. Exactly. I think if you make a mistake, you're a human, right? And across five games, if you make one or two errors in judgment or mechanics, it's like it's not a big deal. Uh, I mean, thousand... if you are, if you're a Dota player, you know that AI is gonna replace you. They took our jobs, so that's uh, that's what's gonna happen. You better be a machine. Uh, that is a scary thought, right? When we look at so many, so much AI, I'm shocked that AI does so much art stuff. You know, because we were like, oh, this is gonna take like the man. You know, the, 
whatever you can call them. You know, the jobs are kind of boring data entry stuff. And you're like, no, 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 we're doing art. Okay. I mean, lately, uh, human art has been kind of bad, right? I'm sorry, when was it good? 600 years ago? It's like, as art is art. I just don't think that the machines would be able to do it so quickly. Sanjin Yasha finished up on the Life Stealer. Does the, the attack speed is very nice to have. Uh, and he does. Actually, it doesn't really help against the black. Sorry, the black hole in any way. But yeah, you know everything else is fine. Or the avalanche. I think it allows you to rage through the avalanche. Really? I think it does. I also thought it was like sort of like you know, sort of like channeling the area, and anyone who's in the area is immediately stunned. But I remember there was a thing where you stunned them for 0 0.2 seconds every 0 0.3 seconds. So yeah. there was that bit of a gap that you can use. I think oh. it allows you to, to do it. I, I'm not sure, but I think it does. Is, uh, we'll find out. We'll find out in the game anyways. Has to be he's careful. Got, he's got the Aegis though. So even if he dies once, it's okay. And he's got the full upgraded greater healing Lotus. What a crappy name. It's not a crappy name. It's really good. Healing Lotus, great healing Lotus, greater healing Lotus. Why can't it be like super? You know. Or I amazing. think it should. I should. Okay. I sh think it should be healing Lotus, mm -hmm. great, greater healing Lotus, and then the greatest healing Lotus. That would be better. But this is fine. Uh, all right, if, you, if you if you're worried that people are gonna get confused, you can start with lesser. It could be like lesser healing Lotus than healing Lotus than great healing Lotus. But all right, I'm okay with it. As uh, Crystal Maiden going for the four staff, or he has the glimmer cape, you know, walking up high ground, knowing that there's really not much on the enemy side can do. They do get the X mark, but uh, and I just inf infest. Wow, that is careful playing by Yuma. But I, I don't fault him. I like that. Didn't have to though. You have the uh, you have the S and Y, so that's why it's really not gonna last as long, anyways. It's still smart to not take any risks. Well, little Nick, he's got the Aghanim Scepter, he's working, he's only 400 gold, 300 gold, sorry, away from the Aghanim Shard, that is helpful for your team. As overall, what's the win percentage? It's 90% for nouns, but I gotta say, it doesn't feel like 90%. Really? Like, yeah. I feel like the legacy side, they cannot make a play. This is, this is my observation. The, the only reason why you're just not going so aggressive at the moment is... Yep. There's a black hole and there's a toss back from the tiny. Like that that's about it. Mm, I guess so. That makes sense. But then again, if, as we mentioned, Yuma's got Aegis, he just walks up, hits them a few times, and he's happy to do this continue, and continue as much as possible. Once Lotus. Gunner has oh he has an axe now. Okay, so the next is gonna be a black dragon. It's the push is just gonna become ultra easy. The, like I said, they're doing the thing that they did in the previous game, which is they smoke, they go from behind, they see if they can find anyone. Oh, that granite golem, my favorite! As, uh, he's, good. he's following Pingus. Pingus? Mirana? No, oh, I think he's gonna be fine. What's the deal with the wave on the top lane, which is cool, but uh, you have left your teammates all alone. I'm actually surprised that Legacy didn't try to, uh, to find the opening here. Yeah, they can see the granite golem is just pushing top, just staying, just you know, cutting the creep wave. They're very cautious. They know that there's only a minute left of this age. They do not want to throw, like they don't want to be like, oh, we're going to start a fight, and then you're like, oh man, if we had waited a minute, we could have killed the life. So they're being very cautious. I like that. If they can find open, they're going to go for it, but they're not going to force it. It's a smarter way to do things. Another nighttime wasted. You didn't use the Slark Vision whatsoever, and that is a problem, right? This is now going to be opening up nouns to in the next five minutes win the game. Oh, yes. Two brothers fighting. Okay. And Yuma comes out. He eats your brother, and now he's going to eat you. Imagine how strong of a thief he has when he can gobble up stone. But he didn't really feel like it. He could have gone for more, but he was like, this is you know, far enough. I don't want to be tossed into the other side. Uh, with only 20 seconds left on the Aegis, as Aegis is expiring. Overall, Legacy, they held pretty decently, not losing any barracks or, or even tier 3 towers. But what's the plan? How do you even leave the base? I can see four of their heroes in the base, with the Slark being the only one that is farming. And he has an Agon and Scepter, sure, but I I still don't know if you can get back into this game. Plus, they lost oh. the Rain Traxxas. They did lose the Rain Actually, they did lose Traxxas, but... Okay, so I was... I've been, I'm, my mistake, I thought they didn't lose any... 
It's only the ranged racks. Who really cares about those? Okay, okay. If you uh, if you say so, those uh, okay. super ranged creeps they can be pretty scary, especially okay. once the two start coming out. Copy. He pushes the plane a little bit, but he feels that something's friends. bad. Something bad's happening. He's looking for to buy the shot. He just sold a lot of. What did he sell? Oh, the uh, the range racks also buff up the flag bear creep. It seems. Huh. What? Did you see what he just sold? Because he went from like having not much gold to having three thousand. He sold something pretty expensive. Huh. Ooh. A copy. I... Maybe it's top tower, ain't looking too I'm, maybe I'm crazy, I'm seeing things. But he does have enough money for the shot if he wants to go for it now. Yeah, strike fear into the bones of the enemies. That's what you want to do for people that don't know with the shard. After four seconds of Saki Saki with the Spirit Siphon. After three seconds of Saki Saki with the Spirit Siphon. I knew that. You, uh, you fear your opponents. For, for how long? Or... I wanted you to end my sentence. One second. Uh, yeah, uh, you. It used to be 1.5, by the way, which is kind of insane to think about. But BNC jumps in, catches nobody, might catch some stray hits and lose his life, though. Yeah, Avalanche was stolen by Druid. That's also a pretty big spell, though. Now you don't have the steal for quite some time. Maybe Black Hole can be used. Fate decides against it. The Slark gets signed up in the back lines. Dies to the freezing field. Fly finishes him off. Does have a buyback, but that would be detrimental for his health. There's the Aghanim Scepter for copy. He uh, is going to be pushing super fast now. Lil it... Nick has not had a game at all with this Slark. He had ultimate and the Shroud available. He... Is he not gonna buy back to defend this? This team really needs it. Ah, oh, there we go. We're going for it, baby. Oh, they're going for this 5.5k uh, HP Dragonite Fly being uh, caught by the Torrent Storm and the buyback from the Slark. Well, it does give them a CM kill. I guess you kill the captain and then they fall apart, but I'm uh, yes. not sure if that's how it works. Oh, it looks like he's gonna be caught, but he just blinks away to safety. And Fade is walking away. Nick, he's doing it! Yep, let's see what he's doing. He's this is missing his pounce completely as uh, BNC gets forced after the high ground. That's a BKB on Yuma. Nine second one now, turning on to the Enigma as the BKB, but it's really not gonna save your life. The black hole lasts for 0.1 second. That's not too long, to be honest, as uh, now they're gonna be turning on to Lil Nick, who does have the depth shroud, will be hiding in it, as they do call it. That's, uh, that's a smart choice because you're just gonna get slaughtered. It seems like they're gonna get slaughtered then anyways dude the, the crazy thing was all that was that was kudos to gunner he had one of his illusion dragons hit the the enigma enigma was slowed down the whole time he couldn't blink to get this black hole and they just knew exactly where he was that was really a heads up play by, by for on gunner in the end this little nick slug did not look really good at all i love the pick of the rubik as well as the dragon i dragon like max out breathe fire goes to the lane breathes on him every time and slugs like Firstly, this smells bad, and secondly, it's really painful. Yeah, the thing is mm -hmm. that uh, the second that you used that black hole, you knew that you didn't have anything to fight with for the next yep. three minutes, and the game was just going to end. So I like that they went for a GG there. At that point, the game was definitely over, but I can't help but feel maybe they could have gone for one more fight if he doesn't use that black hole. Ah, maybe I'm just I'm just talking nonsense. It was a dieback on the Slark. It was almost impossible to to play the game at that yep. point. And th this was just pretty methodical coming out from uh, from Nouns. In the draft, they took away all of the comfort heroes of the enemies. They put him in an uncomfortable spot playing the Slark. And then they just slowly got themselves to victory. Yeah, this just very ha very clean by Nouns. You know, we had, we saw the Dragon Knight and the... And uh, so Death Prophet were like, this is, they're going to take towers. That's what they did. Fade really performed well on this Enigma. MVP for their team. But the mid lane, I don't, I, don't, I can't even remember who their mid was. Just, just because we didn't see him. And Lil Nick was unable to really get going, the snowball going at any point in the game. So good try by Fade, but need a little bit more from your other course. Okay, new... Uh...
new thing that uh, Legacy needs to unlock for the uh, potentially last game of the series and last game of the close qualifiers is that their mid laner is good enough so that Otomo remembers him two seconds after the game ends. We are going to be taking that short break, maybe the last break here at the Elite League NA close qualifiers because it is currently 2-1 for nouns and they're looking really strong. Can it be a 2-2 series? Are we going to be seeing a full five games? We find out after the break.
welcome back to the potentially last game of the closed qualifiers here in North America of the Elite League. I'm Harry, joining me is Automo, and currently it is 2-1 in favor of Nouns versus Legacy. Automo, yep. they won game one on oh, yes. Legacy, and in game two and three they looked helpless. Can they repeat what they did in the first game of the series? It's looking very difficult, you know, it's like lightning rarely strikes twice. But legacy, the fact that they did once should make should give them some confidence that can happen a second and maybe even third time. It all comes down to a draft that looks like just works. And I don't know what's happening, but legacy can't get that to to happen. Little Nick in game two, in, sorry, in game three on this lock was just doing nothing on the and he just kept getting caught multiple multiple times. Kunka mid on red also wasn't able to provide anything. Ten seconds. They might just need a run at you draft. Be like, let's just pick Dragon Knight carry, run at them and take Five the buildings. Because I, I don't know. Like I can see their, their player composition is really hurting them at the moment. Okay, at least they're going to be getting the CM, right? Yes. The Mars is probably out of it for the entire series. We already talked about it after mm. games one and two. But at least they got the CM. They have yeah. something that they're comfortable on. So I'm kind of surprised that Nouns didn't pick that up for themselves. Seconds. They want to put the terror blade. They picked. They played as a care in game one on Yuma. They can, they've also played played before on Lilith as a position four. So they have that flexibility. And all right, I want. I know. I know what I want for Legacy. I'd like to see that Brood Mother again. Fade on the Brood Mother looked pretty damn good. Give it to him again. Fade has looked good today in general. True. I mean, the man is on point. Yep. For sure, for sure. Uh, there will be a ban on the Puck and the Primal Beast. Those are both heroes that the Terror Blade generally doesn't like playing against. Give me a bit more confidence that we might be seeing a, uh, a carry TB. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see. There is This is just flex at the moment, so probably they're going to be considering what legacy has picked and where they want to put this. Yeah, we'll see later on. I do like the ban of the Dragon Knight. So that's a lot of gunner heroes being removed. The Primal, the Mars, and the Dragon Knight, as well as the Timbersaw, of course, who's an off the offlaner. So, all right. Legacy, who they go with next? Dyer's turn to the door. Uh, no, they go for the BNC Tiny, which he did some okay play, some nice creep cutting in the previous game, but wasn't quite the Tiny that we all know and love that we know BNC can be when he wants to. I think he still did a decent job, right? He secured yeah. the lane for the Enigma. They got that Ten kill on seconds. the uh, on the Lifestealer. He just got a very late blink. Was a little Five bit too selfless in yeah. the game, I feel. Well, it's okay for the Crystal Maid to be selfless in this time. Let the time get some farm. Now as they take the Rubik, will they take something? I imagine you're going to take a core pick, like an off lane or a mid now, so you can keep flexing the Terror Blade. If you take a Magnus, <sighs> you know, you're like, all right, guys, it's a little obvious. Lai is not going to play a Rubik. Let's not kid ourselves. So oh, I think you've true. already revealed that it's going to be Yuma Terrorblade. That's true, actually. Good point. Centaur gets picked with the with both the Mars and the Puck gone. It's a pretty solid Centaur game. Now, you could take a Faceless Void and, you know, kind of counter the Stampede that way. But in the laning seconds. phase, you're going to go up against heavy burst damage. And that never feels good. I think this is this might be a morphling game for legacy. Mm -hmm. Morphling game for legacy? Yeah, do morphling. they even play morphling? I mean, they probably don't. No, and morphling versus Rubik is not great, right? You give him a huge amount of health early on. It's uh, not ideal. I mean, not ideal for the Rubik, but maybe. The, but against the Terrorblade, he's, he's okay. Against the Centaur, you kind of need to be careful, though. You have to always be pretty decent strength level, so you don't get bursted down. I don't, no, no. I don't like the Morphling. I don't like the Morphling. Okay, you, you know what? You know what? You pick a PA, and you get the Revan's Brooch. That has there. worked. Let's go. That has worked in the past. They pick up the Kunkka. Let's hope it's the Linux Kunkka, because that red R, the red 2 Kunkka, not the best. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, you were uh, maybe Red is gonna get a hero on which you are gonna be uh, remembering him on, but I see that you know which hero he played. So Otomo, you were lying. I had to check. I had to check. I'm like, all right, he played the pirate. Okay, good, good. All right. So Kunkas. He's an admiral. He's not a pirate. What the? What the hell? Okay, there, he's a guy who is in the sea with the, on a boat. 
You know, he's, he's, he's a pirate, basically. You know pirates are bad guys, right? S some people say that. I have a more flexible morality. And there we go. The Broodmother comes out. That is going to be Fade's hero. And Lil Nick will be on the Kunkka. Okay, this is cool. Because now with the Broodmother, if you go for this fast Orchid, you can crush people. Maybe not the Centaur, but the Rubik and Terrorblade are mwah, delicious food. Tasty, tasty. Yeah, for sure. But... So now you need something that's gonna help you deal with the Broodmother. That's either a support or a or a mid laner. So what can that be? Grimstroke isn't so bad. We've seen the Grimstroke come up. Fair, it's very solid in both ways, right? Like the Inkswell with the shard can remove uh, the silence. It gives you a bit of the heal for the person involved. And you we've seen the Stroke of Fate being really good against the Broodmother. Like one shotted, not him, but the support who was walking with the spiders in the previous game. That was like seven hundred damage for one Inkswell. Not things like, sorry, Stroke of Fate. At the same time, I would also say that you kind of already countered the Brood with the Centaur, right? Just run away. Support Airblade. Okay. okay. Five or four? I, I kind of feel like I want to see the Rubik with the Centaur. I don't know if I want to see the Terrorblade as a five, though. Like, can Fly really make it work? I'm not saying he can't just... It's such an unorthodox pick, and you're up against a, a brood mother. There's not this time. This time he's not gonna get Manta. He's gonna be food as well. I don't know. Yeah, but in the laning phase, you're fine, right? Because even if the insatiable hunger gets used, you don't take that much damage from the right clicks themselves. So you're gonna be relatively okay. I think the brood mother should be should be fine. Brood mother, tiny. They'll be okay in that lane, no matter what the tear blade does. I don't know. I'm not liking. I'm not liking the support duo from now. Rubik is good, but he can't be in two places at once. Dude, but look at the Lifestealer game. CM Tiny Kunkka Brood. They suck versus a Lifestealer. Like, it's it's one of the better Lifestealer games that I've seen recently. I agree. Right now, Legacy's next picks has to be focused on dealing with a Lifestealer some way or another. Who's a mid laner that kind of likes going against L LS? 10 seconds. I'm thinking of something like there one? maybe. Huh, sorry? Is there one? No, not really, right? I'm gonna go, we could check Dota buff and see who, which heroes are actually beating him, but I don't bed. think the hero has a really bad matchup overall. Yeah, from the mid lane, definitely. Uh, definitely not. Maybe something weird. I was thinking Templar Assassin, honestly, but Life Stealer's win rate. Arc Warden kind of beats him. That's cool, I guess. Yeah, and uh, Death Prophet's also not so bad. Five that would be a good one. But the Legacy banded, banded themselves because now they do have the first pick in the in the last phase, and that would be a good hero for them for sure, especially versus the Kunkka, if he's going to be going mid. Well, there's a Viper as well if you want to ulti him. You know, don't care about anything, just ulti him, keep him slow. Uh, well, it depends on what now's picks as their mid laner next. I don't know. Yeah, this life stealer is very awkward for Legacy to play against. Dyer's turn to bay. Man's out to get rid of the Huskar. Legacy. I think you just go Ember. Yep, I was. I, mean, I see that you're like, yeah, probably going something melee, aren't you? Uh, the Ember's in the pool. You could also go. What else? What else does Red play a whole lot of? Mm, Puck is gone. Quapi hasn't picked so far. Pango's banned. Embers and Oscar is also bad. I believe it's just really the Ember Spirit. And I hope he doesn't take the Kunkka because he's clearly not as comfortable as Lil Nick with it. That, this would be such a good Beastmaster game actually for uh, for the oh. side of Legacy if oh. they can play the Kunkka mid. I got, I got one. I got one. I got one. Oh, I was going to say Razor. Then I realized now has banned the Razor. Dyer's Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Oh man, I feel sad that you got so super excited. There will be a storm picked up versus a tiny crystal maiden and a broodmother that will probably go for Orchid. This is a ballsy pick coming out from Nouns. Not an easy job for Copy to, to make this hero work. Hmm. Your legacy, do you want to take the, his brother or do you want to take a Quap instead? The pure damage is nice. Uh, where is it going to be? It's going to be the Quap. There you go. I was gonna say the cube, the one of the nice things about it is if you can sonic wave centaurs they're stampeding in that's pretty good it's you you're up against two very easy to kill supports the Lilith and the terror blade sorry the rubik and the terror blade okay i'm yeah 
I'm okay with this. I imagine though that they didn't have that much discussion about. It. They're like, "What do you want to play?" He goes, "I play Queen of Pain, good against Storm." They just pick it. That's all they need. And she's actually wearing some clothes here with this uh, with the set. But either way, I think this is actually a legacy lineup, right? This yeah. is the type of lineup with which I can see them winning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I can see them winning it. In in general, also flies playing the terrible. We are yet to see him on the uh, on the support DB. So in general, I think legacy are set up for success. If they're gonna do it, I mm -hmm. don't know. Probably not. But they have the heroes to do so. I agree. Of all the drafts, this is the one that I'm most comfortable. Even the one that's where Legacy won. If I go back in time, look at it, I'm like, nah, I still wouldn't believe it. But this one particular, I'm favoring Legacy in terms of draft. I don't think they're going to win. But this is the best draft matchup they have. You're up against a position. So you're going with downs? 100%. But this would be the one where I'm least surprised if Legacy take it. Okay. Okay, we'll see if that's going to be the case. I mean, Legacy, if they want to stay in the fight for uh, yeah. for going into the main event, they're going to have to win this one. and It's it's just not easy knowing who your opponents are. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Qua like, okay, it's, it's going to be a lot on the Broodmother. Broodmother, there's a lot of easy targets for you to get on. Your Orchid, that's great. You have pure damage from the Quap, which you can deal with. You're up against a decent matchup in the laning phase, which is the Storm Spirit, so you can just get a couple of those... Uh, daggers in and you're just gonna be fine so i like a lot of that and of course you have the coveted crystal maiden okay let's see i still haven't seen in a professional game the crystal maiden uh, set for the uh, for the persona that has the little crystal maiden riding on top of it like the baby crystal maiden and it's one of the best sets ever is it the one that he, the little one's also a baby dog, like a puppy, or is she a little girl? A little girl. So, Chris, it is this uh, persona, right? And okay. then on its back, it I is see. carrying a little baby. Oh, that is a baby God. crystal maiden because she I, was uh, she was raised by uh, wolves of Ice Rack, which are uh, these wolves. Now, now I remember it when you mentioned it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, where she's like swaddled up as a baby. 30 seconds to battle. Oh. No. Really? Start killing no. Before that. You know what? Why Send should it be swallowed? <laughs> no, not swallowed. I said swaddled. Like, covered. Oh, yeah, swaddled. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Okay. No, she... I thought you were making making a joke that the wolves would eat her. But, uh, okay, okay. We, uh, we got a little bit of a misunderstanding here, and it's all been uh, cleared up for sure. There's mm -hmm. some... Uh, Spider webs here. Nobody has been clearing this map for a very long time. Top lane, they have a lot of slows on nouns. That's something that you might need to be afraid of if you are legacy. You know, the reflection, the ghoul frenzy, possibly orb of corrosion. Okay, what? Hey, observer, come on. That is not that is not cool. These people. I mean. No. I have a I have what? a funny story. So uh, when uh, in Serbia we were casting TI in studio because we have like uh, a couple of uh, TV stations that are actually esports oriented. And of course, yep. I was casting it in Serbian. So of uh, one of our uh, we would usually the Dota community get together. We would cast it and stuff. And so it was I think TI eight or something along those lines. Either way. Our observer at the mm -hmm. time was a guy who is, really likes to go for, you know, sexual jokes. And then oh he would God. always zoom in on the characters who would have a big rack or something. And that's what happened. So, in the, uh, we are watching the game. He's zooming in on the Crystal Maiden. And we are laughing our asses off because we know what he's doing. Of course, we have to be professional. And then a fight starts out. A five versus five level one. He panics. He cannot zoom out, and we miss all of the kills. Like that's that's literally what happened. So it was it was a very very funny studio experience. And then of course everybody that was in the uh, in the production side they were just telling us <laughs> what his face was like imitating him after we got out of the room. So it was uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm sure he learned his lesson after. I love that stuff like no, that happens. No, he continued oh, okay. doing it. He yeah. continued doing it, but then uh, he got better at zooming out and uh, uh, going back to, to the normal view. I just love that for people working the event, that's amazing. For people watching the event from home, they're like, no, this is bad. It's like, yeah. <laughs> well, we had fun. Yeah, very true, very true. But, oh. uh, 
Did Fly take level 1 meta? Instead of Rune? Uh, no, no, sorry, he's, he's already level 2. My bad, my bad. I thought he took level 1. Yeah, I, I, was, I was going too long with the story time. It was, uh, it was a long story, or uh, I took too long to actually talk about it. But that's because I know that these guys, they don't fight for the first 4 or 5 minutes. It's just, like, the truth at that point. Gunner is gonna be breaking that truth as he's going for a little nick. They have the blood grenade as well, and little nick is gone. Lelis will be getting the first blood. This guy is just a Unstoppable. He wants to annihilate everybody in front of him. He is he's murdering them right now, as he did in game two and game three as well. He came, like I think the Shadow Shaman was better than the Rubik, but the Rubik was also impeccable. Very impressive for now, especially because what's better like, than impeccable? Uh, well, go on, go on. I'm, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So go on, go on. I guess I feel like his perfect shaman did more had more impact than his perfect Rubik. You know what I mean? oh, okay, they, okay. It's like when you say like, oh, a perfect, a perfect enigma is better than a perfect crystal maiden. I, I, I get it, I get it. I, I agree with you, Ultimo. I'm just messing with you a bit. As Fly is gonna be fighting Fate. This is how I think that this Terrorblade should be played. Remember when Lelis just wasn't trading whatsoever, just standing in the trees? And this is this is what I want to see for the Terrorblade. Trade, 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 eat a Tango, trade, trade, trade again. But now they're not convinced that they're gonna be getting too much kills in this lane or to be harassing that much, because if they were, Yuma would have bought an Orb of Corrosion. You know, he's not buying the lane winning item, he's buying, he's focusing more on farming more, which is, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess it's fine. It's just that it tells you what Noun's mentality is, that we think top is going to be mostly a farm quest, not money kills will be happening. Oh, this bottom lane is going so well for the center, only 14 CS on the Kunkka and the center under the tower is going to be able to farm pretty much everything with that much damage and, and, and that good of an animation. Attempted stack from Fly, not going to be happening, nice block. Lelis is actually coming to steal the water rune, that's a blink in from Red, he will get punched a bit for it, but at least he makes sure that he refills his bottle. That's fine. As mid lane, mid lane is the closest one, 18 and 1 to the 17 and 4. I usually find that this favors the, the quap a little bit. But coming out even is a win for copy. Yep, was, uh, Avalanche used a little bit too late. There was already a rage coming out to new mind fly. Also uh, takes the Avalanche and the toss like a boss. Still had the fairy fire to work with. Yuma does take one point in the rage, which means that he is a little at least a little bit interested in getting those skills. We're obviously a lot of them just not ma not putting any points in there. Uh, I still think Bola is too annoying. Yeah. The mid has missed chance as well, so it might be losing glasses because of that fly. Oh, good. The stun comes out. Can they get the kill? He throws a spider on his ass. The fly is so damn tanky. Blood grenade. I don't think it's enough. Not no. at all. Nope. He will be able to survive as Yuma is standing his ground and fighting. He's gonna have the rage if he wants to continue chasing this one down. There's the healing Lotus on Fade that will be allowing him to survive as uh, Yuma. Now he gets the face boots at a perfect moment going forward. Gonna be going for the rage. And uh, not really gonna be feeling the cold that much, but he's gonna be feeling the life. toss and he will be taken down. Pingus gets the kill with the blood grenade. Well done by him. Good rotation. Much needed. Especially because bot lane... A little Nick is kind of tanky enough that he should, you can leave him alone for a little bit and he'll be fine. And Fade, his CS is absolutely, he's really behind on this Broodmother. This is the hero that needs to start the snowball going. Yep, he is 300 gold behind the Lysler's. For now, we're still going to be seeing the uh, the Lassets and the Nanais, but the Gunner Centaur is going to be a problem, man. And I, I really like how... <laughs> the lifestyler baited himself with the face boots getting delivered. Like, I can go now to die, unfortunately. He also uses the rage, I think, after the, the frostbite, and he was like, Alright, I have been out. Oh, I'll play the shit out of them. But it didn't work out. Copy's got the region ruined. Even better than it used to be for Storm. Just because now it doesn't get cancelled, which I love. And even gets the courier there. BNC loses his. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Kunkka caught. Misses the, the uh, torrent, and Gunner is going forward. Let's see if they're going to be able to kill Little Nick. Either way, he's just not going to be farming. Trying to juke through the trees. He has the creeps following him as well, and that's going to help him to pincer him there and finish him off. Gunner gets another one. This is another game where now it's off to a very quick lead. 2,000 gold in before 7 minutes. That's, that's quite sizable here. Yeah, as Fade, he's kind of soloing the lane with the net, with the, sorry, with the spider webs. It's not so bad. Red, he's taking some damage. 
all the lanes feeling very oppressive right now from the downside. Yep, now they're crushing their opponents everywhere. The Skunka has more net worth than the Broodmother and he's being demolished. Stampede already there. Yuma is gonna be coming over, slowing him down. There's the TPs. Avalanche gonna be used. He still has the rage to work with. Gonna be turning around onto BNC. It might be time to run. Gunner has the face boots as well. There's the Crystal Maiden being tossed in. Yuma going for a TP out. You're on your own, buddy. And Lelis is coming over to help his laning brother. A Sonic Wave finishes him off. Red really wanted that kill for himself. A big commitment, but worth it. You need to get something on the board for your team. Unfortunately, losing fade. I think losing fade is way worse than, get, than getting, like, the, than losing the centaur is for Nouns. If they lose him, he is moving. Nicely done. Well, well done by fade. Well done by fade. Double raid band does give you a lot of armor, so that's always gonna help. It's. Let's see. He pulls back. Copy, he's ready to Queen go. of Pain is in trouble as well. Does get taken down there. Wasn't expecting Gunner to be coming over, but he was really mad at uh, that scream from the uh, from the Queen got him. It's and that's sort of your hero that's doing the like having the best time. It has to be Red and Fade who make space while Little Nick I imagine he's going to go for the it's either gonna be the blade mail to Agonims or Blade Mail into the Radiance. I'm not quite sure which one's better, honestly. Uh, I mean, blade mail axe. That's not blade mail axe. Axe is good, but you're up against like Centaur who can stampede away. Magic immunity from the, the life stealer. Need to jump from this. Maybe orchid. Storm. Maybe orchid on the on the Kunkka wouldn't be too bad. I like it. I like the orchid on the Kunkka actually. It doesn't mean that if Broodmail gets orchid, you easily counter it with one item. But that, like you know, BKB use whatever. But I think it's good as well. This is a problem though. We talked about the snowball potential of the legacy lineup and when you're losing already by 3k gold, that snowball potential is heavily hindered. He's red. He almost has the, the, the uh, ultimate here. Uh, Going here. for him. There is a shield rune on the storm, so you really can't kill him and he can go for aggressive plays like this, but doesn't have much mana to work with, so he's gonna have to go back after, uh, after this attempt and... Maybe he can die to the sonic wave. It's out. Yeah. Too risky to also jump in and maybe lose your life here for red. Doesn't want to risk, like, take that chance. As well as we are entering the 10 minute mark with a 3000 gold advantage. Gunner. What's, I, th I saw him build the uh, Helm of Iron Will. So probably a very early veil for the team. And you look at it, like, you're mostly magic game. What a jump. Up. They're gonna be going for the brood. Fade will be taken down with ease. Yuma is slowing him down so much, and Copy is there just to assist a bit. Whilst Lelis is getting some huge stacks. Out. Who's gonna be farming this? They're gonna have to bring multiple heroes. I mean, the centaur. Wait, the centaur. He's got two points to retaliate, so they might be thinking centaur should take it. Of course, so can the, so can Copy with just max out stack remnant. Both of them can do just fine, and probably together, like you mentioned. Maybe just too big for one guy to take to handle. Uh, Centaur, he did take the Helm of Iron, but he's going back for the Blink Dagger, not finishing the bail. He's supposed to be able to jump on people. Nice use of the reflection by Fly. Yep, and now Pingus in a very uncomfortable position. The Crystal Maiden will die fairly fast. Fly dropping low, Stampede will get used. They get the uh, Storm onto the high ground there, but Red is not alone with the Soul and Sonic Wave. He's gonna be seeing that everybody can scream if they want to. It's just uh, not a nice thing to do. It is, but dude, he just, I, like, I've seen this, let's do this six times now. He sees a spell right in front of him. He takes it immediately and just uses it. It's very cool. Uh, he immediately gets a kill with it. Avalanche in the previous game to control the Slark was brilliant. Uh, for sure, for sure. It does increase the gold lead to 4k. All three of their cores topping the network chart by a huge margin considering their, the counterparts on the other side. And the Kunkka is the only one that is farming pretty well and he's not even close to the guy he laned against. Nope, he's not. There's a thousand gold behind him. A copy just throwing out the stack remnants. It's gonna take a while though. This is not the fastest. Yeah, but uh, uh, eventually they're gonna die, so it's still quite nice. Now he's gonna be showing himself out of that yeah. smoke. That's a really nice way to farm an ancient stack. I, I got, yeah, I haven't thought of it before myself. You know, you usually think of smoke and you do something, but what? That new static remnant. However, it was a bit slow just because he wasn't using his overload attacks. Blink dagger coming out. I believe that's Gunner's blink. 
As we mentioned, he's not going for the veil first. He just gets the humble iron for the laming phase. As he has season level 5 and 12, min 12 minutes. That's and standing in the river, I mean, he could very right? easily die once again. I was looking at him, I want to say he's level 5 and he's going to get another death, but he manages to make it out. Broodmother, she had, I think, the power threats coming out, but straight up going for the orchid really needs it. Like, she is not hunting anybody right now. At least they killed Yuma's tower, right? That's what the Broodmother is good for. It's a little Nick all alone. Nobody's even gonna attempt to TP and help him. There will be a snare feed coming from all sides. They're gonna be saving their stuns for an attempt to TP out. Little Nick, he won't even attempt it. He understands that his life is gone. The rum buff kind of gave him a, a couple of extra seconds, but in the end, they killed MK and they're always happy for pronouns. Red has the ultimate. Again, Queen of Pain has... You, you kind of need to make things happen until Orchid is available. And not, not that sort of thing. Other things. Yeah. Red? Is Copy going to be following? It's kind of dangerous to do so. You're still level 1 zip. And uh, it's it's a little bit too slow. Yep. Yeah, they move much faster the more... Like, like, as they level up. Things like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 second. To get that roll in. As Gunner, he's jumping. That was, well, wait, that, that hit? I think that's not a good action to do at the end. Yep, yep, it did. It's It actually has a really long range. I think the animation doesn't really show it properly. Especially with Rubik, right? Where it gets that free cast range from his passive yep. anyway. Exactly. So it's, so it's, it's even longer. Well, in the meantime, now it's just farming up stacks. Sorry, not for that. uh, sorry, that's King is on Legacy. He's, he finds the stack, he's able to take a little bit of it. But now he's still very happy with the state of the game. What is the win percentage? It is 84%. Wow. Middle tower looks that seems absurdly rate. high. For just I don't even need to there. ask you questions, Automo. You're asking questions, answering. What do you need me for, uh, Fingus? Very much that just got deleted in the second. Copy still has that Arcane Rune, so that's why he's zipping with literally zero mana. Has 21 to charge so Copy will be able to do quite a lot. Stolen Scream of Pain. That is a level 4 spell, so Lelis will be able to farm quite effectively if he wants to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... I mean, I'm looking at uh, at Legacy. This is a team that's kind of, the draft is designed not for team fights, but sort of to find people. Oh dear, DNC, he's found. Exactly, and he is a person, was a person. Actually, there was a tower there as well, as Copy does get it with the right click, so it's going to be increasing the gold lead up to 5k. Just They're going from objective to objective, from kill to kill, and there's just no response coming out from the other side. They're just dismantling them on on every front yeah because they are a pickoff draft right now on the radiant side it's like yeah you have both and sonic way but you're not going to be using them for these giant team fights just yet you're looking to just Stupendous. pressure the map and kill one of them one by one but it's not happening pingus is still level five at 15 minutes there is a wisdom ruin if when they go and get it of course there is an Orchid on the Broodmother and they're smoking towards the hero. They understand this is their biggest timing, probably the only timing that they can properly use. Going for flight and it's not with the reflection. Red is gonna get smacked and uh, now he understands just what a uh, big of a pain in the backside he actually is. And there's the Orchid on the Kunkka as well. So multiple Orchids picked up. The uh, Storm already has a Yule, so he's kind of safe. Yeah, right? It's like you get the orchids and the guy you want to use it on immediately has the item to counter it and you go, Whoa, that's not good. That's why I have like... to... Uh, I guess... I don't know if that's gonna be enough as fade. Oh my lord, the damage just melts the poor guy. Yep. Copy's not playing around. This storm is so freaking strong. You picked the Queen of Pain to crush him in the lane and it didn't work so much. Red, is he stuck there? Like, why is he stuck there? That ah, doesn't make sense. It's, it shouldn't be like that. There's too many areas in the map where you where you land on. You're like, oh, I'm stuck. That's why. Step bro, help me. Yeah, and uh, copy. He would like to fill that role or something else. As tiny does get caught. Avalanche and toss will be used. Dies to the stolen scream of pain. Lelis is uh, he's being pretty loud in this game. He's insane. As life is again very very close to the radiance, of that you can just infest Gunner and just chill for the rest of the game if you want to. You'd be like, that's alright, Centaur, I'll give you massive amounts of health and movement speed and you'll be just happy. 
Do you think that Rubik, when like lore wise, when he steals Queen of Pain's spells, is he screaming like, like ah, or is he actually using a more manly voice? Like, ah, hmm? what do you think? I think he, I think he's using a more manly voice. Like he modifies the spell to his music as, oh my God, Red, she got modified from living to dead. Yeah, I think that uh, Rubik probably uses the spells his way. You know? Okay. Because we've seen him, we've seen him with like when he flies on the boom on Bat Rider, he flies on his broomstick. Same thing with the uh, when he uses the gun from Sniper's Assassinate, he uses them his way. Okay. okay, I understand, I understand. So, uh, there will be a hoof stomp onto this spider, pull him in, avalanche to stop Solid this avalanche. advance. And actually, that's gonna be a problem for the storm because he doesn't have mana. Okay, just enough for the yield. The fate is surviving, there's gonna be a stampede, and as okay. the storm lands, he actually does squash the bug. Pingus gets a double kill. That's a very low level Crystal Maiden that will be able to uh, bring down two cores. Just when you, like, it's like, just when he hits level 6, he gets his all. well, he hit level 6 a little while ago, but he gets, the moment he gets his ultimate, his first use double kill, is like, guys, come on, you should have given it to me earlier. What the hell are we paying Red for? As it's 5 to 15, this is the score, looks like Red, they're just going straight up for him, but obviously can't get the kill, which is not even have enough lockdown. Yep, without the Centaur, without the Storm, those are your uh, targeted stuns that you would be able to... Uh... To use to kill the Queen of Pain. That's one thing that we haven't talked about much. This Nows lineup isn't the best when it comes down to lockdown. Mm, I don't know. I think they're, they're fairly decent, right? You have Hoof Stomp, Lift, whatever you steal on the Rubik, the pull from the. I forgot what it's called from. Uh, from Vortex. The, electric Vortex. Thank you very much for the storm. It's not bad. That's a big tree coming out here from Lilith. And then it's like, I'll kill you. There you go. Who needs lockdown when you're dead? So they're uh, gonna be increasing their lead to 8k once again. Copy and Yuma gonna be finding little Nick. That's gonna be a silent Whoa, storm, and he's gonna be showing the Queen of Pain and the Rubik that you can uh, be strong even if you're not screaming at everybody on the map. BNC will be using Avalanche and the Toss. The Soul and Frostbite will keep him in place long enough for the damage to kick in. I don't think their heart is in it for Legacy, honestly. When I was uh, looking at the little Nick, he orchids the storm, but he doesn't use the boat or TP out, and they were both available. So he's just like walking away when he kind of knows you can't outrun them in a few seconds. Well, maybe the Yules, he was worried about the Yules coming out from uh, from the Storm Spirit. I was like, okay, I guess that's the three options. I mean, their heart is not in it because their heart got pulled out. Also, uh, do you know, wait, just let me uh, see what it's called. The, uh, the main, uh, like, artery in our... Uh, in our bodies is from yesterday officially an organ in medicine. It was changed. Wait, let me check what it's called in English. Okay, I'm not really sure how how this is going to that's going to help Legacy win the game, but good for them to know about the organs. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, you need to if your heart is not in it, mm -hmm. then maybe it's Arta actually in in English as well from what I see. So. So we have a new organ. That's pretty cool. As, uh, there's gonna be a silence in the lights there. They get the X as well. We'll be trying to kill him. Avalanche and the toss on the two of them. There's gonna be a stampede. He gets the rage off. And the fight will get turned around on silence in the storm. Instantly removes it with the Yule Sonic Wave. Get away from my teammates. And poor Pingus will be left all alone. Nice. Sunder there, fly, making sure that his storm is healthy enough to continue with the chase and fate will be caught, turns around with the insatiable hunger, but it seems that he is uh, not hungry enough to uh, stand his ground and fight. <laughs> Nick makes out alive, and they were able to get the silence off on copy, but this Yules is super good. Like, I don't care about it. He's just going to be fine as Gunner. Guess is right, but just not in time to catch anyone. Whisper of the yeah. Dread on Rubik, by the way. He already has amplified damage from his own, from stolen, sorry, from stolen spells. Now he gets even more. How, can you press Alt on that so you know how much damage it does? Just Alt on the ghost ship. Or... I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay, so fine. But I wanted, uh, but I wanted the, the Observer to do it. 680 damage. 680.0. Jeez, from 500. Yep. That was insane. Well, I mean, the observer doesn't doesn't like you, Ultima. When when I tell him to uh, show me something, he, he shows it to me. Show me the terrible. Thank you. That doesn't count. 
It's like me saying, show me the items that they just picked up and I see the Shivas and the Sanjan And now there's, that doesn't, that's not I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, in the meantime though, nouns, they can just do whatever they want. They just have the map is open for them. They've got this huge movement speed from the Stampede and the and the Storm Spirit, so they don't have to be worried about like, oh, we're out of position or anything. Anyone can show up anywhere at any time. You know what they want? They want to go to the main tournament here, and uh, oh, Legacy yeah, might want to do it as well with this kind of a gameplay and getting crushed so much that it's 15k gold lead for the other team 22 minutes in. It's probably not gonna happen. Nouns looking really strong. They did lose the game. At least somebody beat them once, mm. but... Uh, they seem to have been uh, playing around a bit. Roof Stomp and the Shivas, but by Spiderlings, they squash the little ones. The big one takes a little bit longer, but in the end, everybody can get stomped on. Yep, and even moms aren't immune to, to the stomping. Honestly, the, just Legacy feeling a little timid, you know? You have these Orcas, but you can't make plays. I'm looking at the, the Queen of Pain, oftentimes just holding the ultimate, waiting for a better opportunity. But when, when's that gonna show up? Like, Legacy has taken a very, we're not fighting you approach to the game, and they're just gonna find a little Nick and kill him. Well, stolen Torrent, doesn't have a BKB, not even working towards it, so he's just gonna have to wait for his death to come. He puts down a banner so that at least something is left from his life. And there you go, double edge comes out, there's an X mark. I do like the the blue X mark, so much prettier than the red one, I must say. But yeah. What? How can the blue be prettier? The red one makes sense, because on every pirate map ever, it was a red X mark. As he is going to be caught, he does get the avalanche off, signs onto the terror blade, doesn't have that load of just yet, will be dying to the sonic wave, they got him, let's go! But here comes Yuma. Infested, going for Fade. Actually, he's gonna be going for somebody else. He thinks that his team can do it on their own. Going for Pingus, will be killing him with the Radiance. Red doesn't have that much mana. He's the killing Lotus, goes to the side. Avalanche stops his TP out, and because of that, he's gonna be taken down with his copy. Is on a killing spree. That's a full five man wipe. You've only killed the enemy position five. And it costs you a, scream, a Sonic Wave to do the same. And you're looking at it. Nouns probably getting ready to punch those tickets. Maybe when we look at the other side, you're ready to punch out at any second here, as everything has gone badly for them. Still, yep. there's still Roshan potential. Neither team has gone has gone for it. Maybe by some miracle, Legacy can take a team fight there. They are decent. The Rosh you know, Sonic Wave, Boat, everything from the supports works pretty well. The real question, Automo, here is Red's performance memorable enough for you for you to remember which hero he played as uh, Pingus, he gets off the freezing field, Lysler doesn't care, the Stampede will be there, Pingus will be dying to the damage. magical damage, he comes out with the infest and Gunner did take some damage, but you get two easy kills once again, the poor Kunkka, he can't get a break. Okay, I'll remember that he's Queen of Pain, but because of our observer's shenanigans, not because of other reasons that gameplay related. Okay, okay, that's that's again uh, not gonna be too nice for them. Life Stealer has 17.5k net worth, and well, look at the Kunkka, he has 10.5, so that's a 7k difference to your uh, strongest hero. Plus, we talked about the Life Stealer and how much he's gonna be unstoppable in the later portions of the game he's already there he's in the later portions of the game his enemies are kind of just out of the out of the laning stage the fact that he that he's got so much help and like, oh god again and they're going for fade like stop it he's already dead and fade he thought he's, he signs he doesn't care he still gets the kill Lilith does lose his life that's something yeah, dude, but when you're squashing bugs, you need to make sure that they're dead. You need to stomp on them ten times so that you know that they're never coming back. Those are uh, some, uh, some hard-to-kill buggers. As all three of them do have buyback here on Legacy side, but now they definitely feel unstoppable at this moment, and Legacy are enjoying their last moments in the Elite League. They only made it to the close qualifiers, but they made it to number two, so they won $5,714. But of course, the ones that are gonna be going to the main tournament are undoubtedly, at this point, going to be now. Undoubtedly? Hey, miracles can happen. There is a chance here. It, but it is looking... I need a miracle. I, I, you know that song? No. I want to be your girl. Wait, well, what's that? No, no, that's I, I don't know either. what's the name of the, uh, of the singer. 
Yeah, see, see, boss, there's gonna be a snappy being used. Bonus are protecting him, and he does let him go on fitness. Here comes the boat as well. Saw that is. On Gunner. He's dying. Oh, where's the swap there from Fly? He was hesitating for a second, doesn't save his buddy. Copy. He doesn't have any mana to work with. The triple buyback. We wanna fight Yuma oh. running forward, and uh, he will be DPing away. Get silenced. Nobody cares. The X does expire as the tiny dies to the damage of the avalanche and the Rubik. Copy going forward a little bit. Gonna get silenced up. Just the right clicks are gonna be enough. This Parasma really does pack a punch. Now going onto the poor Crystal Maiden. That's gonna be three diebacks on the side of Legacy and uh, stack nine Quap. I don't know what that means, GG's honestly. Called. But yeah, they do call the GG. Stack nine Quap, huh? Someone in the someone in the chat will be able to figure it out for them. Congratulations to Nouns. Never really in doubt. The game one was look at you like, hmm, okay. You know, you, you drop the game, it happens to the best of teams, but game two, three, and four, completely one side, no chance, not even a smell, a, a hint, a whiff of a, of a chance of victory for Legacy. When, you know, now they guarantee themselves at least 10,000, a spot in the Elite League as well for the Swiss stage. I'm very happy for them. Yep, they're, uh, they're looking pretty strong and announced in international gameplay they actually have a shot i think legacy even if they went through which was yes. highly unlikely they wouldn't really be able to compete with the best mm -hmm. nouns they have the knowledge they mm -hmm. need to maybe polish things a little bit especially with copy but he is looking like a guy with enough talent to make this team work yeah he's, he's fitting it very nicely i mean we, we fly at Lilith. Lilith's MVP, I feel like, of the series. He's just looked amazing all the games. He's been a big playmaker since he was an off laner, and now he's moving into this position for a role. It seems he's very comfortable with it. I also feel like South American talent are very super mechanically skilled. They love these sort of flashy heroes. So Rubik on the list, Shadow Shaman, he's just been like, amazing with it. Okay, so Otomo, we are done with the NA closed qualifiers. It mm. was a pretty easy victory for now. I'm not going to yeah. lie. They only lost one game. It was here in the uh, best of five grand finals. And that was mm. their first game. But in general, when playing versus, uh, uh, versus Legacy in this tournament, they won five games versus them lo losing only one. So they were undoubtedly the, uh, mm. the best ones. You and me, we're going to be casting South America tomorrow. It's not going to be on this stream, guys. This is the D stream. We are going to be on the C stream tomorrow mm. with South America. So if you're a South America fan, be sure to check us out. We're going to be back here at 18 CET. Also, follow the other channels. You can see them right on the screen and follow the uh, X or uh, X Twitter here uh, with ESB underscore Dota 2. Also follow uh, Automo Dota. Is that right? Uh, for on Twitter, yes, I think that, that is. Yeah, right. Automo Dota and Harry Freak. If you want to know when we are live, because we're definitely gonna be posting there. That's gonna be it from us for now. We're gonna go to sleep so that we can rest for what is awaiting us tomorrow. The close qualifiers are still not done. And what remains with us two is going to be uh, South America. But there's also other regions for you to check out. That's why it's so important that you follow those chants. And we'll see you all tomorrow for more Great Dota. Bye.